I got one more. That's only that's only three. Two more. There you go. There you go. That's all five. All right, I got more stuff to give away, though. How about the next five folk that make it up to the stage? Who wants some swag? Finals t-shirt? How about a finals hat? I think the hats are a hot topic. There we go. It's sunny outside. It's finally clearing up. Good time to put them on. All right, we're gonna be starting the Champs Dev Q&A here in a couple of minutes. So make sure to come up to the front of the stage if you wanna check that out. We got a lot of fun guests. We got a lot of fun folks that work on the game that you play and love. We got Freak up on stage. We got August and we got Lexicon. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. You know what? I'm not done giving away swag. I got some phone charging power banks up here. Who forgot their phone charger? We got your bag. We know you traveled. You forget stuff in the bag. Here you go. Now here's something that might get some people up to the stage. Who was here yesterday? Raise your hand if you were here yesterday. Who missed out on the Pagoda Toga? All right, all right. If I get people in seats, if I get butts in seats, we're gonna give away a Pagoda Toga, okay? 
Don't make any way up to the front.
All right, everybody here at LCS Finals Fan Fest. We're going to get the show started up here on stage with our game dev live Q&A. A reminder, Fan Fest is going to be going for the next hour. These are only going to be about 30 minutes for each of our Q&A segments. So if you want to talk to the game devs, make sure you make your way up to the front of the stage. I'm going to need everybody to give a warm welcome to our first guest. You know him. You love him. Sometimes you cringe with him. It's David Freak Turley. Don't try to make yourself remember. Darling, don't look for me. I, I just got hugged by Freak. That was... Next, my bald brother. Get up here, August Brown. Let me know if you want one of these cool hats, too. And finally, one of the faces, you love her. We got Lexi. All right, so now that I'm on stage, you two are all live, so I can really ask you whatever I want, and you kind of have to answer the question. That's how that works, yeah. Yeah, and also everybody out on the stage can start thinking about what that make the game and balance the game that we all love. So I want to start off. Freak, we're going to start with you and then go down the line. Talk to me a little bit about what your role is on the team, and also uh, maybe one of the favorite champions that you've worked on. Uh, sure. So I am the design lead of Summoner 15's live pod, which means uh, when we do buffs and nerfs, uh, they usually go through me. When, um, Summoner 15 team like at least oversees their balance state and makes sure that we think they're balanceable and that we're happy with shipping a champion. But all the hard work goes to the champs team. These folks do amazing work and actually making cool stuff. Um, and so yeah, we're basically uh, as far as favorite champions I've worked on. Um, I'm an LCS play by play, so I have. To um, I uh, was handed to me for the last month or two of his development. Obviously, again, all the hard work goes to the champions team, but um, I inherited him for the last little bit, fixing up some bugs, doing some tuning, uh, and I'm really excited he's coming out in, like, four days. That's awesome. I know a lot of people are excited for the Skarner rework, so we're going to have some me questions too. about that as well. We'll dive into that. But, August, I want to send it over to you next. Uh, tell us a little bit about your role and also the favorite champion you've worked on. Uh, so I'm a lead designer. I'm currently working on a game mode. Um, and previously, I worked um, And so, yeah, my favorite champ I've worked on is probably Jinx. Um, she has uh, gone a long way since we made her years and years ago. Now she has her own TV show and stuff. So, yeah, very proud of her. I'm sure it's very emotional seeing her grow up, you know. Yeah, something It's great. It, it was... I loved watching Arcane. It was, it was amazing to see. Yeah, one of the fan favorites. And Lexi, again, same with you. Tell us a little bit about what you do and your favorite champ you've worked on. Oh, favorite champion. Oh, my gosh. Um, hi, I'm Lexi. I'm the product manager on League um, for League Champions. Um, my role mostly consists of like figuring out what the value is for each of the champions and really deciding on which champion goes onto the roster and what makes a balance like roadmap or um, a series of champion releases. Um, the favorite champion that I worked on, it's probably going to be Hui, just because it's so complex. Um, there were so many things. I learned a lot from that experience, and I'm ultimately really, really excited for him. Um, I've been working on the team since, I think, Udyr. So uh, almost every release after that, I kind of like touch a little bit, um, at, mostly at the beginning. Um, but obviously, when they come out, I'm super excited and excited for the team and all the work that they did. Well, we're so happy to have you here as well. And also, as a play-by-play -play caster, I've been wondering who I can send complaints about Hui and how many abilities he has to. So now I know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I actually want to send it back to you, Lexi, because the first question that I wanted to ask everybody, but I want to get your thoughts on it first, uh, there's over 160 champions in this game. How do you ensure when a new champion comes out and joins the roster that it's bringing value to an already gigantic roster of playable characters? Yeah, um, I personally think of, like, 
every piece of champion is like a new piece of content for the for the game. Not only for the people who like play the champion, but really for the people who play against, with, it really changed the outcome of the rift. And every couple of months or even a year ago from now, League looked completely different because of the roster of champions that are currently um, new and exciting. Um, but to make sure that each champion really works uh, well and bring its value, we actually go in figuring out like what we're making and who we're making those champions for first and really dedicate all that energy to, toward that player. So we know Skarner isn't going to be for everyone, right? Like there are very, not a lot of people out there that like non-humanoid champions, but that's okay. We're not making Skarner for those people. We're making them for a very specific target who really love monsters, who love scorpions, who love Skarners from, from the beginning. Um, and uh, roadmap wise, it's more about variance and flavor. You really Really want like year to year to look kind of like an ebb and flow like waves um, it feels different it feels fresh um, so we want to capture a variety of things like a variety of archetypes roles um, reason for being part of the roster so it's a little bit like roadmap planning but also like specific to the champion as well it's a lot to juggle it's a lot that's, that's <laughs> yeah. what I'm getting from that as well uh, but okay so you said that you were the one of the leads for the Skarner. Who did you make the Skarner remake for, Freak? Oh, I so I get none of the credit for in terms of like spacing out like who he's for and, and you know all the art exploration and everything else. But uh, at the end of the day, you know tuning numbers and putting ratios and whatnot. Uh, we mean for him to be like a jungler primarily. If he play gets played top lane, that's probably fine. If it turns out everyone loves him top lane, that's just where his player base is. Then. Maybe he's a top laner, uh, but you know, expectation is that he's a he's a tank jungler. You have the option of building damage, but he's he's meant to be like a fun. Like he's got unique tool sets. He's still got impale. The E is really unique as a spell, um, and so yeah, some mix of damage, but a lot of disruption, a lot of clever gank pathing, and and you're you know here's a fun front runner play for your team out of the jungle. That's cool. I guess I want to get your thoughts on the initial question though as well. When you're looking at how a champion delivers, I know you've had. A, it might not be your focus right now, but you've had a lot of experience working on champions. How do you approach making sure that each champion that comes out that you've worked on brings some value to the roster of existing champs? Uh, so I like to think about uh, who a champion is for. Um, one of the things about League that's so cool is the eclecticism of its roster. Kind of the idea that we have 160 champions and every champion is for someone slightly different which is really works when um, you consider that League is this giant global game with millions of players all over the world. So there's tons of different players with different preferences from different backgrounds. And so whenever you're working on a champion, you can kind of think, well, is there a group of love a thing that we haven't put in the game? You can identify that group that might be missing something, um, then you can make something that they really love and uh, and there you go, if you have a champion. Do you have like a, an example of that? Maybe like a champion? I know like uh, one that I've heard sometimes referred to as Yumi is a, a, there's depth to the champion, but it's easy to pick up the game. If you're just learning how to play League of Legends, Yumi is a very easy champion to learn the ropes on. Do you have an example of something that you've worked on and kind of like what that was for? Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can approach it. So as an example, Jin, when I was working on Jin, it was kind of like an idea of like, hey, you know when you play like um, FPSs like, uh, say like Call of Duty or Borderlands and you have like a sniper rifle or a six shooter, how, how those weapons feel to use, those are really fun. And I felt like, hey, in League, we don't really have a character that really captures that kind of feeling. And so that's like what Jin's gameplay was based off of. It was like, man, if you're a, a sniper player in, in Call of Duty, maybe there's some of those um, aspects of that gameplay experience that we can capture for you in League of Legends. Versus, you could also like do things like, hey, what if you're a support player, but you really like AD carries? Like, maybe a character like Senna could do something for you. Um, uh, and so there's just lots of different ways you can approach um, audiences for characters, either from gameplay, or from theme, or from how they look, uh, there's, uh, or for their personality. Um, That's really yeah. cool. Gamer would like gin, right? You know, you got the deadly flourish, you got the old, all that stuff. Um, this one will be to direct it to, but do you have any kind of like mood board, like a personality test based on the champion that you play? Because I play a lot of Heimerdinger. D what does that t say about me? Uh, you have good taste. First of all, you have good taste. Thank you. You Thank like you. making people suffer?
we're probably pretty good in the bot lane meta game. Okay, what support playing? And kind of go down the list, right? And it's like, what do we know that pros are usually willing to play on kind of short notice? What are chances we can kind of give buffs to without breaking the game at home? And then try to cultivate a like exciting uh, meta game, exciting set of strategies for pro play uh, that also gives some room for exploration. Because it's like, hey, Jinx just got buffed because some item changes. All right, well, after playoffs, go scrim, go figure it out. What are the comps? What are you playing alongside this? Are you going to play Lulu? Are you going to play Melee? Are you going to play what? Um, is it Braum? Is it whatever? Uh, and so right, it, it gives pros something to, to adapt to and then try to make the viewer experience really, really fun for those watching at home. So what I'm hearing is that you intentionally nerfed Smolder so that uh, we'd have a better shot at oh, we're, we're, we're rebuffing him, though. We're rebuffing him already. Oh, okay. uh, so we, we specifically added some Smolder buffs in point seven to measure the magnitude because we don't want him to take over. We don't. I think Smolder sure, probably yeah. shouldn't be the number one AD carry for pro play for MSI. If he's in the metagame, that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. There's some teams who want to play slow. That's totally okay. It's such a unique style, but right. you don't want that to necessarily be the only thing that you can play. At right. We don't want it to be dominant. One of the difficulties, difficulties with MSI last year was it was, for the good teams, it was permalution ban and then trade Jinx of Helios. So it's sure. like, actually, there were good bullies and good scalers, but there was only one good bully. So it was ban one and then pick scaling. And so it's like, well, we would like if Lucian, Varus, Clist are all good, so you can't just remove all the bullies and only scale. So we're going to not touch them. Interesting. Jinx will probably enter into the metagame, but it should be there's a mix of strategies available. And if mm. teams solve out and they're like, it's just Jinx of Failures every game, it's like, well, that was off of like a very small item buff, which means it was probably already viable, and you know, it's not us like causing it as, as strongly. I love hearing the insight, because that's a lot of questions people have and talk about online, but it's good to hear it from the team. A reminder, everybody, as well, that we do have live Q&A. So if you want to come up here, we're going to be starting the Q&A segment here shortly. If you have questions for the team, make sure to start lining up over by Daniel Moquin. See that beautiful, luscious lock of hair? Look at that head of hair. Yeah, give a little flick there. Go line up by him. Let him know your question, and then he'll be directing them up once we're ready for the live Q&A. But with that said, I want to bring it back to now champion design in the lens of esports. So, Lexi, I want to hear from you on that one. When, when you're kind of doing the roadmap that you're talking about for a new champion coming out, yeah. how much thought goes into competitive for that champion? Um, we are always aware, um, and we always want to be aware. But again, we're building the game for our players first. So we will need to focus on that first. Um, and that's when, like, later on in the stages, folks like um, David comes in and, and help us on that regard. Um, because you know, like, this is where our core is, is our players, and we want to focus, like, on who those people are, why are we making this champion, and how we can make that experience better for them because before we figure out, like, oh, okay, in terms of competitive scene, what what kind of things that we need to watch out for, how sure. do we balance, et cetera. Okay. Uh, well, now that we have the official answer, I guess I'm going to send it over to you. What champion did you design that you really wanted to be pro-relevant? And actually, oh. and you, you know, let's go even beyond that. <laughs> Is there a champion that you designed that you had a player in mind? You're like, I really hope that they pop off on this. Like, if they get a pentacle moment, that's crowning achievement for you. Uh, one of the ones, so I wouldn't say, I wouldn't describe it as I really wanted to them to be pro-relevant, but one of the ones that I designed to be good in the hands of good players was Viego. Uh, oh, one of the, yeah, he's Viego's difficult. Viego's passive is that he, like, takes other champions, right? So I always, like, kind of had this idea in my people who have played tons of League of Legends, because the best people at Viego technically are the people who know how to play all the other champions. Yeah, you have to yeah. have the knowledge of every champion in the game to fully take use of the kit. Yeah, exactly. So, and then he came out, and once his bugs were resolved, he was a little strong in pro play for, for about a half a season. But um, I think, actually, I'm very happy with how Viego has ended up in pro in the long term. In the short term, he again, he was a little strong. We had to nerf him for a few patches. But like nowadays, he's like, you know, he's seen sometimes. And when he's in the game, it's pretty cool to see him. But he's like not totally dominant. And like that's something we like kind of like hope for when we're thinking about like pro play with a lot of our champions is like it's rough when a character is really, really dominant. Because then um, I mentioned before like audiences where it's like, let's say you just really like he's got a giant sword and really nice abs, right? Like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna be rough if we, like, we keep having to nerf him for pro play because you're not gonna be able to play him in solo queue, right? Um, but at the same time, it's really cool to see that character you main be played by the best players in the game and see them pop off and be like, yo, that was really cool. I wanna do that in my games, right? Yeah. And so there's this balance between, it's actually really cool to see characters in pro, but we have to be very careful when they become too dominant, um, which can happen with characters like 
Viego when he came out, or uh, more recently, Zeri. He's another character I worked on who's had um, some, some rough spots in pro <laughs> before. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a fine balance. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. Like, so I, I wouldn't say I've like never so necessarily thought of like specific players for my characters, but like I definitely like will see players like catch on to my characters and be like really excited to see them play it. Like as an example, Def's Jinx has yep. always been like whenever I see Def a, a game with Def in it, I'm like, please pick Jinx, please pick Jinx, please pick Jinx. <laughs> and he hasn't been playing as much of her recently, but it was, yeah. it's always cool to like see pros like start maining a character and then be like, yes. They're going to pick at this game. I wish we had footage of you when Sneaky got the Baron Steel with Jin W. I imagine that that was probably a fun moment. Uh, I remember that Sneaky was one of the first players to play Jin in pro True. play. And he I, was. as the designer, was so excited to see those first games. I was like, because originally when Jin came out, not many people were playing him for like the first patch. And then Sneaky hopped on. I was like, oh, yes, this is going to be so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Lexi, you wanted to hop in there for yeah, a moment. Yeah, I, I, I mean, off of that, um, it's always a celebratory moment for like whenever you're champion gets picked the first time in pros. Um, but like he was saying, in terms of development, Hui would, we knew from the get-go that giving a champion so many tools might be a problem, which is why we went the direction when we did of like a paint mage so that his, you know, abilities are very well broadcasted and you know when you are thinking about your players in terms of like skill levels um, you understand at that level even though he has so many tools the other side can also avoid them if, yeah. they're, if they understand the signs to look for the clear color scheme yeah. that, that's how I always know I'm like okay <laughs> red hurts <laughs> avoid that one uh, that's cool to hear um, now, I, I actually, it, it, you touched on something that I want to get more insight onto before we move on to the next question. I'll also get some of the uh, fan questions coming in here. Uh, do you ever keep track of how long it takes for champions to get picked in pro? Is there like a board that's like, okay, well, Smolder came out and was locked in day one, so that's like a record set right there, but it took way, you know, a couple weeks. So actually, with a lot of champions, even if long term they're not really that good pro pro picks, mm -hmm. um, it's actually like likely that a lot of champions get picked in pro pretty early, mainly because pros have a lot more games and practice than the average player. So like, That's let's say point, a character yeah. comes out like say Set back in the day, and he came out and Set long term was probably like pretty just generally overpowered and strong on his release. But like, he wasn't necessarily that in solo queue because people were still learning him, still learning how to play him. Yeah. But then in pro play, pros like very quickly picked up on how strong he was, you know, got a lot of games and got a lot of practice. And so after set came out, he showed up there. That's but then interesting, yeah. If you look at him now, the long term is he's not that pro dominant. He's not that seen there anymore. But just because on release, pros were able to like go up that skill curve much faster than everybody else. You saw a lot of set right when he came out. And so I'm noting that like, basically like, when a lot of characters come out, I'd say it's not necessarily surprising to see some of them in pro because they might be balanced for solo queue while pros just are higher up on that skill curve. That's a very interesting way to frame it because, yeah, I mean, it's their job to learn the new champs. They're going to be scrimming, playing a lot of games on it. Your average player, I don't know the metrics for how many games a day they play, but it's not going to be as many <laughs> as a pro player. So. That's cool insight. Thank you very much for that. Well, um, that was a lot of the conversations that I wanted to talk about, but I want to hear from the audience and what they have to say and uh, questions that they have. Daniel, are we ready? Oh, yeah, we're ready. All right, Daniel, give us the first question. Live right. Q&A here for anybody on the panel. Yeah, we got, we got uh, Gabe from Arkansas here who wants to ask a question to the panel. Let's make some noise for Gabe from Arkansas. Hi, Gabe. Yeah. Uh, so as a Rel jungle player, what was the thoughts behind taking away like the bonus monster damage and just like kind of gutting her from the jungle and forcing her more support? Sure, yeah. Um, what it comes down to was, uh, I know obviously there are Rel jungle players out there, right, who, who like her very much and, and had a fun time playing her. Um, at the end of the day, her popularity and support is like 10 to 1, and that's, you know, 10 times as many players, right? And what it comes down to is we have to keep balancing around pro play to the detriment of 90% of her player base. And the reason she's often a pro problem or creates pro staleness is because she's a jungler who really, really excels at objective takes and doesn't want gold in any way at all. Um, and isn't high damage, which is like actually a pretty good thing for a, 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 a tank support to not have to deal a bunch of damage to do her job very well when a lot of other players are considered how much damage in the game. And so there's a lot of things that Rel does really well that we're happy about, except be pro jailed. Um, and so it, I know it sucks for the thousands of Rel jungle players out there. Like that hurts, I know. Um, but it allows us to serve the, the 
vastly larger number of everyone else, and especially RHEL support players, because it gives us the room to give her more power or give her other strengths uh, that would just send her into the stratosphere and pro play itself. And so uh, <clears throat> this was done now primarily because of MSI, because it's like, okay, we're going to do pro play balance now, and one of the things we're going to do is remove RHEL jungle uh, from the pro meta. We did it this patch so that if she's weak, we can buff her right away in point eight. She can be a viable support there, that's fine. Uh, but that was kind of the whole set of logic, right? It was like, if she was like a, you know, not in pro play, reasonable solo queued champion, we'd be fine to leave it. And it's totally okay. Like, you know, Mordekaiser jungle has a similar pick rate and he's fine. And we're not worried about that. But it's because it caused other problems, which is really unfortunate. But um, in terms of, you know, solving problems and the opportunity cost of, of doing everything else, like this was the choice we made. And I'm, I'm sorry that it hurts for you because like that sucks and I'm sorry about that. An apology from Freak. Anything else to add, August or Lexi, on, on that topic? <laughs> All right. Here's what I want you to do then, Gabe, from Arkansas. Uh, Freak at Riot Games. Get a, a survey going out to all your friends. Get them to sign the petition to buff <laughs> Royal Ra Jungle. Okay? Oh, yeah, great, I'll sign it. I'll sign it. All right. Thank you, Gabe, very much. Everybody, round of applause for Gabe from Arkansas. Yay! All right, next up. All right, we got Austin from Irvine here. He's got a question for the panel. Austin? Yes. Austin from Irvine, a local. Yes. All right. How's it going, yeah. Austin? Uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, so this is mostly a champ design question. So I've been playing League all the way since Season 2. And a key thing that I've noticed over the years is that a lot more movement abilities have just been put into the game compared to older League, where it was much simpler champions. And along with that is that we don't have as many point-and-click stuns. Most stuns, uh, taunts, everything like that, it's no longer point and click, it's all skill shots, that which is a lot harder to hit on champions that now have uh, Akali six dashes and things like that. So it's mostly, has there been a design philosophy change on why there's more movement abilities versus having these lockdowns, considering, because even with Skarner, his abilities are now point and click, which do give them more power, but it's much harder to hit now, of course. A lot of good points, Austin. A lot of good points. Uh, yeah, so uh, I can talk about that a little bit. Um, you're right, movement has increased in League of Legends over the years. Um, and I would argue, as, as a champion designer who's been working on League of Legends for a while, that overall, that's a good thing. Uh, one of the reasons that we tend to put movement in League of Legends is that we find that like League of Legends tends to be a more compelling, dynamic game when characters have a bit more outplay potential. Uh, like. Going back to season two, the, the Zed versus Zed, Faker, what was that moment, right? Like, a lot of that big, uh, explosive um, action that came from that was the fact that, like, Zed's a mobile character, right? Now, that doesn't mean that we should just put mobility on everything no matter what. Like, I sometimes we put too much in the game. I'll, I'll take responsibility for Zeri and say, I think, you know, when she came out, I gave her too much mobility. So we don't always get it perfect. But generally, the idea is that probably, I would argue, very early League roster, roster probably had less mobility than is like optimal for League of Legends. So I think it's been good that we've been adding it over the years, although we have to be like, you know, responsible about it. Um, <clears throat> and the question I would ask when we're talking about like some immobile champs, because that's what people bring up is like, what about the immobile champs? The question I ask about them is like, well, hey, well, what do they get to do because they don't run, uh, they, they don't dash around? Like as an example, Jinx gets to shoot you from 725 range. Jin gets to shoot you from 3000 range because they don't get to dash over walls. Um, in regards to targeted stuns, uh, it's a complex design problem because targeted stuns tend to make your character like pretty um, low variance, right? Like as an example with Skarner, um, when we were working on him and we like made his ultimate not targeted, that was to allow it to hit multiple people. And that was to allow him to crash through a wall and <laughs> slam you into a wall and then try to ult you. Where you can imagine like how that would play out if he then got to targeted pull you after slamming you into the wall, right? Like that would be a lot uh, rougher. So kind of mentioning that I think you're right that there's less targeted stuns and like I would, I would agree that like those are valuable outputs against mobility. It's actually one of the reasons I put one on Briar, was just like, yeah, where are the targeted stuns? And Briar seemed like a place to put it, but it's a complex thing where it's like, hey, when your character has a targeted stun, it tends to like put costs on the rest of the kit. So it's this question of like, well, Skarner could have a targeted stun on his ult, but then it probably can't hit multiple people. He probably can't crash through walls. And so it's, it's, a, balancing, it's a balancing act, basically. Tough balancing act to pull off. Thank you so much. Uh, did I answer your question, Austin? Austin from Irvine, everybody! And remind everybody, if you do have questions, get in line. We should have time for a few more here. Daniel, who we got next? Uh, we got James from right here in Santa Monica. Another local James <laughs> from Santa Monica. 
Give it up for James from Santa Monica, everybody. What's the question, James? Uh, so my question is uh, about champion design. I want to know in the history of League of Legends, who do you think is the most well-designed, just best champion you guys have ever made, and why is it Ooh. Jin? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is a great one for everybody to answer then, because I'm sure you'll all have different, uh, different answers. Well, um, I worked on Jin, so I might be a little biased, but uh, he is one of the champions I'm more proud of. Uh, I would call out that I think that the art team on Jin did an incredible job. The way he sounds, the way he looks, the way he walks around with his animations, just all really came together to create an ama amazing character. So thank you so much for, for loving the character. Um, if I was to say, though, um, I actually think that uh, Lux is one of our best design characters, actually. Um, she, she's very simple, she's very straightforward, but yet she still feels like very unique and special and incredibly fun. And her kit holds up over almost 15 years, even despite being made way back in the day. Um, so I, I, she'd be one of my call-outs for one of our best designs. Although I always wonder what would have happened if we had shipped um, her W stealthing people, which was the original idea her for that w spell. Her W what? Uh, it used to stealth people, her teammates. Um, well, then you ship, designed it one. It was too buggy, but imagine that. But yeah, that, that would be my then. answer is, is Lux. I, I kind of want to see that, but I also like chaos. Lexi, yeah, what about you? I mean, as a Lux May, I'm going to have to agree. Um, but it's for a little bit different reasons. I think Lux is really good, like August said, for a variety of players. Um, when you're starting out, that range really, really helpful. Um, so, you know, players pick her up and is able to get on the rift right away. But she also has nuances, right? Like how to how to embrace that auto proc um, and being able to play safely or more aggressively. Um, so she has a lot of nuances over time. Um, I would like to also say like some of our newer models monster champions, um, like Nefiri and Smolder. Um, Nefiri wants, like, her goal is to teach players on how to, like, play assassin characters. And Smolder, like, for a monster champion, the amount of love that he received is just amazing. And it shows, like, shows the rest of the company that monster champion can be popular. <laughs> yeah. Like, it doesn't have to be another, you know, human. I, I love Nefiri as well. That's one of my favorite modern design champions. Freak? I'm going to go with Thresh. I think. Thresh. Thresh That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, and I immediately get the nods from people to my right. Yeah. That, I, so what's funny is I remember um, when he when he came out way back when, I remember the like internet discourse was like, this champion is unbalanceable. Look how many things he does. And now he's like super <laughs> beloved, really popular, really cool. And it's like, like y'all made a really high skill cap, um, like really flashy support where like, yeah, he does damage, but like, he requires a ton of forethought, uh, way more than other supports do, I think, in general. Um, you can clearly tell when it's a good, like a good thresh versus a bad thresh, and it's just like the gameplay's super fun. He actually feels like he's supportive. He doesn't solo kill you basically ever. He can peel, he can engage, he can do a lot of stuff. But like, he has like a pretty wide toolbox, but it's hard to use, and he's balanced while doing so. So, uh, which just like that whole thing comes together. Like this guy's just awesome. Thresh is an incredible support. So yeah. cool. I love him as a support main, though. I can't stand him because I can't play him, but he's awesome. Similar, he's awesome. yeah. As like I said, Heimerdinger. Uh, all right, thank you. And uh, what was the name again? James from Irvine, or not Irvine, from Santa Monica. Santa bro. Monica. Keep up. James from Santa Monica. Well, thank you, Freak, for, for catching up for Happy me. Happy to help. Everyone give it up for James. Yay. All right, Danny, who we got next? All right, we got Thomas, also from Santa Monica. Oh, sorry, Jordan from Santa Monica. Jordan. Hi. Uh, nice to see you guys. Um, so, yeah, I, my, it's not really a question, but I'm a Swain main. I'm a Swain one trick. And I think one of the issues I've had this season specifically is that Swain doesn't fit anywhere anymore. Uh, as a mid laner, he's out, kind of just outranged by every meta mid. Uh, as a support, he doesn't get enough gold anymore, especially the nerf damage. Uh, I've actually seen most players playing him top lane at the highest win rate, which makes sense, but then you have to learn a whole new lane. So I'm, I'm wondering what you guys are going to do about champs that sort of don't fit into a role anymore, and they're kind of spread everywhere at under 50% win rate. They're just kind of hanging out and seeing where people can play them. Uh, are more reworks coming, or is it more about balancing champs that are currently meta? Uh, I guess I'll take the first tab. What's interesting is he's statistically a very strong performer, though your your feelings of like he doesn't feel very good, I think are very accurate, right? Like this champ wins a lot of games in mid and a lot of games in bot, um, but he doesn't feel like he wins all those games. But turns out like his champ is really good when you're against like a Nautilus and you just like ult and you're like, thanks for the health, buddy. Um, but you're right, his, his player base is primarily in support, which we should just do our best to honestly just support that being what's good. Um, 
I think that is like valuable to like make him better there, right? And make him feel like he's a viable like part of the team composition. Um, but yeah, the tough thing is this guy is like statistically performant while not feeling good uh, and not popular in mid and bot, which is like, okay, this raises the flag of like, hey, we should solve the fact that there's this power disparity that doesn't feel like there's a power disparity and the audience is still over down here support, we should do something about that. So I agree with you these problems exist. I do not have an answer for you right away, uh, but like, you're totally right and we should do something about that. No, you're not. You're, <laughs> you're not, not crazy, Jordan, don't worry. Yeah, I've been aware of this state for like a while, just like I haven't gotten to get yeah. to him yet. In regards to balance with a character like that, where it's like, hey, there's this high win rate, but doesn't actually feel as strong. Uh, one thing I like to think of from a design standpoint is like, are there changes that we can make to the character that make them feel significantly stronger while not necessarily causing them to win significantly more? Where it's like, hey, th this is bad, we shouldn't do this. What if we gave him a dash and then reduced his health by 10 per level, right? Like, that's something that probably makes him feel like, you know, really strong in a certain way while necessarily, not necessarily winning more. Again, that's a really bad example, shouldn't do that. But, and so I would ask questions about Swain of like, as an example, maybe his E should be a little bit more unfair um, so that it's just easier to hit and then you can like run, run through those patterns. Oh, yeah, idea. or the recast. Yeah. Or, yeah. or maybe. <laughs> he's maybe, got ideas for you. You yeah. should bring him in. <laughs> if he's feeling rough in the new season, maybe he's supposed to synergize with some of the new items in different ways. Uh, Cause you know, you know, the items have changed and maybe he's like looking at them and being like, you know, I like Leandre's, but it doesn't give me the mana it used to. So maybe there's something there, right? Like there's there's things we could look at. All right, that's awesome. Alexa, anything to add on that one? Uh, yeah, I was gonna quickly talk about reworks. Um, when we are targeting like big overhauls like VGUs, um, we are generally looking for champions that have like a lot that's not going on for them. So in terms of our narrative as well as design. So I don't think Swain is on that list of VGU candidate because honestly, I think his gameplay is like not bad. Um, it could use freshen up, it could use tune ups. Um, and that's when like, you know, when designers have an idea, mid scopes come in or our SRT partners take a closer look at like the state of the, the game um, in regards to Swain himself. All right, thank you so much Jordan, for the question. Real quick, Jordan, before you leave though, I'm gonna put you on the spot. I'm gonna paint a target on your back. Because I know that this man is uh, pretty fit. If anybody can give me proof that they did more push-ups than Dr. Jordan Respawn, uh, you can walk away with this gin unlocked statue, okay? You see him up at the front, got the nice haircut, got the white bag. If you can do more push-ups than that guy. All right, thank you for the question, Jordan. All right, this is going to be time for the final question. Oh, it's, it's going to be an all-day thing, Jordan. Don't worry. You don't have to stick around. People are just going to come up to you all day now. All right, last question before we wrap up the Q&A segment. Daniel, who we got? All right, we got J. Cole from Massachusetts. Hi there, how's it going? Howdy, howdy. <laughs> so my question's actually regarding uh, Kane. I'm a filthy one trick, uh, you know, happens. <laughs> but I noticed that a couple of the past buffs were towards his uh, blue form and then just recently towards the Rost. I was wondering what's the possibility of getting, uh, you know, like some of the early Kane, like base Kane form. Because I feel like uh, even though those buffs are nice, but like a lot of the times it's like I'm 15, 20 minutes, I still don't have my four and I'm struggling. <laughs> uh, so Free could speak more to this, but one thing I'll note about Kane is um, it doesn't mean he's perfectly balanced right now, what I'm about to say, but like one of his intended weaknesses is that you are struggling before you get your form. It's like he's, he's got this whole thing where it's like, hey, you're weak until you become your true self, either, you know, Shadow Kane or Rost, right? So... Again, not saying the balance is perfect where it is, but like that's one of the things we, we consider is like it, we, we do want that early game to be a bit rougher for him to account for the fact that he gets this big form transformation and then gets, gets to be powerful. That said, might not be in the right spot right now. Anything to add, Preak? Not really, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hopefully that answers your question, though. It, that, that's another tough champion to balance because of the intention behind it and knowing where to actually put those hits. So thank you so much for the question. And Thanks. one final round of applause for our guests up on stage. Thank you so much, Lexi, August Freak, for every day putting in the work to make the game that we love even better. So thank you so much for coming up. And thank we're going to have a quick break here before we get ready for the live dive. So stick around. And one last time, make some noise for your guests.
I can hear the sound of a heartbeat before it goes out. Won't never leave my memory of bloodshed all around. I can see a tear. All right, everybody, we're gonna get the dive live started here soon. But before that, I always forget my phone charger every time I go somewhere. Did anybody forget a phone charger? I got a couple up here. Who wants a phone charger? First four to the stage. Oh, what? That was fast. Oh, well, there you go. Welcome, welcome. There you go. <laughs> Congratulations. We're all irresponsible. Let's go. Yeah. Play with shields made of stone. Share our dreams and sit our thrones. Be Kobe, you want to throw some swag out? All right, Kobe, here's your options. We got hats, we got plushies. You got more phone charger. Did you forget your phone charger today? He doesn't have one. All right, there's a plushie right here. Who wants the plushie from Kobe? Round two, round two. Here's the Heimerdinger. Oh, you'll wear the hat? Which one? LCS or Timo? Good choice. Nice taste. CS Finals, how are we feeling out there? All right, we got a special event right now, live, happening on stage behind me. We're going to have the dive. Now, there will be a live Q&A component, so if you got questions that you want to ask any of the member on the cast, make sure you start forming the line. You saw it earlier, doing the dev Q&A. Speaking of, if you have more dev questions, there is a booth. Shout out to all the Riot devs that are hanging out here all day, asking your questions about any champions balance, stuff like that. Also, if you've noticed, it is Easter Sunday. There's eggs all along the premises, outside and inside, and there's one very special one. I don't believe it's been found. I've been told 
if anybody can find the golden egg, not the one I'm holding, but there's another one hidden somewhere on the premise, you're walking away with a very special prize. That's all I can tell you. But be on the lookout for that. Now, without further ado, the dive! What's up, everyone? Hello, and welcome to our special dive live here uh, at finals. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> We're coming off of a very one-sided series yesterday. Cloud9 played TL not the way that they ended, uh, wanted to end their season, unfortunately, means we're going to be having to eat a lemon tomorrow on the dive. Uh -oh. Yeah, that was unlucky. <laughs> Is that what it was? It was just bad luck? There's still a chance, though, that you guys lose and we I We can all lose, lose together. Yeah. We now I... have to ha cheer for a TL to win, so Kobe also loses. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I, I voted... FlyQuest for my prediction, but I should have voted TL, so you'd have to eat a lemon, too. Well, our bet was, was just who's going to win, so if FlyQuest don't win, then I will also have to eat a lemon, and we can just all eat lemons together. How surprised were you at how the series yesterday looked? Because I, I thought it was actually going to be pretty competitive. I know there was a lot of people who were predicting 3-0s on one side or the other, but I kind of thought that was more just memes, to be honest. Um, most people I talked to thought it was going to be pretty competitive, and it was not at all. I was, I was definitely surprised. Even after we had already witnessed a Cloud9-03, um, I, I did not expect a full collapse like this. I thought they were going to be able to change some stuff, but the games looked so similar to the previous series. I was kind of shocked that they weren't able to, to make a lot of changes and improvement. Yeah, Cloud9's had a lot of ups and downs this year. Um, it, I thought they'd do better because their previous series was so bad, um, but... It seemed like they just couldn't get it together. Uh, Team Liquid played really well. So, yeah, I mean, it was disappointing as a C9 fan, but that's how it goes. There's always summer. I think that's the exciting part, though, is that Team Liquid looks so good doing it that finals, I feel like this is 50-50 versus FlyQuest. Even though FlyQuest won last time, full best of fives, it was really close. Both of them stomped Cloud9. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I Who stomped Cloud9 harder? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty tough. Coming off fresh off yesterday, I was like, wow, Team Liquid. They kind of equally stumped them, I guess. Yeah, I guess. But I guess because <laughs> Team Liquid's more recent, <laughs> I feel like maybe they, maybe they did it better. Yeah, I mean, it, it, their series, obviously the previous series, the Fly TL series was really, really close. That was 3-2. Um, and I think, you know, watching, watching the TL players after that one especially, they looked so devastated. You know, they were really hungry, I think, to be able to get that rematch. But I think at that point, people were still expecting, oh, it's going to be C9, because C9 was coming off the 100 Thieves series where they were looking really good. And people were like, OK, C9's back. They're going to be able to you know, make the run um, through the lower bracket if they do fall down there. Of course, that didn't end up happening. But the other thing I think a lot of people are talking about for the C9 side now is, oh, does that mean they're going to make changes? You know, because the expectations were so high, the expectation is that you don't just win the LCS, you dominate the LCS, and they're not even in finals. So people are like, all right, well, are there going to be changes for summer? It's hard to say. Um, I mean, I haven't heard really any inside info. Um, not gonna it, leak it right here. <laughs> uh, not not yet. Um, it did Medios seem like tomorrow. In. Tomorrow, I'll leak it. out. Medios is in. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything, yeah. but maybe. Um, no, I mean, it, it it did seem like every player was kind of playing below their own yeah. probably expectations. Uh, and sometimes that happens on teams. Like you kind of saw it with energy this year as well, where. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't click with your team. Um, maybe the combination of players, the natural play styles of everyone just don't mesh very well. And then it leads to everyone kind of like trying to compromise, trying to change the way they play a little bit. And it just ends up not looking good at all. So uh, it's hard to say. Sometimes you need to change, but sometimes you just need more time. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the weirdest things for me about the whole Cloud9 situation was that it, it, it just felt like everything wasn't working, right? It wasn't, it wasn't that you could just point to one thing and say, ah, well, this player played really bad and that's why they lost, or ah, they were really bad in drafts, or ah, it was this or it was that. They were kind of outplayed across the board, it felt like, uh, against both Fly and TL. And even just individually, it didn't feel like some of these guys who we've come to expect to have these big moments to be able to take over games, it didn't feel like they kind of had that. I, I don't know what it was that was missing, but kind of like almost the aura, so to speak, around guys like Berserker and Blabber and, and JoJo that you expect them to have those monster games, to be able to take over games and just you know get some wins on the board no matter what. It felt like that was really missing in playoffs for Cloud9. Yeah, I mean, there were individual things where, like you're saying, they were lacking. Uh, but also, I felt like the team play, yeah. a lot of the team fights, they got outplayed in team fights, the coordination. Worst macro, too. Um, yeah, like front line would be super separated from back line, and they just get, you know, massive rumble ult. 
On the like make changes point though, I remember JoJo tweeting yesterday right afterwards that yeah, they wanted to win the series so bad, but that we know what to improve on next split, trust the process. So, I mean, obviously that's one player and they don't know if their changes are gonna be made by management, but that sentiment is we're gonna, you know, we know what is wrong, we're going to improve. So, you know, I, I would kind of go off of that. Yeah. At least coming straight off of the players, off of the series. And I'm always a big fan of like sticking together for a whole year. Making changes in between splits can be really rough sometimes, except for the fact that this year is kind of unique and that we have a bunch of really good free agents. That's what I was going to say. You have, um, you have be, licorice and be, stuff waiting in the wings. Because the league shrunk down to eight teams this year, we have a bunch of floating really good free agents. Uh, that have been grinding away, so yeah, that that puts a little question mark onto it. Yeah, the support king's van is available. We got liquors available. Spica we got rank Spica one. available. He's got multiple rank one. Yeah, I mean, uh, one in MVP as well. I, I don't I don't think they're going to make too many changes, but I wouldn't be shocked if something happened just because it is a unique situation. You know, often when we talk about changes, even if a team does poorly between spring and summer, I always say we well, have to evaluate who who is actually better because a lot of times people are like the team did bad get rid of them all, make changes, and you're like, okay, well, who are you going to get, right? Because usually between spring and summer, there's not really top-level players available, so you can't even improve the roster, so it doesn't make any sense. But uh, I think in this case, you know, we are going to see some teams picking up some of those big uh, free agents, whether it is Cloud9 or someone else. I think a lot of those teams will be picking people up, so it'll be kind of interesting going between spring and summer. But we should be talking a little bit about finals today. It is, of course, going to be FlyQuest versus TL. FlyQuest has not yet won an LCS title as an organization, and TL has not won since they won last with Doublelift. I think Smithy was even on that roster, so it's been quite a bit of time. Obviously, Core was there. But this TL org has been trying to actually repeat that for so long. You know, they got rid of Doublelift after having won four straight. Um, have tried a ton of different rosters. And it was kind of interesting because it feels like this is a roster that I didn't see them as, as like building for that championship, but it's actually one that maybe is going to bring it. Yeah, I think TL has surprised a lot of people, including me a lot, because I remember we talked in the beginning of the season. They kind of seemed like the team that was playing it safe. They just picked a scale. Um, they didn't really try to do a whole lot. They played really slow. But they, they've really turned it on in playoffs, especially. Like they, I think they have like the bloodiest games. They're, they're contesting everything. They're playing really well as a team. So uh, I, I'm really enjoying watching their games. I think they're looking super good right now. And also FlyQuest, um, they've looked pretty good the whole time. So I'm expecting a bloody series and you know probably a pretty close one. Yeah, uh, big shout out to Spawn and the Team Liquid coaching staff. Uh, I know they've been grinding away. They would not take Mondays off for a long time, whereas pretty much all teams, like, that would be the LCS off day. Uh, but they would continue to scrim and grind away, and it really has paid off. Not only are they now the most combined kills per minute team, but they came from regular season, they were eighth. They were literally the slowest, least bloody team to the most bloody team. A massive transformation for them and, and the players. At one point, they were actually the slowest of any team in any major region, not even just the LCS. Yep. yep. Wow. And cool. the players talk about it too when we, you know, had them after the the first series of playoffs, talking about the the change in mentality and uh, you know the direction that was given of like we are not going to give up anything for free anymore, and it seems like the entire squad has bought in on that. I think both of these squads. The reason they're in finals is because the teams are so aligned on how they want to play the game now. FlyQuest seems like they are fully aligned behind Inspired. He is this massive leader for the team. He's, he's helping every lane, uh, kind of giving direction to how they want to play the game. And now for Team Liquid, uh, everybody's focused and bought in on this um, you know, aggressive style. Yeah, I really like watching Liquid's games too because they seem like the team that they're willing to take risks. I remember yesterday there was a play where uh, they were like proxying bot turret and um, they saw Jojo walk through lane. So they knew it was gonna be like it probably even numbers and they still just dove him anyway. Uh, that kind of aggression and just like go for the throat mentality is something that I think is really strong. Um, and the fact that they don't really seem to get too deterred if it doesn't work out. They had another play against C9. I don't know if it was game two or three, maybe three where they Literally got like 5-0 aced bot, yeah, bot, bot lane. Yeah. Respawn um, faster. Get on the, yeah, get on the mean, map they, and go to the other side. It was like, oh my god, is this the, the comeback? But no, it wasn't. It, <laughs> TL just <laughs> rallied immediately. They're like, yeah, we gave him five kills or whatever. Like, let's just win. 
I, I really liked how Umpty talked about it in, in, I think it was after their, it wasn't their FlyQuest series, it was after the next series they won. Um, you know, he, he had an interview where he was just talking about how in scrims, this is the way that they always played, but they didn't play that way on stage. And on stage, it's always like, oh, no, it's okay. Let's not take the risky play. Let's just give that up. Let's just give this up. We'll fight later. We'll be able to win later. And, and I really think it kind of is a good example of, of practice how you play type of thing, you know, where it's, they're trying to actually play the same way now on stage as the way that they're practicing. They're fighting and scrapping for every single objective and every single camp and every single ward. And I feel like that has given them such a clear identity and has clearly made the team way better. Like, there are going to be those moments like you're talking about where you're going to fall flat on your face. But it, like, if that is the best way to play the game, that's the best way to play the game, whether it works every time or it doesn't, right? You kind of have to identify what your team's style is and commit to it. And I think that's something that these two teams have probably done better than every other team in the LCS this split is that they now have a very clear identity. Um, you, know, you talked about Inspired Kobe as kind of that driving force for FlyQuest. That's something that the players on the team have spoken about a lot as well is that it's like, Everyone is rallying behind his idea of how to play the game, and everyone is kind of uniting behind that. And having all five players going in the same direction, which it feels like both these orgs do, is just so important to having success. Yeah, definitely is in league. Uh, that's why I think this best of five is going to be a banger. I think we're going full five games. Uh, I hope that we're I going. I hope so. I hope we're going full five games. Remember, if we're talking about records as well, the first playoff series that we had between these two teams was the most bloody of all time for LCS and then fourth most bloody playoff series of any major region as well. So we should have some action. No more three zeros, uh, I promise. <laughs> Kobe guarantee. Do you, do you think that FlyQuest will play the same way that they played against TL last time, or do you think that FlyQuest will play kind of more like they did against C9? Because it was interesting, in the Fly C9 series, I thought that one was going to be kind of bloody, but then Fly went into that, and I felt like they were more on the passive side, where it looked like Cloud9 was more trying to push for, for fights, and FlyQuest was just refusing to fight them and only taking the ones that were really beneficial. Whereas in the Fly TL series, it was that like scrap over every single thing. I think that FlyQuest will try and match more and mirror, um, but you can't seed ground to Team Liquid. If you let Core and Umpty walk into your jungle and get their deep wards super early, which they try and always do super aggressively, then you're just gonna keep losing out on plays and you're gonna be slower to all the moves. So you have to at least def like meet them at the pace that they're setting. Um, maybe not like over chasing and forcing yourself, but you have to at least rise to it. Yeah, I, I really wanna see how uh, the junglers play against each other because I know, you know both of them are very good and I thought it was funny in Umpty's interview yesterday after their series, he was saying how in scrims impact always says, you know, just like leave me alone, don't come top. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, but then on stage, he's just battling to the death, and he's like, yo, I need you top right now, bro. Um, so I, I think the jungle, like, you know, early movements and, like, the where they choose to pressure is going to be super big. Because also, um, Umpty was talking about how mid's fighting a lot. And, you know, we saw in the C9 series, um, for both teams, actually, a lot of mid ganks. And I think part of that is probably because JoJo is super aggressive. But yeah. also, you know, it's just it's good to play around your mid laner. You know, you want... You, you want your mid to have prio, and it is actually going to be another <laughs> a, a yap off in the mid lane. Uh, APA has been just going crazy in the all chat. Type racer battle. Jensen, uh -huh. Jensen actually seemed a little bit like bothered by it in the he last seemed, time. He seemed like offended played. that APA would be chalk and trash. Yeah, like, yeah <laughs> I, it didn't seem like it affected his play too much, but it definitely made it seem ah, like he, he kind of. That one game where they went five bot to try to dive him and just yeah. all kill themselves. Yeah, maybe. He, he was in bit. their heads for sure, dude. Yeah, but I, it didn't seem like his. It, his individual performance was getting worse. Maybe like decision making was a little decision making uh, skewed was a toward sus, wanting to shut this guy sus. up. Specifically, the third game. I remember yeah, for that sure. game was crazy. The third game, Jensen just it seemed like he lost his mind, and then <laughs> and then after that, he never typed again, and it was fixed. Yeah, I think the coaches cracked the whip out of that. Like, all right, mute all. Yeah, no I'm, more typing. I, I'm really curious if Jensen's gonna play into it at all, or he's just gonna be like, you know what, like. I'm not giving this guy anything. I'm insta meeting him as soon as the series starts. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I hope they type because it's really fun. APA is gonna type for sure. Oh, I mean, it's 100%. just a question of if but anyone's gonna, gonna respond. respond. Is he just typing to himself? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I do think the mid lane matchup is gonna be really, really interesting. And not even just the trash talk, but that's obviously gonna be a, a component of it. But you know, we saw in the series yesterday, for one of the, it felt like the first times ever there was actually like a Ziggs and an ace hole ban against APA. So I'm really curious to see 
you know, if FlyQuest are going to come into this series and be like, okay, we should actually ban away some of these champions, even if we don't think APA is the better mid laner or anything like that, you know, if there is this steep drop in performance when he's off, it, off these best champs, you know, is it worth actually spending the bans? Because that has been a discussion in the community for a long time. And even though Cloud9, you know, you had, you had told us, Blabber and JoJo were saying, well, you can't actually spend those bans because their bot lane is too good. They were actually a one of the first teams, if not the only team, to actually double ban him um, in mid lane and ban out both those kind of niche champions. Yeah, and then, and then still didn't even work. So yeah. I, I feel like Team Liquid, one of the things they also showed in that series um, was... They always have the next couple of steps planned for after they make a successful play. And you saw it especially with the, with the Ziggs, because as soon as APA, uh, you know, they get the tower low enough to blow it up in mid lane, he's already walking down bottom lane while the rest of the team continues to push the other wave so that they then, they keep the minions pushed up so you get that vision from the minions going deep and allow you to go in and get your like domino effect of objectives yeah. and get the next tower. And so it, it that's what, Another contributing factor to like speeding up the game that way because they already have the next step already planned out and then they're moving forward to it um, is I, I thought it was so impressive, especially against a, you know a strong opponent. I do I do think APA plays side lanes well and like, I do think that that's something that he doesn't maybe get enough credit for because um, he's playing on these champions that are actually quite vulnerable in the side lanes. Like he plays pretty much exclusively control mages, but um, he he is someone that I do think puts a pretty good pressure on the map and. That's one of the things that I think is a, a pretty quiet strength of TL. And one of the reasons it's like, even when he dies, it generally feels like he dies with the wave fully pushed up. His team is doing something on the other side of the map at the same time. So it often feels like the deaths aren't as costly as I think we've seen, you know, like when JoJo was getting caught out, it sometimes felt like it was really, really punishing for Cloud9. I've seen some people on Twitter now start to admit that they're um, becoming APA fans, even though they, they didn't, you know, <laughs> intend to. Uh, because, you know, he grows on you. And, and especially with them playing well right now. Uh, love or hate him, I mean, he's fun to watch. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's, he's very polarizing, and I think that's great. You know, it's, it's, it's what makes someone popular. Like, look at Double Lift, right? He's not the kind of guy who, like... People used to hate him early on in his career, People still do like. hate yeah. him. <laughs> like, true, true. I mean, he, he's not afraid to say his piece, and, you know, like, that's really good for the league. You know, it's fun to watch. Uh, it's fun to root for, root against. And I think APA is kind of following a similar path. And to his point about playing side lanes well, I think part of that is also the champs he plays because yeah. he's he's not really playing like Orianna type champs who are really immobile. He's pretty much always been on like Ziggs, Aurelion, Soul, uh, Tristana, where you know they might not be the most mobile champs. I mean, like Ziggs, the other two are pretty mobile. Um, but you know they, they have some mobility and some way to like. Trist is a really good side laner for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even Asol, you know, his, his W is, like, real crazy at getting away. So uh, I, I do wonder if it just seems like something that FlyQuest could make a strategy around APA, just, like, try to make him the pressure point, like, try to make him have a horrible time, uh, and, and it might work, but we'll see. Yeah, one thing that was so impressive for FlyQuest is that they never rushed their game plans um, like, I don't think they're going to fall in the trap of like, oh, we, you know, we have to camp this lane or we have yeah. to, you know, put a stop to, you know, whatever plan Team Liquid are trying. It seems like they always will remain calm and play to their own win conditions rather than like following the, the, the pace that TL is going to try and set. So I, I hope that we get a really fun like push and pull between those two styles. I think it's also going to be really interesting coming off of uh, yesterday's series with Impact, where he was playing like kind of like fight to death. He 1v3, was playing more aggressive. Question mark. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, Impact is even in the interviews before he was saying, ah, at first, you know, APA, when he's typing, like, should he be saying this? But then it, he was saying, oh, he thought it was kind of fun. And as long as he's enjoying it and it's not taking away from his gameplay, he has no problem. And Impact's even been getting involved in some of the trash talk himself, which I never really would have thought he'd be that kind of guy. So it's kind of funny to see that he's even being converted by APA on it a little bit. And even just in play style, right? Like, he had a really good Renekton game. He had a really good Rumble game um, and was playing a little bit more aggressive. So top lane, we haven't talked much about, but Bwipo is always one of those big question marks where, you know, I know he, he had the pros episode where he was saying, hey, like, I generally try to play the more stable role so that my rookie bot lane has, has room to, you know, play aggressive. And if they make a mistake, I can kind of pick up the slack. But he is one of those guys that can be the X factor because he has so many unique picks and so many different angles that he can kind of bring out. And Impact, on the other side, I think is, is one of the most predictable as far as like his champion pool, right? He plays really well, he's very consistent, but you kind of know what you're going to get as far as champions from him. So if there was you know, a lane to try to cook up some counterpicks, it could be top lane. 
Yeah, definitely could be. And uh, never count out Impact, Shen, Gangplank. I've been uh, waiting for the Shen for like three <laughs> years, man. I'm <laughs> counting it out. It's that, gone. That's a game five that, only thing. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, his, that's been his plan. That's, that's okay. the plan the entire okay. time. Well, he got me, so. <laughs> <laughs> now we've all forgotten. Um, yeah, I, I expect top lane to be uh, super exciting, uh, especially because they're both such big leaders and in-game talkers. Every team that Impact has been on, uh, every single teammate's always talking about how much he leads the team in macro, how much he's helping the team through the mid game. Um, and, and same for Bwipo, which is, I feel like that's more rare for top laners to be that vocal and that much involved in leading the rest of the team in like the, the early game macro. Usually I feel like it's more, you know, supports and junglers and stuff. But well, this, is, this is like, I remember hearing some stories about um, when, God, was I think it was, I can't remember if it was when Bin was on RNG for a little while or what team was on, but it was a story about scrims at Worlds and some teams were playing against them. And it was like basically the team that Bin was on, uh, they didn't have their, their top laner or their AD involved in any of, of the game reviews. Like they would basically just have them play solo queue because they're like, you just need to play your lane well. No, you, don't, you don't need to be involved in any of the decision making. Huh. So it was just the mid jungle and support that were involved in it at all, which I thought was really funny. I think it was Bufo that was actually uh, talking about this. But it's just kind of an interesting story where they're like, you just need to focus on, on playing your lane well and nothing else matters for you. But Bufo and Impact are kind of the opposite of that. Yeah, I met, that story is from Pros. From it Bufo. is from Bufo. Yeah. And it was when he was talking about the benefits of having inspired on the team, like yep. helping the other players and leading the other players. So, so he, he can just focus on Yeah, so then he gets more time to just focus on himself. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, Impact, you know, he's, he's always had a reputation for being like the team player guy. He's not going to play for himself. And I think that is part of why he's like, good at shot calling and stuff because uh, he thinks about the game as a whole a lot more than his own situation, right? And um, it's super nice to... Because I, I, I got to play with him for... Uh, you know, 2016 C9, and just having someone be like, okay, dude, like, I'm gonna go bottom, I have TP, don't worry about me, just play top side, I'll TP if something happens. It's like, okay, that's really easy to do. Like, that's easy to play around, as opposed to if he's, like, you know, demanding his whole team, like, hey, like, you gotta play around me, and, you know, it just makes it Or as a jungler, you're getting difficult. pulled in multiple lanes, trying to cover both sides. Yeah. Looks like right. we got some questions. I, I hate to break it uh, up the conversation, but uh, we do have a question here. Because uh, we're getting ready for the live finals. So we actually have one question from an audience member uh, for all the members <laughs> of the dive. Hi. Used to be a big fan. Feels like the dive has oh. gone down quite a bit this split. <laughs> Do you feel like anything changed uh, to cause, you know, these sorts of problems? Well, take this we, one, Medios? <laughs> we got a new commissioner who's, who's really just been tearing the league apart. Uh, things have all been kind of going to hell ever since we got this new guy in. So not really sure. But What about the dive, though? Oh, the dive's doing great. Yeah, I don't, I don't know uh, why you feel that way. Um, you know, the I, our commissioner actually told us, you know, the metrics were looking good, viewership is <laughs> up, people are really happy with the changes that have happened. Yeah, so you know, I'm really sorry you feel you that just, way. I think you just have bad taste. <laughs> well, I think you need sure to talk to the commissioner. Yeah. I, th I think that's what you need, uh, questioner of the audience. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for the live dive. Round of applause for the dive. They're going to go get thank ready you, for the show. And we're going to be sending to a break here shortly. So thank you so much, guys. Everybody here live in the audience, if you got inside tickets, a reminder that the doors will close at 12.55 for the opening ceremonies. You won't be able to get in until after. If you want to see the opening ceremonies live, get inside before 12.55. Everybody outside, you're fine where you are. Thanks so much, everybody, for Fan Fest. Make some noise for LCS Finals!
I don't know, man. I, I can't. I can't say C9 after today. I just can't. I just can't. I'm sorry. versus FlyQuest. Welcome back to the LCS waiting room. We have Raz, myself, Emily, and Sven. Once again, good to have you back. Good to be back. I'm excited for today. Yeah, and I was hoping for a longer day <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Four games, hour. maybe five. Anything? <laughs> Any sign of life from Cloud9? Are they alive? It's like the poking the stick meme, like do something. <laughs> but are they back? Week one, they're back. <laughs> but okay, let's pull up the bracket just to see how we got to this spot before we talk about what happened to C9. Here's how the playoffs actually shook out. Remember, before playoffs, 100 Thieves was actually the number two seed going in. They got swept by Cloud9 in the first round, made us think Cloud9 was back. Then Cloud9 <laughs> did not win another game. They actually tricked us for the rest of playoffs. <laughs> yeah, they actually tricked they us. They tricked us. They actually tricked us. <laughs> and you made your entire what was it like your 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 entire report card based off that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I said, the report card doesn't lie. I was not a good student. They were not a good team. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah. Okay. All right, get it all out. That's a punchline. <laughs> get it all out. So, uh, what happened? We can spend a little bit of time at the top of the show since, you know, split long. We were saying Cloud9 was the super team. What we were talking in week one, even with Doublelift, I was like, what is it, like 50-50 that they win the whole thing? And it was like kind of hard to pick. Clearly, things did not go well for C9. So what what was some of their biggest issues, do you think? I mean, I think a lot of it is not even necessarily like, they obviously still have five very good individuals as a team. I think the thing is they just never had a lot of coordination or a unified idea on how they wanted to play the game as a team. And I think it specifically shows when you go up against a team like TL, who while their names might not be as impressive to people on paper, when they load into the game, I do get the sense that they all know exactly how they want to play together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it reminds me of, uh, actually, Azale had an entire Telestrator segment based off the 100 Thieves series, where it's like, okay, perfect. Like, uh, Fudge has pushed in his lane. He's getting a ward down in the enemy top side jungle. Uh, the information that you're gathering from that blabber is able to use that, either steal a gromp and then maybe snowball that. Like, everyone's kind of, every action is working alongside that. Like, bot lane is recognizing that you're making them play top lane, they're playing safe. Like, every aspect of their game felt like there was solid teamwork. Um, but then we didn't really see that. It was up and down. A remind, reminder of like just off of the break, week five or something, we saw that element of it. And it's just, it, it wasn't consistent enough. 
I agree. And I think team identity is the most important thing for these teams right now. Both FlyQuest and Teal know exactly who they are and who they aren't. Mm -hmm. They aren't playing things they aren't good at. Mm -hmm. They're only playing things they're good at. Not a win condition always. And they play towards it. I think C9, we all nervously agreed they were the best team in the offseason. Mm -hmm. We thought they were going to sweep mm -hmm. everyone. Then we went 3-0 and we're like, yeah, they were trying to steamroll yeah. LCS. And then it just collapsed. And it felt like they never got back, in lack of a better word. <laughs> they never actually found out what's their style. And they kept trying mm -hmm. different things. And it mm -hmm. just never worked. Yeah, I uh, I sprinted home yesterday and did a 30-minute podcast about this, so I'll try and give the cliff notes okay. really quickly so we can actually talk about the series. It relates a little bit to this graph we have uh, that's been updated from yesterday, which is Cloud9 in every game that they weren't ahead in gold. So if they were even or behind at 15, they lost literally every game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So their mid-game was completely disjointed, and I think... Uh, this is more just a result of the symptoms, not some magic number of like, oh boy, they really need to be ahead. Uh, I think what ended up happening to this team is once they started struggling, they kept just doing that thing where you default back to playing what you're good at. Yeah. Let's play to our strengths. Yeah. But the strengths of the five individual players when combined together make a really poorly tasting meal. <laughs> like they just have the wrong ingredients. I haven't thought of, but like like bananas. I knew you were gonna go for my banana and eggs. eggs. Oh, Leave God. my banana we're, and we're, eggs. Maybe some horseradish. I've never touched that. Yeah. It's just really bad ingredients. Even though individually on the right sandwiches or breakfast, they would could all be really good. Mm -hmm. And I think if they do end up keeping all five players together, if they you know go to Korea and boot camp to try and work on some of their mechanics and team fighting, mm -hmm. I think the really important thing is one or two players need to put significant time into playing differently. Mm -hmm. I think all these players are good enough that they can adjust their play style a little bit and still be near the top, but it's going to feel bad because those are players that are legitimately going to have to change their style if this team wants to reach their peak. That's just my opinion on that mm -hmm. for Cloud9. Yeah. I great. Mean <laughs> that sounds like a great. Hey, you surmise your entire yeah. podcast really well in that one. Yeah, no need to watch those 30 minutes of JLXP. Don't watch it, guys. <laughs> also, we're on the finals today. Uh, Fan Fest is happening outdoors as well. There's a lot of really cool stuff happening out there. There's a bunch of booths. We got Kia out there. We got a champ. Uh, I know Freak and August were out there doing a Q&A earlier. They're doing some live dive stuff out there as well. It's... It's a good time, actually. 100 Thieves is all oh. there. All their coaches were they here, too, as well. OK. Usually, after you lose, you just scatter like the Dragon Ball. But I've actually been seeing a lot of activations yeah. from teams. Like, even NRG was doing like an, uh, an um, like a party of just watching the games just yesterday. So, yeah, watch it's, party. It's, uh, it's all presented by AT&T as well. So it's really cool that they're able to bring this fan fest to the LCS. And I also really, I know Zven and I just like casually strolled past it this morning. Yeah. I really like the fans that show up this early with this level of dedication because they're the ones that have, they go all the way back, right? They're just like, Sven, I loved your time on TSM. I was like, yeah, I didn't like it so much, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <Appreciate it. laughs> yeah. But we just always, I feel like, have really good interactions with the fans that show up to, yeah. to all of our pre-shows. Uh, onto the series today, we have some LCS players with the most consecutive days on their teams yes. all time. And there's one player that is active today in Core JJ, who I think has become a symbol of the LCS. But speaking of the longtime history, what stands out to you guys about this list? I know we had it yesterday as well. Yeah, for me, it was actually, well, the, the side one was the fact that Wild Turtle's is, is legacy was mostly on FlyQuest, and I, I tend to forget that a lot <laughs> of times. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I forget about that a lot. Um, but a lot of it, for, for me, was Core JJ, and, and mm -hmm. elements of C9 as well. And I think it's a good lesson for teams whenever you're trying to build your roster, not to start from scratch, and to start with, like, really core, um, okay, my bad, core, <laughs> <laughs> core elements on the team that set the culture, that are your best players, and that they can actually build up players that come in along Side them so in this case I thought Core JJ now he's ready to like trying to win his next championship it was a great decision from Team Liquid. My two takeaways one as we touched upon yesterday where's Sven yeah. apparently uh, yeah his uh, academy time broke yeah, a streak I'm broke sorry the, broke the LCS that's streak. Broke. They doubled down too because they could have added it going into the today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That guy hates like, me. No. <laughs> what can I say? And his name um, is. But the other thing <laughs> that we kind of also touched upon is how um, Team Liquid in this case, they've obviously stuck with Core as 
the face of the org, kind of mm. the person they're going to build around. But they've also stuck with Jan for a while. In that graphic of the active players, it obviously doesn't cover his academy time, but he did come up from TLA. And I think um, it makes me happy to see orgs actually sticking with their players even when they do make mistakes because I think the teams that do end up winning a lot of the time in recent history in recent LCS history anyway are rosters that are given the grace to actually make mistakes and improve mm -hmm. from that like NRG who we also saw the Dokla contracts kind of Palafox trifecta on there as well yeah I think one thing underrated about it is that there's no lower tier teams on this list there was mm -hmm. one player from Shopify and one from Dignitas Mm -hmm. And they were both in the like lowest played days of everyone else. And it just shows that changing your whole roster every single year isn't how you win LCS if you're lower tier team. Mm -hmm. The building around you know one player might just be better for you. Instead of changing the whole thing, like, oh, I really didn't win LCS, well, just <laughs> blow the whole thing up. And yeah. find your players, and then they don't win? Oh, well, go again. Blow what, the whole thing up again. What's funny about this Get is, five randoms. Funny about this is FlyQuest. Because they switched five they players and they're, they did, yeah. they're waiting in finals. Speaking of which, we got a bit of FlyQuest history here and how close they have actually come to winning the championship. So these are the five players they have playing for them this weekend. Here's uh, the first time, not the first time, one of the more recent times they finished second, I believe, uh, as we're hopping around. In 2020, they finished second twice during the COVID years. Easy to forget that. Awesome. And we also had the 23 roster that felt like they were going to win the whole thing about four weeks into spring, fell short, fell even more short, and we'll see what happens in 24 spring. And it's been a heartbreak for FlyQuest throughout their history because, as you mentioned, people will oftentimes forget, like, those COVID years of 2020, 2021, when they were actually a really competitive roster uh, with Power of Evil, Santorin, Solo, like, Ignar, yeah. and Wild Turtle. Those, that team was incredibly strong, and then they actually paid heavily to be able to get a team like Prince, Vikla, Impact, and all that, and then they actually didn't perform whatsoever going into summer, so it, just looking at the current team, the current team that has honestly been the most successful FlyQuest has been, getting first place during the regular season, and then now being in the finals today, this is where they've come from. This is so funny seeing like middle school turn 15, while well, yeah. two of them were like, <laughs> like Jensen was at, at Worlds while his teammates were like turning 15. <laughs> he really was. Also, yeah, also he was Lucio yeah. also not in like high school? Because I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah, he apparently was. Apparently he just turned 15. Yeah, no, he just turned 15. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah, enough on the okay. graphic. I mean, really wild to see that set of timelines for FlyQuest because all of these players, in a sense, have not like bounced around a whole bit, but they've all been on their own unique journeys. And and one of those that I didn't completely know about, uh, I talked to Papa Smith last week after his games, and he talked to me about how he originally scouted Busio back when he was 17. Take a look. You know, Alan was someone who, when we were scouting for our 2021 amateur team, 100 Thieves Next, at that time we were going through some coaching changes, so actually I was scouting, and I looked at Busio's mid lane play, and this was around the time Doyen B was doing really uh -huh. well. And I was like, this guy from mid lane is timing everyone in the game's summoners in his solo queue games. Mm. And it's like really precise, it clicks. Like, what if he could be a support? And that was like, just me solo throwing out a hope and a prayer uh -huh. and brought the idea to him. And he was like, oh, but I'm a mid laner. Isn't support for bad players? How old was he then? He was 17 okay. at that time. Um, and definitely still in the mindset that like supports were you know, beholden to other people and couldn't contribute much. Yeah. And I was like, have you heard of Carrier? And he was like, no. I'm like, you should look up this kid Carrier. Like, he's pretty yeah. good. I think you could be like something like him. So it's from a, like a humble chat with a 17 year old kid, like four years ago to now, he's come a long, long way. You should look up this kid Carrier. <laughs> <laughs> because of my favorite part of that, but um, don't forget, Busio did make his debut playing Azir support. Obviously, it did not work out. I was like, it's me. Uh, uh -oh. but <laughs> <laughs> it's my hammerdinger. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a matchup. <laughs> at the beginning of this split, I did like, he brought up the Nico support. Um, uh, I think I was like, you know, nudging him in uh, Hotline League chat whether he would take bring out the Rumble support since we've seen it be so successful elsewhere. Um, so I do think that is something that if FlyQuest want to lean into, it is kind of a cool facet of Busio's play that they can bring out when they want. Yeah, and I love the fact that in this year he has been a lot more free to be vocal for his within his lane. Mm -hmm. I know just like he has mentioned when he was on um, 100 Thieves, of course, you have a lot of veterans on the team, a lot of loud, louder voices. So like, and also his rookie year, so you're just kind of like learning and not doing what you did when he was in Academy. 
which was he was a vocal shot caller and he was as creative as possible. He was playing Camille support. He was playing all these types of supports that he kind of needed to like uh, t tame down when he was playing against tougher competition. So I love the fact that he's on that next step of his own development. Mm -hmm. um, and he hit first team all pro. So, I mean, that's kind of a, an, a crazy curve to have. Yeah. And it's going to be really interesting watching him play Core JJ this weekend, yeah. who has been chasing his next LCS title for a really long time. He mentioned yesterday, uh, even in the interview with Zven and I, that he wants to win LCS kind of more than ever. Because mm -hmm. when he arrived in LCS, he did win back-to-back -back LCS titles just right away. He joined a team that was already champions. He helped to win two more along with Jensen and Doublelift in that squad. Oh. And then in 2020, when he was still on Team Liquid, finished third in summer. In 21, two second places, two finals losses, one to Sven. Uh, in a game <laughs> I didn't say five. anything. <laughs> and then one 3-0 loss. Then Ooh. they brought their version of the super team. Best they finished was third place. Last year, it looked dark for a long time. They rallied towards the end, bringing an APA. Again, the best they did was third place. And now it's second is the worst they can do or the championship. So even after winning the two splits, he, every year he's had at least a third place or higher finish, but actually hasn't been able to win that LCS championship in five years. And it's something that he yeah. knows. He like, I'm sure beats himself up with because he talks about it whenever the conversation At, comes All out. the time. Yes, about not being able to win a championship for how long. And it feels like every year that comes by, the criticisms of like his current play mm -hmm. and the fact that he hasn't been able to win without double it, blah, 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 all this stuff come, like gets louder and louder. Yep. I feel like it's been the loudest this split. So the fact that he's now gotten second place and has a chance to like quiet that down and win a championship is crazy to me. Let's take a look at their entire roster timeline because we know what Cordy is going to look like <laughs> since 2018. It's going to be a lot of team liquid. <laughs> yeah, look at Let's that. take a look at the rest of the team. A random Gen G in there. <laughs> yeah. Champion. Yeah. Another it, high school and turned 16 as well. <laughs> well. One guy was winning worlds, the other guy was in high school and <laughs> turned 16. I also love how if you extended both impacts and core, they would just yeah. go off the entire Turn 10 chart. Years. Yeah, it's like while Yon and APA are turning like, yeah, 10 years old, and 11 years old. If APA was 16 in 2018, impact won worlds when he was like 11. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> it's so insane. That's so crazy. Yeah. yeah, he had a message somewhere. I saw it yesterday. I don't did he, I don't know if he tweeted this or he posted it somewhere, but he talked about how like uh, him and Core JJ are like mom and dad for the rest of the team. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. That's his that comment. Was yeah. But I mean, I do think the impact in Core JJ being reunited, the two that won the 2019 back to back titles and then uh, were still together towards the tail end of 2020 do a lot on the map. And I think we're kind of seeing that. With the, with the team now. Another thing that we saw throughout the playoffs is the pace at which Team Liquid has been playing. And we have a rematch of the series that gave us the most kills ever in an LCS playoff series by 44. <laughs> That's yeah, a lot. Right? It's also, <laughs> That's I believe, second worldwide to an Invictus gaming game. I forget which one, but that's, that, that's at like 207 kills and this one's at 205. Well, was that 100 Thieves series? Four games, not five? Ooh, I can't remember. I think it was. Yeah. I think that 100 Thieves series didn't even go five and it's still the fifth most all time. That's wow. how crazy some of their games have been. And just hearing from Spawn just yesterday, we were talking about like, yeah, I mean, on stage during the regular season, we were playing like an NACL team, but in scrims, we were playing like, like an LPL team. Yeah. It's just that frustration of being able to get that out on stage, and they've been doing it during playoffs, so it's been nice to see. Uh, Raz, I know you've been in chat. Yes. Have you used the new emotes? I haven't. Well, you I haven't used the emotes? What? No, but uh, the people out there have been. They've been using Yappa a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <They've actually been laughs> using... So this was originally your idea. You didn't do the execution, but there are new emotes in chat. I don't know how you actually get, you're the master. How do you get these? Oh, so they're all just like, I forget which uh, one it was between 7TV, but it's one of the actual, so it is 7TV. 7TV, yeah, okay. 7TV emotes that are out there. So if you're in the chat right now, if you Those see APA typing, that's a Yappa. If you see yeah. a, a solo kill top lane, that's a Giga Chad there up for uh, impact. Yeah. So there's a lot of emotes that are out there. Please abuse them. I already see people out abusing them we right now. We need to see a lot more of those in yeah. chat. Hell those... yes. So he's a body <laughs> by Jensen great. immediately from yeah. Alamar. So it's in there. Nice. Okay, so last week on Pros, uh, Inspire talked about how good FlyQuest is at putting enemy blood leaders in the dirt. People were flaming APA for our series. Now they're flaming JoJo. I think uh, we are just good at like abusing players that want to play the game. And I feel like... Ooh. When APA was playing, in my opinion, his teammates were just not playing well around him. 
and not helping him. And today I feel like Jojo was trying to win the game, but his teammates were not trying to win the game with him. And it looks like he's inting. And people are gonna. I've been a victim of this. People, people <laughs> say that APA was inting. Now they say Jojo's inting. In my opinion, I'm just seeing plays and I'm going to to kill an enemy millionaire that is trying to play the game. If an enemy team don't help him, then he will die. I agree with Inspired. I think they are really good at playing around enemy mid laners. I'm actually just going to take you through a little bit of Inspired's early jungle pathing from their game against uh, C9 last week. I thought this was really, really good from him. He actually essentially does the top side start where he backs for Longsword, comes down, is going to be clearing out this quadrant of the jungle. Meanwhile, J Jensen actually is getting shoved in by Jojo Pion. So we're gonna see a few small things that in uh, Inspired really does recognizing where his lanes are at. He's also been really vocal about talking about how Jensen and him are really good at knowing like when he needs to come. So here he's gonna cross mid, he's gonna end up actually wrapping around starting off Scuttle, but this uh, importantly allows Jensen to get this back, right? Because Jojo knows that Inspired is here. So if he goes forward, Jensen is, and Jensen and Inspired can go in on him. So that back is really important. Now back in this bot lane, this, what happens here is not great for Inspired and FlyQuest. C9 are going to end up very quickly getting a double kill in this bot lane on the bot side of the map um, when FlyQuest are trying to reset. And so obviously Inspired up top side, he's actually going to technically prepare to back, but he's going to end up canceling his back, immediately going down on bot side. Busio is also going to die down here. And the next most important thing is he immediately recognizes that he has a window during their reset to be able to do Drake because of how low Berserker and Vulcan both are. And this is actually massive for FlyQuest. So not only did he help set Jensen to get a better reset, mid lane is in a pretty stable position, but this absolutely ruins what C9 want to do on this bot side with this Callista Renata lane, right? Like they're supposed to be able to shove in, they're supposed to have kill pressure, which we just saw, but they're also supposed to lead to Drake control. And I thought this is a really good, mm. like small things that he does to really help set up FlyQuest for success. And also just in the moment recognizing like, okay, obviously my bot lane got 2v2 killed. Yeah. Not the best situation, <laughs> but this is how we can redeem it. And it actually ended up making a huge difference in this game. And to continue the inspired Glaze Wait, session. Wait, you like the- No, <laughs> actually I don't even need it. Oh, you don't even need it. I don't it. even need it. Okay. Honestly, honestly, if we could just throw up uh, the collage because I was inspired by your collage of just yesterday. I wanted to throw it up myself. So now if it is up here, it would be good. Oh yeah, okay, just hold for live. I just gotta be able to showcase. There it is, perfect. Beautiful. So you guys can see it if it's just blown up um, for yourselves. But the first thing is mostly just talking about Inspired Straps. He talked about it himself and how he just doesn't let players, especially mid laners, play the game. And for me, the things that come to mind are just how he traps on side lane. So especially this game, he just bullies Jojo for the most part. <laughs> Constantly. In the same game, by the way. And it's not just specific to Jojo in these games where he's just like not letting him play on side, basically setting up a trap where he's just sitting up in the top side of the map. And if the solo, if the mid laner comes up top to clear the wave and if he even takes one step further, he is going to die in those traps. So it's not just that, but he also just did it towards uh, Team Liquid. So now of course the, the images for me are too small to be able to say what the actual numbers are. But in this case, this was a Team Liquid game where they actually just made a fast trap in looking towards top lane pick because they knew that there wasn't any wards uh, in the top side of the map. So they ended up making a trap towards, uh, in this case it was impact. And they did it against um, APA. And if we just continue on, because this one's very specific on him being able to play through side lanes. But if we look towards the next layer of screenshots, it's just him bullying mid lane. It's the play that they actually ended up making towards uh, um, Jojo just in the mid side of the map. But also if you look towards the bot side here, uh, these two plays, it's him going through the lane and then picking up APA, uh, just walking past the lane as a vibe. So what's the lesson that you take away from this? A, 
Be very wary of side lanes. Inspired is going to be looking to trap there. Every team is really well prepped on this. They talk about how well FlyQuest plays through side lane, how they try and make a quick play. And if it does, then they have a really good tempo to be able to set up vision for the next objective. So that's one thing. Another thing is just how annoying he is through mid lane. Actually, my favorite one versus JoJo, when they saw his Talia go to bot lane, couldn't really make a play happen, then puts it, tries to pick up the wave mid lane, he just waits in fog just to see if he ends up picking, like not taking the long way around and then gets the kill. So the players are talking about it. The coaches are talking about it. Inspired will be on a side lane. Uh, that's the only thing. Uh, that's the biggest takeaway for me. So why do you think Inspired is the greatest player of all time? <laughs> I mean, now that we're all glazing him, <laughs> might, might as well keep going, right? So, yes. Inspired when he plays Vi is always very active on side lanes. FlyQuest is also a team that when they're behind, they don't go, go down without a fight. Mm. And that's because of Inspired. He's always like, rather lose by swinging than just... We're waiting to lose, right? And I think Inspired generally tends to hide in silent bushes. That's always his comeback play. Yeah. This is how he's always been playing, even last year in EG, well, two years ago, whatever yeah. it was. He was always playing like this as well. We always had a presentation. Inspired will be in the bush, no <laughs> matter what. If you can't see him, he's there. So I don't think that TL will be caught off guard by it today. Yeah. Unless he's playing Vi, then it's like, the Vi Tali has so much range, right, with the ulti. I think it's just his, his style. And he's very good at dragging people to his place, you know, dragging Boozy to his place, telling Master just play safe mid, mm -hmm. make a silent play. That's sort of a very common we're behind play. It's when you can't contest mid, 3-3 three, three, or 4-4, four, four, you just go silent and make yeah. a quick play. Yeah, and I think this is the reason why he is first team all for, like why I think he is just the best jungler in the league. Because even in games in which they're behind in gold, like when they're significantly got behind in gold, in fact, we saw this in, uh, I think, game three of the last series, where it's like, okay, like, We'll just sit in the bush, hopefully, like waiting for an event, <laughs> see if we can make a play happen. Um, I think their team fighting is really good because of Inspired, and I think the way they play side lanes is, is also really good because of Inspired. Yeah, I think Bobo as well. Yeah, yeah. gotta see how they play. Bobo always wants to fight as creates well. Creates a lot of space on both Gragas and Renekton as well, giving yeah. his carry space to do their thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to see him match up against Umpty because Umpty was. Even though he didn't win player of the series yesterday, very well could have. Mm -hmm. That was a big jungle gap in the series yesterday, so that'll be fun. But we are going to be headed to a break. When we come back, we'll be celebrating this split's Kia MVP. So don't go anywhere. At mid lane, Faker. We're rolling into LCS Finals. See you there.
crazy to see how Quid developed to go from someone that people were saying, does he even deserve a spot on a team to does he deserve to be the MVP is a crazy change in conversation and narrative. Quid making his entrance here with the Weaver's wall gets Jojo stuck on the right side of it. Now sides the shot right back from the unraveled earth. Akali ain't getting out of that one, baby. Quid picking up a kill. Quid gets onto the back line. The Akali just wrecking the health bar of Hui. As Quid's looking to turn this round, does catch Vulcan there to clear the wave. The soldiers will take out Tomo. Quid is having a great game. Perfect timing from Quid on the Emperor's Divide. Quid with the flash, Bunt MPA. Oh. Zazel trying to get out, but Quid is not going to allow it. They just bulldoze him. Now our male is looking for Quid, trying to catch him off of that spare rush timer. But it doesn't matter, he's still living! Quid is popping off! Quid, you're so good. M M MVP. Quid, are you kidding me? What a miracle! All right, everyone joining me in wishing Quid congratulations on winning Kia MVP. Thank you. And here to present our award is Brad from Kia. Thank you. On behalf of Kia, we're excited to join the LCS community in uh, presenting you this Kia MVP award. Thank you. <laughs> um, so obviously, you had a rough start to your LCS career. What changed going into this year, and how did you improve so much so quickly? Uh, to be honest, I didn't get changed that much, and I just used to using English and feel more comfortable in stage. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, and then, obviously, you tweeted this out a little bit, but you basically said, win MVP after losing in playoff XD. Uh, so I just wanted to know, going forward, what are your goals for next split for you and 100 Thieves? Uh, when i watching other teams, they look, they play like more, uh, they play like a team more than us, so our goal should be more be cons consistently, uh, consistently, mm -hmm. and be be uh, play as a team. Yeah, I think that could be our next. That should be our next score. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Quid. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Shikahil. Thank you. This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm closing my eyes. Yeah, I gotta get out of here. Block quest arriving earlier today. Inspired and Whippo, the uh, definitely the ego of the team. Mm. Arriving early. Really? I mean, you heard them last week on Pros. <laughs> they were talking all kinds of all kinds of smack, but they've it's been backing actually, it up. They've literally been backing it up all split long. Yeah, I love the confidence they exude as a team. Now you're seeing, of course, Team Liquid come through. It's interesting listening from Spawn's perspective of how much he was like, yeah, we should be in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence that he has while everyone else has been doubting that he is like, no, like, a lot of the changes that we've made to the team has been like really positive. The, the hard workers from the, the younger players and also like people underestimating the impact that impact had on the team. 
I tried not to do it. Double that. impact. I really, First I, the core of into Tim Nicholas yeah. party day and now this. It's my limited yeah, wow. vocabulary. It's, really? my, <laughs> it's my limited. <laughs> One fun fact about today as well, Bwipo spent some time on Team Liquid. Uh, impact spent some time on FlyQuest. Who requested this? I did. I did. I, did. I didn't think they'd be this good at Photoshop. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, the main point was the fact that both of these players really did make that swap. Uh, and it's pretty insane. You never really see that where, at least in Impact's case, like he just came off of the Flag Quest team. And like, yes, a lot of hardship in that respect, but it, you never really see it. And it's pretty crazy. The imp Like, the, okay, I'm stopping myself. Limited the vocabulary. Influence. The Impact influence. I like yeah. that one. Uh, that both these players are having on their team. First team All-Pro on one side and second team All-Pro on the other. And also Impact has a chance to win his sixth LCS title today. Yes. He's yep. won four on Team Liquid, one on EG, and could be his fifth one on Team Liquid. When does that enter him into the conversation for best LCS player of all time? Ooh. Or do, uh, does it? Are we already there? Because I feel like everyone is always like, double lift in Bjergsen. But like Impact has been so consistently good for so long on multiple rosters. I mean, do, do you think he's there or? I think he should be a part of the conversation. Okay. Part of the conversation for sure, but I think it will take a little bit more time. And I think accolades just was one part piece of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because from everyone's perspective, everyone's going to be talking about Devlift and Bjergsen. Impact for sure throughout his career was always, anytime you talk to any of these players that have worked with him in the past, they talk about the influence that he's had and a lot of their team environments, even just listening to him, he's like, Nothing is never enough. He, even if he has like an amazing game, it's like, no, I played, I played bad. <laughs> and a lot of that really makes the teams improve so tremendously. So I think he should be a part of the conversation, but it's going to take some time. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of playing as either against or with every player on this list. And I can say Impact has always been rock solid in top lane. Mm -hmm. He almost never is the reason his team loses, and he's always dependable. Whether it's a weak side um, tank player or a bruiser like yesterday with Xante, they ranked on his rumble as well. He's so good on all those champs. So. Mm -hmm. He really is just the, the meaning of dependent. You know, he yeah. can always rely on this guy. He's so reliable and never fails. And yeah. he's also, he's added a few things to his game over the years as well. Because I remember uh, when I was with Impact in 2020, uh, we had Kane as the, as the strategic coach and he'd always be putting him on weak side duty. It was just like, <laughs> if we could put him on Orn, we, we would just because he was solid enough that he'd always be able to win that. Um, but then when he went to EG, he definitely started playing a lot more like ability to play strong side with Renekton. It became a permaban against him. That wasn't the case in 2020. Yeah. We saw yesterday, as you mentioned, his rumble is, is top mm -hmm. tier still after all these years. So just an incredibly reliable, hardworking, legendary top laner. Even in the pros episode, both JoJo and Inspired were ganging up on him. It was like, why did you leave? If, if, you, if you stayed. <laughs> just business. <laughs> we, yeah, we went on the championship, exactly. So there's a lot of respect that goes to his name. Yeah, and Whippo is another player who in this top lane matchup is really having a lot to potentially win off of this, both personally and due to his legacy. And Raz, you actually sat down with Whippo like very recently in this week's MasterCard Player of the Week interview. What's up, guys? Another Player of the Week interview with Whippo. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. Now, have you... Seen this game before? No, no, actually, no, I haven't. <laughs> okay, perfect. I mean, basically, you have 90 seconds to answer mm -hmm. uh, questions. Uh, you, if you don't want to answer it, or if you can't think of an answer, okay. you can skip them and go next. Uh, first thing first, of course, just to, as an introduction, you're an eight-time All-Pro. Uh, second time MSI appearance, this is including now. Uh, four times World Qualifier, and of course, a two times LEC champion, and you have a chance to win an LCS championship yeah. today. Uh, first question, I mean, like, you're going up against Team Liquid. Just yep. thoughts on the matchup today? Uh, couldn't have been a better opponent for me. Uh, obviously, I played on Team Liquid and I was not as successful as right now. Uh, additionally, I think playing against Impact is probably the single best opponent you could wish for if you wanted uh, a championship you could brag about. Yeah. You know, uh, I think everyone respects Impact a lot as a top laner, and the fact that I get to face Impact means that if I manage to win this finals, there will be no one doubting that I'm the real deal. I love that answer. And now let's get straight into the game. Are you ready? I'm ready. Sweet. Three, two, one, go. Best top laner you faced? Bin. Which player do you watch the most? Just admiring, maybe you're watching now. Oh, it, mm -hmm. It's like Baus or Tyler One, I think. Okay, that's a good answer, actually. I did not expect that one. <laughs> Biggest lesson you've learned pre-Fanatic before that? 
See, this is one where it's maybe too much thinking. Brief, pass. Maddox? Yeah. Yeah, pass. I mean, okay, that's a perfect. hard one. Uh, favorite moment in your career? Uh, World Finals 2018. Favorite teammate you've played with? Ooh. Hillisang. There we go. How many languages can you speak? Two. Two? Okay. Wait, what, what are the two? Dutch and English. Where does the name Whippo come from? Uh, it used to be my pet cat called Pippo, and Pippo was taken when I tried to make World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft character, so Whippo. Nice. <laughs> Someone who doesn't get the credit they deserve that you feel like? Mm, Masu. What are you most proud of with this FlyQuest team? Our resilience. Biggest pet peeve on any team environment that just grinds your gears? Mm, refuse to win. Don't want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Brings you the most joy in a league game. Because I see you laughing every time you're playing the game, so. Just fighting, like a PvP game. I think League of Legends PvP game, so you should PvP. Last question would be, a fly teammate that wouldn't survive long in a deserted island that you just have currently? Uh, Jensen, I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why Jensen? I don't know, I just... Like I'm thinking, like, Masu is fasting for Ramadan, so, you know, mm -hmm. huge respect to him. Obviously, would do fine. Uh, better than most of us, actually. Um, Inspired seems a bit, like, too witty, like, too, mm -hmm. quick on his feet. I, I guess it would be me or Jensen. Okay. Like, Busio is, like, really get, like, like he, he's really well put together as a person, so yeah. I, I feel like he would... Makes sense to me. He would do a good job. But yeah, I don't know. Like, it was me or Jensen, so I, I threw him under the bus. Love it. <laughs> Hoist that trophy. This might now be the last trophy you'd be hoisting today. <laughs> <laughs> no, we take those. Uh, it's nice. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Love to see Bwipo, uh in good spirits before this finals. Three wins away from the LCS championship. Looking at the other side, though, Team Liquid and their growth throughout the split. I remember in the first three weeks, many of us were calling them the most boring team in the league. <laughs> that is true. That's not the case anymore. So what you see on this graph here is their combined kills per minute week over week and actually playoff series by playoff series because playoff two and playoff three are in the same week compared to the league average. So basically they played those first three weeks. After that, they tried to get a little bit more aggressive. When playoffs started, they really did set a couple records having two of the five bloodiest series of all time in LCS playoff history with the 1.17 and the 1.18. And even yesterday when they were stomping C9, they were still right at that league average. So Team Liquid, a much more aggressive team throughout the year. And I'm blaming C9 for that one. They let the door straight <laughs> open. So I feel like they would have been a lot more bloodier if the team met them. <laughs> They can't stop catching strays yeah, everywhere they go. Like, no matter what they do. What do you think you would attribute most of this TL aggressiveness increase to? Omti. Okay. Without a doubt. I think I can't remember Team Liquid solo killing anyone. Impact's done it a couple times here and there. It's happened, I remembered, but like mm -hmm. so I guess I can't remember it after all. Um but Umti is involved in every play this team makes. It feels like early game ganks, invades, he's always active in the jungle, like Emily said yesterday. He's just the most active jungler by far mm -hmm. in the early game. Yeah, I think for me, it's not just Umti himself, because I feel like we still saw him doing a lot of the same things in season. It's mm -hmm. just that he seems much more well-coordinated with his team. He and just his works lanes. more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in terms of, uh, yeah, it just works more. Yeah. They just want to win more, forehead. Uh, but no, I, I do think like it speaks to kind of the coordination and improvement we've been talking about from this TL team at, uh, all throughout playoffs so not only their team fighting but again like when umty is invading it seems a lot more conscientious of what the rest of his team is doing and they're available to back him up if need be yeah and he has a robin and core jj I, I feel like if you look at the support to jungle proximity really high between the two of them and they work as a pair so if they look for a, if they look for a fight if they're setting up for vision around dragon or something like that these are the two guys that definitely want to take a fight they've been first picking nautilus throughout mm -hmm. the later portions of the regular season so it's like it's something that they've aimed for have tried to force and it's been working. Yeah, and for me, it's the fact that they're picking the tools that allow them to start fights. Yes. Like if they're playing Volibear and Nautilus, both those champions are very able to CC a target for the rest of the people to show up. But then we've even heard it from Umti. They're just trying to annoy the other team as much as possible <laughs> to make them fight because they're yep. playing in such a way with pretty good macro and they keep their tempo up that if the other team doesn't fight them, they're going to lose anyway. Not because the they're <laughs> stealing Gromp, they're stealing Blue Buff, they're taking every objective, they're you know, harassing them under turret. So it's just this attitude that I think they have as well as just executing at a higher level that's allowed them to play this really aggressive game. Another matchup that I think is really big for this series, Ven, is Yan versus Masu. Yeah. Because to me, Yan has been playing great during playoffs. He's always been someone who's really willing to put in the work. He just 
absolutely has been spamming the game for the last five years straight. Mm -hmm. I think we're starting to see some of the fruits of that labor pay off, but we're also going up against Masu. What do you think of this? I think it's fair to say that FlyQuest bond has been the weak part of their team, the weak link is at least. I think that they had a very bad laning phase, especially C9 in the last show off. The Karma Senna game against uh, Cosmonaut, they got killed three times in lane 2v2, which you can't get away with against better teams. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that they need to get under control. I think Jan's been really good in the Callista versus Vars matchup. And I think if FlyQuest has blue side, which I believe they have um, in the first game here, they should try to ban one and pick the other. Get Jan away from his comfort picks and try to put him on the back foot. Play, make him play something like Senna or perhaps Smolder if he comes back and mm. just make him not as comfortable as he's been the whole playoffs because he's been so good for TL. It's going to be tough is the fact that Team Liquid just, they play to dominate lane. They also put draft resources like the Desirous pick, pick yep. for mm -hmm. Core JJ that they will look for a counter pick. They'll make the laning phase really difficult. They'll call in yeah. uh, Umpty for a dive if possible. That's just the most like obnoxious thing to play against. Yeah, and I think a lot of times when we were talking to teams behind the scene, they did cite this TL bot lane as the bot lane like they absolutely yep. did not want to go up against because mm. they were that good and they were that annoying. Yeah. The thing that's really interesting to me about this matchup is Yon coming in, we kind of recognized even all the way back when he came in from TLA last year, he his leaning was was good, right? Like that was his strength in Academy, but it was his team fighting that needed work. And I think that's where we've seen the most improvement out of him, especially the way that TL has been playing around these team fights on the comfort picks that Sven mentioned. By contrast, I think where you're looking for Masu to really shine is in team fights. That mm, was yeah. his strength previously. Um in Academy as well. And then coming up this year, I think it's been that laning phase that we're looking for a little bit more out of him. I feel like Masu's had a very good rookie split, but even in his own words, he's trying to figure out what is preventing him from playing the way he knows he can play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's still something either mental that is happening on stage for him or just with the, the way he's performing that is at least holding him back in the laning phase. I think he's come back in a lot of team fights. And Sven, you mentioned yesterday, actually, do you, do you think the TL bot lane is the best bot lane in the LCS? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. I think that it's sometimes hard for a rookie like Master to come into a team with so much, well, ego perhaps, you, you <laughs> could say, or so much, such a big voice everywhere else that, you know, sometimes people get drawn to people with voices like Bipo and Inspired. So yeah. often they're making the place they think is good. Yes. And they kind of just forget about their Masu guy in the ball and they're like, yeah, you'll just deal with it on your own, right? You'll be fine with team fights, right? Yeah. And it, it works for them, right? So I think there's no reason to change anything. Another part of the Team Liquid bot lane is Core JJ. Yeah. Obviously, we've talked a lot about Yawn. And. He has many, many accolades throughout the years. Yes, but exactly. as he's mentioned, he really wants to win the LCS now more than ever because with all of these things that you see here. Not bad. I, so middle left, two LCS titles, 2019 spring and summer. So 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. It's been a long no time. Titles. And it gets in your head. If you haven't, if you've been so close to being able to achieve that again and it just keeps escaping you, it's something that you ask yourself, like, what do I need to do to win? Like, every time, at least he's had, at least he's felt, like, stacked teams to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, it's always kind of just escaped his grasp. I know this is the split where people started to doubt just because it's like, okay, you have really new players on your roster. Like, surely this is not the year. This is a growing year. And immediately they're in the finals. So it comes when you least expect it. Yeah, I think the last couple of years we've been criticizing Corey J for not being as good as he used to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think there's no doubt that this... This split so far, Koji is back. Yeah. He's so back. There's this, they were rehearsing the opening ceremony earlier. <laughs> and th we didn't even have Koji J and Busio there, but I was hearing them announce, like, in the, you know, support position, Busio and Koji J. And, like, a couple weeks ago, Busio got, like, 75% of the first team all pro votes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm, like, I'm looking at that matchup, and I'm a little biased because I saw Koji J up close, <laughs> you know, four years ago, but I'm, like, yeah, I'm going to take Koji J in that one. Yeah. Mm. In, in this yeah. moment, Ooh. you know yeah. what I mean? Mm hmm. Just because I feel like he has a bit of that aura back after also, what we've seen during playoffs. The playoff are just different. Yes. Yeah. I think the big thing for me, too, is to speak to both of your points, Ven and Jet, is that, again, like we talked about, uh, Raz, you talked about how they started first picking Nautilus. I feel like we've seen him roaming a lot more outside of that lane. So we talk about how good they are at laning, which is true. Yeah. But again, I think the big thing that Core can do on the map better than no one else when he is 
on those timers mm. is like ganking mid, covering mm -hmm. resources, covering umt if he needs to on yeah. jungle invades, right? And that's been another difference in how TL have played throughout playoffs. Yeah, and the change of pace that they've played that we've talked about a little earlier, I think really lends a hand in that. Because when I see Core JJ at his best, it's because he's just looking for any fight. Mm -hmm. He is just bloodthirsty for any engage. And so we saw that during the playoffs. So even though during the regular season, I still I still think those questions were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Playoffs, as you mentioned, just a different beast. He's been insane. Just even uh, yesterday's series where he found that hex flash around mid lane yeah. and then yeah, Destin get the hook and then the hook that, that followed really that up. Cool. It's insane yeah. how well he is playing in these playoffs and that it feels like he's online. If that core JJ shows up today, <laughs> it may be another game five. Like, it may, they for sure, I think, will win this series if he is at the same level, if Umpty's playing at the same level, if there is that consistency. That's why FlyQuest... I think they were more scared of Team Liquid than they were of Cloud9. And I think one thing to track for the people in the crowd who might not be able to hear it on stream, when Team Liquid's winning fights is Core JJ's volume. True. Yeah. We'll be able it's to so hear funny. him. He's calling out who doesn't have flash. He's calling out when he lands the hook. So yeah. we're going to see how that works. Another player we need to keep track of, though, is Jensen, because he is another player with a ridiculous resume, mm -hmm. took the tiniest dip in 2023, but it looks like he's back in form. A little yeah. stint on Dignitas. Yep. <laughs> It's so weird when I hear people talk about Jensen because I feel like he, for so long in the LCS and in the eyes of the LCS community specifically, kind of lived in the shadow of Bjergsen when he has been yeah. like, if you look at his accolades, if you look at the fact that last year was the first time in his career since starting for C9 in 2015 that he even missed an international tournament, mm -hmm. to have that kind of consistency on top level teams in LCS is insane. It's just wild also, as you can see, the international appearances that he's had throughout his career. Like, he has been that guy. He's been the glue on teams. They all f oftentimes referenced him when he was on Cloud9 of how they went to an international. I think, like, it shows how well he can perform when he's given the chance. People don't even know that he was, like, second in all uh, of um, Pog votes just the, the regular season. Yeah. And then what was crazy to me, the fact that he had one player of the series, but not player of the week. A lot of the times it just feels like he is <laughs> kind of undervalued and undersold throughout his career. And it, I feel like this is another year where he can win a championship and really continue to prove himself. How incredible is it that aside from last year, yeah. he was just 2023 20, away from going to 10 years of international events in a row? Because he was his first one was in 2014. He's there, or 2015 rather. Yeah. He's here in 2024. That is an incredible career. And it's a form of, and this should not be taken the wrong way, like it's a form of acceptance of his role on this team yeah. where he is just the control mage guy. Mm -hmm. He's the, he's the control mage guy. Whippo's going to do something weird. They're going <laughs> to pick, they're going to pick either team fighting or lane dominant bot lanes. And then Inspire is going to be able to dictate the flow of the game as he sees fit. But Jensen is just going to be incredibly reliable on his control mages. And he doesn't need to do yeah. more. And you know what's funny? People thought when Azir was no longer be able to play in the playoffs, it was like, okay, well, you can, now you can just ban Orianna and you can say good luck. But then I feel like his best pick throughout the playoffs has been his Talia. <laughs> so, yes, he can play in lane and just like try to basically outplay in team fights or play incredibly well as he usually does in team fights. But I've been enjoying the fact that he's constantly being able to move and like impact uh, Whippo's lane or jungle and work through there. His skirmishing, his team fighting has always been a, a plus one, but the question mark on his champion pool I think has disappeared. Yeah, I think the big thing for me with Jensen is also like talking to Inspired. He talked about how Jensen knows exactly what he wants from the mm -hmm. mid position, what he wants from his jungler. Yeah. And he also doesn't necessarily have to soak up a lot of resources to do what he needs to do for this team. I actually think this is a quite comfortable position for Jensen on this team, just being that solid control mage mid player. And he's also willing to branch out and play things again, like the Karma, like the Annie, so that inspired can play a carry jungler or so we can play more towards a carry top side or a carry bot side i really think he lends this team a flexibility that's underrated given how strong he is at mages i want to go to predictions while we have five minutes until the start of show uh what do you got oh, oh wow. team liquid jet strikes again Okay, everybody's fly I'm kind of surprised you're the only TL person. I mean, you and Miss oh. Chim Chim. Miss Chim Chim is along beside you. So you have at least a partner. Now you got to explain yourself, Jat. I mean, it was 3-2 last time. It's not that crazy. That's not that crazy. And also, I think, again, this is something that could go either way. I do think it's a very difficult spot to be 
in the finals against a team you previously very close with where Team Liquid got to play yesterday, so they're coming in hot. Yeah. And FlyQuest is probably coming off a week of very lackluster scrims. Because I actually heard rumors that they did manage to scrim both C9 and Team Liquid, but yes. those are those are weird scrims when you yeah. know that you're going to be yeah, playing them in the finals. So, so basically, the way that Team Liquid has been playing, I feel like they've had very good macro. I feel like their confidence is increasing. I feel like the big thing that lost them last series was APA getting picked off in side lanes too often. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be that like reliable of a play. You can't just be like, oh yeah, the strategy is to just kill that guy in side lanes. He need to have the windows, and I think Team Liquid may have been able to improve all those things. And I actually think that they can do it. Zven, why do you think they can't? I put Flyquest 3 2 because I think it's going to be a close series. I think that I wouldn't be surprised if it was TL 3 2, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think if Fly has done their homework and they get the bus situation under control, they will be stronger today than they were last time. I think that they should stop playing the fine champs. Pike was one of them. Yeah. I, I, I think Boozer can play it. He's the only one in the LCS who can play that yeah. champion. But just why would you? <laughs> when you can win without doing it. Yeah. Why would you play things like Ash Support? It makes the game so much harder when you can win without doing these kind of things. Just. Drop the ego, ban things like Rel, ban things like Killstone Blue, pick Vars, push pick if you can. If they ban it, good for you, right? Then mm -hmm. play something like Senna TK, Senna Nautilus, it's easy, and Topside will carry you. Or you will be just you know, doing your part, rather than making the game too hard for you, giving TL opportunities to win bot lane. When comparing the two teams, I think in addition to everything Sven said about bot lane, it's also how they both do kind of want to play around their bot lanes for 5v5 fights. Yeah. And I do actually think as good as TL have improved and as good as they've looked, when you kind of have two teams like this that end up kind of wanting to play their mid game and their late game a little bit similarly, the one that is is better at that wins out. Mm. And in my mind, I do see FlyQuest as the team that's slightly better at it. Yeah. And I have a similar idea where I just think if you're the team that has the least to fix going into a best of five like this, then it is so much easier. And in this case, FlyQuest knows a lot of their focus are towards bot lane. <laughs> I love these signs. A lot of their focus is around bot lane, and I think that's just going to be easier to hit. You mentioned the pike game. I think there are a lot of things where they're just not going to be playing nearly as risky going up against this team. So I have a little bit more faith in FlyQuest for that reason. Okay, if the series breaks in a big way, because we've seen a significant number of sweeps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all think it's fairly unlikely, but if it does sweep in one way or the other, what's the most likely way that it could be a 3-0? I have my have mine. Isn't, wasn't C9 involved in every sweep? Yeah. Both sides? Yes. Yes. So, it's not so no sweep. sweep. So, according to the Jet stats, <laughs> <laughs> if every sweep was a C9 That's one way or another, true. then this would mean yeah. today's yeah. going to be a five game banger. I really hope we get the five game banger. That These are the great. two teams that have already had the most kills in an LCS playoff series ever. Yeah. That happened 14 mm -hmm. days ago By when far. they faced each other in a previous round. And maybe they can beat that today because we know <laughs> both of them are going to want to fight. Yeah, and I think to answer your question, the X factor for me is still umpty. As a player, mm -hmm. I think generally teams that are a lot more structured, that try and play a certain type of way, uh, generally if you're like full clearing, like if, for instance, if Inspired is playing Viego and he's not a, as active in the map, and Umpty is a, generally a player that would like, go top lane for a gank, try for a gank mid lane. He's just trying to get his lanes going. That is going to be a way that really messes the, the I guess, the tone of the match for FlyQuest. One last thing, I think. You never know what happens when you're in LCS final with rookie mm -hmm. players. You, know, you don't know how someone like Masu or Boost is going to handle it if they lose first game or two yeah. games, you know? Yeah. Sure, Jensen and Inspired and we both been here before, but you don't know how they're going to react if they're down 2-0, backs against the wall, will they, will they tilt, will they you know, feel the pressure, be scared in game three? You never know, right? So it's important to talk about like how the first two games can be so important for the mental of the new players. Even Jan has never been in the final. AP has never been in the final either, right? So mm -hmm. it's very important. Really interesting dynamics with both of these teams. The experience of Impact and Core, yeah. and then the three younger players, yeah. even Umpty. And then yeah. you have the similar thing with the top side of FlyQuest and then their rookie bot lane. You can see the countdown for the MasterCard opening ceremony. FlyQuest versus Team Liquid, two teams we wouldn't have necessarily put in the finals at the start of the split, but here they are. Core JJ wants to get his first title in five years. Bwipo wants to win his first title in the LCS. So let's get to it. The opening ceremony presented by MasterCard.
Welcome to the wild, no heroes and villains. Welcome to the war, we've only begun. So pick up your weapon and face it. There's blood on the crown, go and take it. You get a one shot to make it out alive. So higher and higher, you chase it. It's deep in your pulse, go and take it. This is your moment. Now is your time, so prove yourself and I think while the series was close, it should have been our side bit close. Well, when they outnumber you, they usually play very quick, very decisive, and they play well. But once you have equal numbers... To be honest, I don't think we're running down at all. I think we have a solid shot of winning the entire club. They run it down so often, 5v5, it's great. Finally, 
the first team All-Pro making his first finals in only his third split, challenging the face of Team Liquid, looking for his first title since 2019. It's Bootsio versus Core JJ! Grand Finals is about to begin. FlyQuest versus Team Liquid Honda. Are you ready? I do have some history with Team Liquid. Obviously, super salty about the fact they benched me. I still am. I think the players they hired were strictly worse than me, but hey, I'll get to prove it to them now. Watch out, watch out. Bring me. Kobe! I was this close to winning the championship last year, and um, this close again has been like a goal since I was younger, like 14, 15, 16. So, and since living my dream, so I don't want to like squander that opportunity. Might just be Denzel Washington because he is equalizing Cloud Nine. And for the second split in a row, Team Liquid will deny Cloud Nine their opportunity for international competition. And Team Liquid is going to finals and going to MSI. I would be the first time in my career that I would have won where I felt like I was a large part of that team's success. I feel really nice to be the first five players to bring the trophy to the organization for the first time. Try from India, keep the line. John flashes backward, but the resets are pouring in. The arrow from Basu. To be completely honest, Black was in their last match got lucky, so I'm happy to face them again in the finals. And Jensen, I got in his head that series. Oh! Oh! <laughs> it's just going to be a fun finals. He wants to kill off the circle, but he's found the kill that he needs. Jungler Pentakill in LCS history. No one ever gives Impact credit for carrying his team individually, but he's always considered to be like a good player and playing well. That said, there's a reason no one praises him for actually carrying his team, and I think this year, if he doesn't carry his team, he's not going to see that trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the LCS Finals for Spring 2024. I'm Captain Flowers, joined by Azale and Kobe, here for this showdown between Team Liquid and FlyQuest. And I know all three of us, like so many people out there, are hoping for the five game war like we got last time. It's going to be exciting here. We set records last time these two teams played. Highest combined kills per minute ever in the LCS playoffs. And already, even the veterans, there's so much talk about the rookies on stage right now, but Core JJ, yesterday, after they beat Cloud9, he tweeted out, I want to win the LCS more than ever. And he's already won twice, he's won the world championships, but he's here for this matchup now. Really, really wants it. Well, and I think it's so important for his legacy to be able to, you know, set him 
itself apart from those previous TL rosters. They won four times in a row, but it was so much about double lift. And now yeah. this new era has been all about core. He needs to be one of the guys to lead them to that title. And I think Core JJ has stepped up and is a big part of how Team Liquid is looking so much more <laughs> ferocious. So one thing I immediately want to talk about here is you can see the Ziggs ban in this first round of bans from FlyQuest. The last time these two teams met in that first playoff series, the two wins that Team Liquid got, both of them had APA on the Ziggs. Also important to note that in that series, Team Liquid banned out Oriana in every single game. They would not allow Jensen on the pick. They're not going to allow him on it here in game number one either. So those mid laners taken out of commission alongside the Ari, the Kalista, the Rel, the Varus, and FlyQuest will lock in the Nautilus first. Yeah, if they don't first pick that Nautilus, I was thinking it's definitely going to be snapped up there by Core JJ. Um, honestly, though, Team Liquid's bottom lane with how fearsome they've been, it really still draws so much attention to APA's champion pool. You mentioned the Ziggs ban. He he does have other champions to go for. The Talia was permabanned versus them, mm -hmm. uh, versus Cloud9. And they're actually going to lock that one in. Pairings that you automatically think of with Talia for jungle is Vi, for sure. That combo is tried and true. Yesterday, Umpty picked the Vi, and they played the combo with the Ziggs guaranteeing the Ziggs bomb ult, but if you play that with the Talia, it guarantees the seismic shove, and you have a really strong at level six mid jungle. In the previous series, FlyQuest also placed a lot of priority on banning Vi and Volibear throughout most of those games, but this, this is one in that last series, all five games, FlyQuest banned it away, because recall the regular season, it was against the double dragon comp of TL that FlyQuest lost. They did not want to play Smolder, they did not want to play against him, and now now here in game number one, the fastest stacking Smolder in the LCS is piloting it again. Largely though, we haven't been seeing that much success from Smolder in playoffs. We've had a really good game here, a really good game there, but throughout most of playoffs, it has actually been falling in priority. People have really not been putting the emphasis on it. And with TL's new style where they want to scrap at every turn, this doesn't really suit that. It's so weak in the early game. And it's a calculated strategy here from FlyQuest in game number one, opening up, you're just going to give them possible scaling. Team Liquid, even when they had scaling champs, they were fighting them very, very often. And FlyQuest, they're going to be the ones with the Vi. They're going to be the ones with the Nautilus. Okay. That forces gameplay. I really like this in a game one of a best of five uh, from FlyQuest. They're the ones kind of taking a lot of the control here with their engaged champs. Not just the two engaged champs, but the AD carry that loves to fly in right alongside them. This FlyQuest team is a torpedo so far. It's only the second game here for Masu on this Kai'Sa as well, this split. You know, traditionally he's playing more Senna, Varus, longer range stuff, we're gonna sit back. You need to be aggressive, you need to be going in with that. And we've heard people talk about it, you don't know how the rookies are gonna perform in this finals with all that pressure. All right, what, we got to ban mid lane here then uh, for Team Liquid, try and ban out Jensen a little bit uh, more, protect this Talia for APA. The Oriana is always a no-brainer versus Jensen, but he's notoriously also one of the mid laners with a very shallow champion pool, consisting of very similar style champions of these mages, long range, scaling. Quay has been kind of his, his backup go-to as well, so. Team Liquid are going to get their shot as well in really whittling down that champ pool. All right, we've got the Huey taken off the table. That is one of those picks that Jensen can pilot <laughs> in that strategy that you're talking about, the traditional mage style that he's become so adept at playing. There's the Renekton ban, so they're not going to have that safe sort of blind pick top that so many laners want to default to. Yeah, it is interesting though, because Teal is on red side, right? But that's something that Impact will go towards. You know, he is one of the players that does get some criticism on red side for not being able to use that counter pick as effectively, because yeah. you kind of know what to expect from him, and generally he's going to go towards that style of champion, regardless if it's blind or if it's kind of And if FlyQuest don't ban away the Cassante, then Impact will happily pick up a Cassante, because you're already looking at this Smolder. You just want stuff that can peel for him. Uh, Cassante definitely can do that as well, and it's so versatile for top lane. So I have to think, if you're going to the Renekton might as well also ban the, the Cassante there for FlyQuest. Um, that being said, fifth pick for Team Liquid. 
you were memeing on it in our opening dive live episode, but maybe Impact has got some spicy stuff stored up and they go for the Jack Span instead. Yeah, I mean, the only real kind of like actual counterpick counterpicks he's done has been the, the Ignite Rumble into the Renekton. That's been the only yeah. one that he's been kind of going towards and he yeah. did have a really good game on it yesterday. Uh, the Udyr has kind of fallen by the wayside, but that's also something that he had a lot of success with. If you're talking about late game scaling, you know, just play for that front line, protect this yawn. Um, Wukong would give him a lot more dive, but Volibear works better, I think, with its Leia, the guaranteed point-and-click stun, yep. to be able to set up the seismic shove. It is pretty important to have something that can actually make that happen. And pre-six, uh, Volibear can destroy Vi. Uh, it's it's way more difficult for Vi to be able to hit the charged-up Q uh, to be able to win a duel with Volibear than it is for Volibear uh, to dodge it and to get in places where you can get stuns uh, with your E coming down as well. So probably mid, probably, yeah. We, we are going to get the lock-in here for Jensen. We are, we're going down kind of the list there for those long range AP oh, pages. Okay. Oh, okay. You, you got nothing. You got nothing to actually answer this pick. And Wimbo that was cooking up. And that's why they leave the Cassante open because Ergot Ultimate, you can just delete the Cassante. I love it from Whippo here, already throwing down and showing his creativity. Well, and Urgot was really popular for a while early on with Hullbreaker because it can actually proc with the W, the Hullbreaker procs really, really quickly. It is very difficult to beat the champion in a 1v1, has incredibly powerful uh, level one, but also scales really well into the game. Level okay. 13 is when people really talk about hitting those benchmarks uh, with the shotgun knees. And it is going to be the Kazante regardless. This is Wibbo throwing down the gauntlet. This is something that has happened to Impact throughout his career, where back in GP metas, people would blind pick GP into him, and he would still just go to the tank and kind of self counterpick. So we have to see can TL win with this? Because they've kind of self counterpicked on top side, they've gone towards scaling on bot side, and their whole story throughout playoffs was they're going to fight you, they're going to scrap you. I don't know if they can do it with this comp. I actually love the, the prep here from FlyQuest coming in and just saying, we know exactly what you will play, Team Liquid. If we leave up the scaling, you're going to pick up the smolder. If we leave up the Cassante, we know impact. You are going to pick it up, even with the pre-thrown down Urgot here for Whippo. Now it's about, can you outplay anyway? Team Liquid versus Cloud9 looks so focused on their game plan. They never wavered. I think a lot will hinge uh, on Umpty's early Volibear game and possibilities of pressure they can put on mid. If you have flash with Volibear, you can guarantee combos with the Talia play. Uh, and then if you get that lead, you get to start roaming around to the side lanes, uh, namely bottom lane, uh, especially trying to protect Smolder against dives is always your objective number one. So we'll see about the early clear from him if he does try and protect. All right, I already cannot wait to see how this plays out. The Urgot immediately challenging. It's one of those questions that always comes up around pro play. Why don't you see the solo queue answers to these matchups? Why don't you see these staples being challenged by what is supposed to be the natural counter in the executions? And Whippo says, you know what? Why not? I cannot wait to see how this lane plays. If there is a time to bring it out, to bring out what you've been cooking, it is the grand finals here. Last person to actually play Urgot before this was actually Bupo himself in the LCS back in 2022. Before that, the last person to play it was Alfari in 2021. So only person to play it in the last three years is Bupo. So talking a little bit about Urgot here, just since it's a champion that a lot of people don't see as much, I like the fact that you already touched on it a bit, Isaac, with level 13, not normally a break point for the vast majority of champions in League of Legends, but it's the level where Urgot's shotgun knees hit their lowest cooldown and he truly can become a menace that'll just evaporate your entire health bar very quickly. Level nine, also critically important because that's when you can get your level five purge where it becomes a toggle instead of a duration. And the only other one I see is from Cabo Shard was that one uh, a while ago where he played into Malphite and they lost. So it's up to Whippo. Get the get the dub on the board yeah. here uh, for Urgot uh, as far as the spring games do go. I also really want to see how the level one goes because it actually has an insanely strong level one. People almost always start E and they will just walk at you through the minions. If you do not back off, if you get hit by the E, the shield is there. Plus you're getting all these passive procs with that shotgun knee. So it can be very, very strong. And we'll see if he's going to go for it. He is starting E. Uh, and it's going to be walking impact. Like, this is what you have to deal with. The early game is so difficult to actually fight against with this Urgot, and he's playing Fleet also. And it's going to make it even harder. When you're playing a top lane pick like this, you really have to focus on jungle. They did a leash down here for Vi 
from the bottom lane, Busio and Masu spent their time early on to get him accelerated in his clear that's going to end up on the top side of the map. <laughs> Meanwhile, they also warded both entrances from the jungle. So they're protecting against a possible Volley Bear 3 camp here. And I just think everything is targeted. These arrows all pointing up towards this top side matchup. It looks like he's going to go for the early recall from top side for Umpty instead. That means that Vi is going to end up there. Okay, bottom side's a little bit of a scrap early on, but nothing too crazy. Jan making sure he hits those snot bubbles with Smolder to just keep the stacks generating early on. Remember, poking the champions, especially before you have the 25 stacks for the AoE, really critical in getting that early acceleration going. Yeah, I mean, honestly, throughout lane, the entire kind of rinse and repeat is just W on cooldown, try to hit the enemy champions, use the Q generals you stack unless someone walks up for a Targon so you can get a free Q on them. Um, but it is gonna be the quick base for Volley as you touched on Kobe. We've been seeing this more and more for champions with the early longsword buy. Uh, in this case, he actually gets a glowing moat and a pink ward, which is not let exactly me tell you, the scariest of uh, <laughs> Let me tell you, no. glowing moats suck. They are <laughs> they are one of okay. the least efficient component items in the whole game. They, they are actually quite terrible. It's barely an item. Yeah, that even, thing is nothing. <laughs> Even, <laughs> it's glowing at least. Uh, honestly, is though, it? It, it is it is the, the five ability haste, even though ability haste is very good for Volley Bear uh, because of the repeat oh, W. Oh. He actually went for the Spice. E there, but Impact flips him back into the tower as he's Eing forward. That was nicely done. So forcing out that flash early from Bupo, that is a big deal uh, because a lot of times when you're looking for those all-ins post six, it is playing around your E flash on Urgot to be able to actually guarantee that, set that up. Impact's out of mana though, and both these junglers could be hovering around top side. Oh, he actually went too early. Umpty did actually juke out on the initial vision plant, but then stepped forward before it had expired. So he was spotted ever so briefly. A little bit of trading back and forth here between APA and Jensen. Both of these guys ready to try to play as aggro as they need to be. Yawn moving up here as he finds Inspired with an attempt at the Scuttle Crab, but because APA and Yawn and Core are faster to the spot, it means that Inspired has to back away. Yeah, Bustio came up through River as well to try and see if they could uh, get something here. But honestly, you should just go for Krugs now since second respawns are coming in for your camps for Inspired. Uh, Krugs definitely worth more than the first Scuttle Crab. First one's not actually worth that much EXP. And then just get right back down to business on bottom side of the map. So far, Jan also stacking uh, pretty decently here in the uh, range plus melee matchup. Not too troublesome for the Smolder. Yeah, looking pretty good. And honestly, when you're playing TK and Smolder, just kind of this late game scaling, and you're trying to play for the 5v5, uh, they have held on very well so far. There's plenty of minions to farm up here. As long as they get all those, they're basically going to be dead even on the farm. Uh, and it's going to be really hard to actually punish them because they are playing Exhaust and Heal. Ooh, oh, minus one. We all saw that. <laughs> minus one. It's my Unlucky. Bad. I said they're probably going to get them all. I apologize. <laughs> you cast a Kirsten, man. Immediately, right out yeah. the gate here. But we will see APA go ahead and recall. All of those first recalls and the subsequent teleports are coming out. Back up in the top lane, the skill order for Whippo. This is also something I want to point out with the Urgot. Going two points in Corrosive Charge early. I was watching the rank one Urgot in a oh, Quanta. Were, we were just yeah. talking about this. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah, I was watching his stream the other day, and he does this same thing a lot. Going the early two points in Q for extra extra lane power, extra trading potential, and then still making sure you max out your W by that level nine to have the extended fighting capability. So Whippo's done his homework on this champion. He knows what he needs to be doing to pilot this successfully. And of course, once these guys hit level six, that's where it really gets interesting. That's where the true counter pick comes into play. And look at the play here from Inspired. He just yoinks one of the grubs on the drive by on top side. You can take it so quickly and it has such big benefits, but then he still walked all the way back down here for Dragon for a contest. You've got Kaisa under tower though. Yeah, this Kaisa's is. Kaisa's not joining, then that's that's not a full commitment. Yeah, inspired to now. Maybe he can turn it into a flip. Umpty's got it low, down to about 750. Busio with the dredge line onto Yawn, but it ain't gonna matter. They've already claimed the Drake for the side of Team Liquid. Busio's about to drop it. It's first blood over to Core JJ. one nothing. TL. Black Quest are so split there, and, and it was kind yeah. of concerning to look at because they they clearly with inspired moving down just take one grub immediately get here for the dragon contest it felt like the call was going to be a full contest but then with masu under tower and kaisa then coming from the other side of river it is very easy and especially in the early game to turn on just one side of a pincer movement and team liquid fully focused there not only the dragon but a bonus first blood you do not want to give that to the fastest team there is and that felt like one of those situations where maybe busio nerves getting to him a little bit you know hooking yeah. in there while the team is split up not really in a position to actually fight tries to flash out gives up the first blood i think you're gonna be thanking your lucky stars that went to core instead of actually uh, <laughs> yeah. someone else 
Tom, but uh, still. Until the Tom Kench comes out, big old beefy frog. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, he's a catfish. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, up here in this top side, Impact does not seem to be having any difficulties whatsoever into this Urgot matchup that Whippo dared him to play that Cassante into. APA now also level six on the Talia. Very curious how these Weaver's Walls are going to be spent, but inspired so close to level six on the buy. He needs one more camp to get it, hanging around the top side. And Bramble proccing on the W is actually super annoying for Urgot. It's one of the reasons that people always are going towards Thornmail and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's been changed a little bit how it works, because back in the day, people were for a little bit uh, when people would blind Urgot, they were playing Ramus into it, and the ball curl would just <laughs> Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Bottom side could be some trouble here for the Smolder. Yawn's trying to get away. Busio goes for the dredge line, but the flash from Yawn is well-timed, so he loses the summoner, but he keeps his life. Talia heading down here to APA. You can see Yawn was trying to bait them in as far as he can if APA could get there, if they take a little bit more tower damage. Mm -hmm. Maybe you get like a trap kill, a little uh, little cheater one, or wow, you've got your volley bear on top side of the map, but no real big overchase, uh, so no super big punishment on their side, and it's just a nice summoner spell blown. Now a smolder with no flash. Let's see if FlyQuest can actually start to deny him uh, and make it more difficult for him to get his stacks. They've rotated him over to the mid lane now uh, since APA ended up on bottom side after the roam. And this is generally, you know, we see this rotation usually happen a little bit later. Um, usually it happens after one item when they have the Essence Reaver fully completed. Yeah. And he does have the Sheen. You know, usually on Essence Reaver, they move the, the Smolder mid and they start having him farm both the Raptors and the Wolves to really accelerate the stacks. Steel has done this very, very well. And that's one of the reasons that Yawn has, has been one of those guys to get such fast paces here for the 225. Yeah, and it's also just common sense whenever you do have some someone who has to go base and you've got the roam down the other side, you just rotate a little bit over and you kind of do the, the jigsaw puzzle there and have him take the mid wave that is pushed in on his timing while IPA finishes up the bottom one. So remaining efficient with your minion waves uh, it, even under the circumstances of extra pressure. I think one of the windows they're really going to have to watch out for, though, is when Busio hits six, if Yon still does not have flash, Core is going to have to kind of be glued to him because if he shows up in that side lane and they don't have that Tom Kench behind you and you got no flash, Nautilus alt sets it up so easily to get what is pretty much going to be a guaranteed kill. Right, you've got Nautilus ulti, you've got Vi ulti, you've got Kaisa to fly in right behind them. It's so scary. Back up here on the top side, still everything just kind of going back and forth with the trading on the farm. Pretty even in terms of farm numbers across the board. Biggest difference being the mid lane as Jensen does have a couple waves lead. But Umpty is sitting on top of a ward on the blast cone. Masu and Busio are aware of the fact that Team Liquid's gonna look for this. Umpty, yeah. very scary on the volleyball. You just turn the turret off. The dives become very simple at that point. And here comes Mob. It's Yawn picking up the kill. FlyQuest knew this was coming and they still lose Busio. Yeah, another questionable call from FlyQuest. We had the earlier one between the first scrubs and the dragon uh, and the fight resulting in a kill and then this one with Team Liquid as well. When you see there's no teleport for Bwipo or for Jensen, you're not going to be able to turn around that tower dive. You mentioned it, Flowers. The most straightforward thing about Volibear, <laughs> ult turns off towers, so those dives are easy. And very clearly, they made the call to stay under the tower. Well, but Masu backed off. That's the thing that's more confusing to me is that Busio, it seemed like, just kind of made that decision himself because Masu is actually back in the pixel brush mid the middle of the lane. He wasn't going to stay there, so if he's not going to stay there, maybe Busio thought, I'm tanky enough that I can absorb the early damage, then you can come back and turn it around. But I, I think know. it was definitely a big overestimation. That, that's the positioning you take if you had solo lane teleports that had pushed up waves that are like, all right, we're going to turn this around. You bait them under the tower. Then uh, Kais is going to fly in with ultimate and we're going to teleport, but they didn't have those timers. Yeah. Right. Very, very unfortunate stuff for FlyQuest here early on. Two deaths on that Nautilus for Busio. Still not even level six, so does not have that go button we were talking about that will be important for locking down these high value targets in Yawn and APA. Second Drake of the game is going to be spawning right about now. Remember that Team Liquid got the first one, and the first trio of Grubs was split with Team Liquid barely getting the edge two to one. So, so far, neutral games going TL's way, and they have control over the bot side river for now. How how much weight do you guys put into the concept of the lower bracket advantage and just playing a recent series where you're coming in warmed up and hot? Because Team Liquid, they feel like they're picking up exactly where they left off yesterday and, and FlyQuest a little bit slow. Uh, I think there's definitely something to it. You know, I guess it just depends on on how much you get from the extra practice and preparation from not having to play, you know, from being able to just kind of evaluate your opponents, look ahead. Whereas Secret TL strategies like an Urgot. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, whereas, you know, TL had to be super focused on C9. That series ended up being pretty one-sided, but they can't count on that. So I think there's a little bit of give and take to it. Uh, the fact that it wasn't like a five-game battle and they're exhausted from it, I yeah. think helps as well. 
All right, FlyQuest is starting up this second Drake. Team Liquid, three men waiting around in the brush, ready to challenge. A TP also summoned up. They're going to bring more yeah. reinforcements. APA is joined back up, and he'll immediately go back to the wave in mid. FlyQuest maintaining control over the Drake. Four men strong. Got it down to about 500 HP. It'll be secured by Fly, but now they gotta try to get away. Here comes the Weaver's Wall, and Busio is again the target. Impact has been brought into the fray now, and he goes in as Jensen tries to get away, but the damage just pours through, and Jan kills him with the snot. It's a 4-0 game for TL. I love this call because they commit Impact's teleport to get an extra kill, and even though an Urgot is gonna get tower plates on top side, those tower plates, they're not even done. Oh. They get an extra flash. Those tower plates are answered by even more valuable ones taken by Yon. You'd rather have them on, on your smolder. So you invest that teleport, get a bunch of extra kills, get the dragon, and get the money focused where you want it. Yeah, TL, I've got to be feeling so good about how this is going. And Busio's got to be a little bit careful. You know, it is three deaths out of the four all on him. Two of them, I think, were super preventable. Maybe the dragon one, you could argue a little bit. Mm. But he chose the hook in and the first dragon died. He chose the standard of the tower, died again. And you have to make sure that this is not becoming a bit of a pattern. Uh, because Nautilus is one of those champions where you start having a bad game, you can start having a really like bad game. And confidence, I think, is so important for a young player like that who's in this finals. I mean, let's be honest. Support is the lowest economy role, so you can end up becoming the punching bag for your opponents. But a support like Nautilus, you are meals on wheels if the team is behind, <laughs> all right? You are making sure the enemy squad is eating good. So Busio is ne seriously going to have to focus up here, or he's going to end up giving more and more of this lead away to TL, who are up a little bit over 1,000 gold, just about as the turrets are ready to expire. Turret plates are ready to expire, excuse me. And we do have that Rift Herald getting ready to summon up here for the Topside River as Umpty takes control the scuttle crap. I always enjoy little things like that where Yon is actually eating along the wall and then uses the Q on the Grom for the fleet proc to get the lane that much faster. Mm -hmm. Actually allowed him to get one minion that would have died to a tower shot. So it's tiny little optimizations, but I always think those are fun to see. Yeah, oh, yeah. especially though on the support conversation that you're having, Flowers, like when you're a Nautilus and you're playing against the Tom Kench, even more so, it becomes kind of useless because usually you're an ult bot still. No matter yeah. how underfed you are, you can get that off. But Tom Kench can nullify your ult. And then if you hook in, you you are the, the thinnest pinata that there has ever been. So <laughs> we'll see how much candy is inside Bucio. Not a lot when you're zero and three. <laughs> the gold becomes worth less yeah, and less. Exactly. It's the cheap store brand candy. Yeah. It's like half expired from uh, Valentine's Day. You don't Day. even really want to eat it. Yeah, you're kind of like, uh, maybe. Maybe it's three o'clock in the morning, you wake up and you'll, snacks, you'll take it if it's snacks, free. Those, yeah, exactly. You'll take, take it if it's free. free. So Busio's got to make sure he's not giving TL any more of these free angles. It's two minutes until the next Drake is alive. You can see up in the top lane, Impact has his Thorn Mail and his Plated Steel Caps mm -hmm. complete. It's uh, not super fun to be Urgot in that situation. No, the W kind of just hurts yourself uh, <laughs> at, a, at a certain point, but he does have a Black Cleaver completed over on the other side. Did get some plates. Oh, Weaver's Wall coming in and with Umpty right there, Jensen flash is forced so now that karma extra vulnerable that's still going to be down with plenty of time to spare for this upcoming drake fight or if they decide to fight for the herald soon either yeah flyquest are going to have to track umpty now you, you have to keep vision on volleybear if, if volleybear has flash and, and karma does not that is an easy easy kill you flash in with your q your e comes down on top that burst damage with the by. talia combo is 100 percent dead and they're look, at least looking to threaten that. MT was kind of moving down towards bot side with APA. So they, I think they want to try to make them nervous, see if they can get them back off. But Yana's has passed 125 stacks, and Masu and Busio have not seen Volibear since they saw him walk down towards bot, so they are backing off that. But the stacking really starts to accelerate as you get that splash yep. damage oh, as well. There's not even a flash required. They just immediately go for the Wombo on Jensen. Inspire tries to turn it around, but there ain't no damage. APA escapes, and both top laners are ready to join the scrap. Inspired gonna get jumbled around here next. There goes another rock. There goes a double kill for APA. Busio tries to hook somebody in, but FlyQuest is already down two men. Team Liquid, six to nothing in game number one. TL are locked in. They are so focused. As soon as they get that flash, they're thinking, we've got the repeat play. This Karma's already dead on my screen. All we need is Umpty to come in. 
Umpty didn't even have to flash to get that Q stun play we were talking about. He was able to just walk by because they had the control wards through River. They put in the earlier work. TL riding the momentum of yesterday. Umpty is gapping inspired in game number one. One zero and five on the Volley Bear versus a zero one and zero on this Vi that has not been able to find any plays to make for FlyQuest. It's a 3,000 gold lead now. Herald in pocket for Umpty for TL. And man, when, I, when I'm looking at the scoreboard and then I press tab and I see that there's a smolder on the other team, like that makes me feel terrible when you're this behind early and Jensen likely to die again. Yeah, Umpty just jumps at him here with a sky Splitter APA can set up the easy knockback with a seismic shove. Inspire tries to jump in and kill off the Talia, but it ain't gonna work. APA goes on a killing spree and Jensen drops. Yon's picking up the next one. There goes Inspired. Here's your loot pinata from Bucio. It's three dead for FlyQuest. Team Liquid is making this look so easy. Seraph's shield into Tom Kench ultimate shield. You thought you might have been be kind of close. Not even close nah. at all. TL here running away with this one. And the only surprising thing is I had my, my all chat oh. open. <laughs> oh, they're going to look bot though. APA trying to look for a play, but we'll see if Whippo can sidestep. Yep, Whippo just stepping forward to avoid the knockback of the seismic shove and the stun onto the unraveled Earth. Impact and APA will not secure the kill on the Earth got there. I was going to say the only surprising thing is that we haven't had any all chat yet. And then APA is like, <laughs> I got you, bro. Don't worry. We are so far ahead right now. He's he's letting it fly. And I don't think there's going to be any rebuttal from the side <laughs> yeah, of FlyQuest right now. <laughs> I love how his name has become Yappa. Yappa is just, actually just, It's perfect. It's really nickname. good. It's really good. And yeah. he's just living up to it, man. He's ready to type at all times. Yeah. Rift Herald summoned up in the mid lane. I don't believe the charge will do enough to kill the turret but directly. It'll need a little little bit more, but hey, there's game is plenty of firepower here. There it is. Sky Splitter from Umpty just doing the work to zone away the rest of FlyQuest. Whippo and Inspired are going to try to make a move on Impact here on the bottom side, but Impact goes all out. He's looking to try to deal with Whippo here. He wants to get away. Inspired chasing after it's a full-on team fight. There comes your suppression. Whippo's grabbing the first kill, but Umpty's killed Inspired back in a trade. It'll be a one for one here for the start. Team Liquid still looking to see if they can find any more, and that potential seismic shove forces the flash out of Masu. The only the only benefit here for FlyQuest is that since they're so far behind, they have objective bounties up, and Jensen did get the top side objective bounty on the tower, but your whole base is still getting destroyed here. Yeah. TL are steamrolling through your territory. Look at the jungle lit up with wards now as well. They can get their reset up. Never mind. Umpty's even looking aggressive again. There's no flash on Masu. And when Smolder gets ahead, you just get even more ahead because you're buying all that early CDR. They're going to look for the fight. They're just immediately looking to burst Bucio instead, but now Umpty's got to be careful because Whipple's ready to chase him down. Core JJ keeps him alive with oh. Devour, and now the Abyssal dive to go after the isolated Ergon. Whipple's going to be focused, going to be exploded, I would have to assume. One last Last hit from Yawn and the man is gone. Team Liquid, 11 to 1. Core JJ makes it look so easy. He goes Tom Kench ultimate into Tongue Lash hit into confirming the Abyssal Voyage. Actually such a clean Tom Kench here for TL. And when you've got that big of a lead with the safety of Core JJ, Tom Kench, the warm embrace, you know nobody's <laughs> going down. I mean, he has just been right place, right time. He has had so many good ults. On CD, it feels like wow. this game, he finds someone who's getting picked, he saves them with the ulti. Umpty has maintained 100% KP as well throughout this game. He has been everywhere. And Yon is just scaling to infinity for free, working towards the rapid fire already at 20 minutes here. He's at 180 stacks. This game is looking so this hard is shocking. for FlyQuest. They're I, gonna I'm, actually, I'm actually shocked that we're having this after uh, the first series that we saw between these two teams in playoffs, but Team Liquid have completely hulked out. Yeah, and it's not just the first series that these two teams had in playoffs. It's the last time we saw FlyQuest. They were putting together some of the most incredible team fighting that we've seen in the LCS in a long time. And in this game, they haven't even had a chance to really team fight because they've just been lost from the get-go. Ever since that first death back around the Drake, it just feels like Team Liquid knows exactly what they want to do at all times, what every man's role is. And FlyQuest is stumbling around in the dark. I'm all aboard the lower bracket advantage now. Okay, <laughs> you're convinced? I'm like, that. that is some real, real power up here for Team Liquid. And you already mentioned it multiple times. Oh, 
Uh, fancy that they have a smolder in their back mm -hmm. pocket as well. Not only do you have this massive gold lead, uh, plus the extra dragon, but uh, you even have the third dragon here. Yeah, give, uh, it, give it two minutes, probably. Uh -huh. and he's, he's stacked. Yeah. yeah, he's 197 right yep. now. So. Already working on the rapid fire, so. Yeah, and that's that's where when you have three items and you have the 225, I mean, he has his three items. It's going to be online so early because of all this extra gold that he's gotten. Um, T looking for Bupo, but Busio and Inspired are playing behind him. Uh, Whippo, one of the only people who's kind of at parity, at least, with their lane opponent, it feels yeah. like right now. You know, he does have those two items completed. Uh, he went towards, you know, a bit of a tankier build here with that Steric second. If they can make something happen around him, maybe get an initial burst kill, be able to pull them in, find that big fear on multiple people with that ulti, maybe they can make something happen. All right, fight starting out as Whippo's the first target. The seismic shove right back into the unraveled earth, but now Busio's going for the dredge line. Whippo barely getting away for now. They shoot out the harpoon, but they are going to find the fear beyond death just yet. It's fire charging into the back, looking for Yon, but he ain't going to grab him. Yon goes unstoppable, and now Whippo's about to drop too. Impact is fearless in the front line as Busio and Masu head for the hills, but the Weaver's wall is ready to ride, and Busio is gone again. A double kill back to Impact. Team Liquid, don't lose a single man. What is happening? 14 to one for TL. They are stopping fly. And now Core JJ forces out another flash. Jensen without that summoner spell, there's no way for him and Masu to try to challenge for this Baron. It's Team Liquid completely running the show, start to finish in game number one, 23 minutes in, and they're gonna claim a Baron. So I was gonna be like, oh my God, their team fighting is so insane because it was actually really clean how they used their resets there with Core JJ eating Umpty. Umpty saved his volley barrel to kite backwards over the Vi, but they're so far ahead also that it's just a massive sweep. So look at the, the cooldown usage here. They actually save Umpty's ultimate and relying on Core JJ so they can make use of this Tom Kench big shield while Impact is on Jensen on the other side. And then when Inspired goes for the dive, Umpty ults back defensively, they separate while Impact goes for the kill in here, and he's gonna be able to dash back to the rest of the squad who already finished off Inspired too. It's just, it, if they were not as far ahead, I would be popping off way more about how clean it was, but uh, even with that, it's like, T Team Liquid, they are smashing them. Spawn's not even reacting. Unfazed. No. He's unfazed. He's like, yeah, we should have won that team fight because we're so far ahead, but they also did it cleanly. I mean, you just have to love, you know, his desire to always They're look for what they can improve for the next fight. <laughs> All right, now, now it's like getting kind of like mean. Usually, <laughs> usually when APA is trash talking, it's like sometimes they're even behind, right? Yeah. And he just makes a good play. But when you are clobbering like this, you're like, okay. Are you saying he's, he's too good to be trash talking like yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are stopping them a little hard right now to be uh, be back in all chat. Yapped in America. <laughs> okay, that one's even better than Yappa. Yapped in America. I like the, ori I like the, the original. The Team but... Liquid Avengers, man. They are just oh. clobbered on this game. <laughs> Impact versus Whippo. Impact hits the sides. He wants the fight. Whippo trying to get away back over the wall there with a flash, but Team Liquid brought more firepower. Yawn is dominating. He's at that break point. 240 stacks. 5v4 for TL for the next 40 seconds. Impact heard Whippo talking trash before this series. <laughs> he'll take the tank into your counter pick and he'll beat you anyway. Up to coming in here. The engage from the Volley Bear is there again. Yawn is godlike. Team Liquid looking to end this one right now. Busio drops next, a triple kill for the Smolder. Tail as old as time, song as old as Rod. Look at that, man. Smolder just runs him down once he's got that break point. Now, Team Liquid, with nobody to oppose him, goes straight for the Nexus turret, straight for the Nexus right after. 19 to 1, 11,000 gold ahead. Team Liquid slaughters FlyQuest in game one. 25 and a half minute game with Smolder <laughs> on your squad. Get the sacks, the game ended. Yeah. Out. Get, get the sacks, game ended. Biggest takeaways though, we need to go back in time and look at the beginning of this game because there were yes. a couple of choices that we mentioned in quick succession that came from FlyQuest that are very questionable and gave over a lot of early momentum to Team Liquid. And with this version of Team Liquid that is so hungry at playing early and always sets their sights on the next objective and the next play, you cannot make two big errors in the early game because this is the clear result. 
Absolutely stunning performance here from TL. Like you said earlier, Isaac, they are picking up exactly where they left off from yesterday. This team has just completely transformed in playoffs. They're so coordinated, they're so aggressive, and they're so fun to watch. I mean, they've, they've just been looking really strong. TL has completely leveled up from the regular season. They look like an absolutely different squad altogether. But we also have to talk about the FlyQuest side. Busio obviously had, had a couple shocking deaths early on. You know, he is a young guy in this big performance. He's got to be able to just reset the mental, shrug it off, say, all right, it's just one game. We had a bad one. Let's yep. go back to it. Let's play better in game two. Let's avoid those mistakes because you can't allow this series to get away from you. TL are just looking too on point. They're going to punish you. Yeah, I mean, the whole team does, honestly. Yep. Uh, because a lot, of the, a lot of the mistakes, especially in the early game, like the Dragon disconnect uh, on the, the call for the team fight there, uh, I mean, everybody's got to step back up. Yeah, everybody on TL played really well, but honestly, my biggest props go to Umpty. It just felt like he was everywhere. I'm all so at proud. Once. His first volley bear in playoffs was really terrible. I'm so <laughs> proud of him. I, I actually, this His is little bear is all grown up. <laughs> number one volley bear fan <laughs> in a over here. But we're going to head on back to the LCS lounge to break it down for game one. <laughs> Thank you. I love this idea that Kobe, just because he's such a ball bear enjoyer, is like sitting there taking notes on every LCS ball bear. Uh, but aside from that, yes. TL stop. Yep. Not what we expected, I think. No. It's pretty insane, too, because like for me, at from what I've seen, all split, we've talked about all split long, is FlyQuest in team fights being incredibly dominant, uh, always looking for skirmishes. And like the last series we saw from Team Liquid was literally that, the bloodiest series that we've had in the LCS and all that, but that we, we didn't even see a fight from FlyQuest. Yeah, I think they definitely kind of drafted themselves into a trap here. They're yeah. picking a full go in and dive comp against a team comp that does the exact opposite. Teal has full disengage, tanks, and one time can jolt to save them from Violty. Yeah. And it just feels like FlyQuest, if they can't stomp lanes, they can't win this game, but they don't even have winning lanes. So what are they supposed to do? Yeah. Nothing, what? I guess. <laughs> That's what happened. What? <laughs> nothing. There's nothing to hold in. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we were we were kind of looking through tape as it was happening. We we're like, okay, well, what happened here? Like, how did they give up Drake? Oh, it was just off of reset. Yeah, they And just not having lane. pushing lanes. Oh, okay. Um, one thing I think I'd want to call out is the bands went as you expected, Sven, right? You, yeah. you were like, oh, okay. Five done their homework. They know exactly how they're going to ban against TL on blue side. But then the Senna didn't come through. We saw the Kaisa come through. Yeah. Would that be something that you would like to see changed going forward for FlyQuest? Yeah, I really like that Fly banned the rail. It's a good place for TL. And then they banned one of the AD carries, Vars and Callista, and TL answered with the other one, which is perfect for TL. I mean, yes. FlyQuest, sorry. Because mm -hmm. then they can first pick, you know, either the Senna lane or whatever they prefer, Smolder. I don't care. But then they go with Nautilus. Their opponents pick Smolder, and you don't go Senna even though Senna Nautilus will beat any lane with Smolder, no matter what Core J picks. Mm -hmm. So you have at least one lane of Pryo on blue side, which is good, because if Bot loses lane and top land picks top, then you're going to lose two lanes at least. And mm -hmm. Denzel is going to play a control match anyway, so you have like so little pressure in the game if you don't pick at least one lane that wins. And when your opponent's picking Smolder, you can't be losing lane Smolder. Mm -hmm. It's just not legal to lose lane Smolder, right? Yes. <laughs> and Kaisen Nautilus happens. doesn't win lane against Set, I mean, TK Smolder. It doesn't outscale and isn't even stronger at like level six. Yeah. So at what point is Kai'Sa actually good unless your team comp is stomping the other team? But your top man is blind picking. And Myth playing control match in four or five after there's already been like a couple bans towards him. They ban his way, ban Orianna. How are TL supposed to like lose this game? They can't lose. It really did feel like they had a set idea how what comp they wanted to play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because especially when they want for the Nautilus pick away from Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. And then you see the blind pick Urgot that comes through on the second <laughs> half. Yeah, I respect that. Yeah, I like the composition, like just in a vacuum, in yes. a vacuum, yes. the composition makes sense. But they just did not do something that they have been the strongest at in this league yeah. for the entire uh, regular season, which is like adapting to what the enemy team is drafting. Yeah. It's like, look at what TL picked first three. Smolder, Vi, I mean, Smolder, Tam, Kench, and Talia. Antalya, yeah. Mm -hmm. Antalya. It's all champs that disengage, they play slow, they scale, and they are really good against engage. Anti-engage, anti right? Yeah. What does FlyQuest pick? Full engage. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> on, on top of that, you're also losing lane while you're losing the team fight and the team comp game. So, and FlyQuest, I mean, Teal knows about Inspired's you know, game. I saw APA talking about it in the all chat that Inspired is a silent merchant. Yeah. He goes silent and doesn't work, so they know about it now. Yeah. 
I think the biggest thing also for me was Umti being able to recognize where yeah. he could take advantage, right? Like, again, there was that window where they get first Drake off of reset and then uh, FlyQuest actually engage into them and, and TL wins that fight, right? So um, I think it was also going back to a matchup we talked about a lot going into this, Inspired being able to recognize where he can apply pressure. He didn't have a lot of opportunities to do that because, like you said, not a lot of his lanes had pressure going into this. Um, that is, unfortunately, all the time we have. We'll be back to talk about draft on the other side, but for right now, we're going to send it over to Jat for a giveaway. Thanks, Emily. I got two fans here that are going to be playing to win a Samsung SSD 990 Pro hard drive. But first, we're going to send it to break. Up next is going to be Team Liquid and FlyQuest Game 2. I mean, you didn't need to put more, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to watch this. Oh. I'm climbing top two. I'm climbing top two. Can be good. I think he's dead, no? Can be good. I'm coming top. Just kidding. He said, he said. I did not show up. I'm moving in. Yeah. Make sure they don't come out. Bye, 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 bye. Beat me, beat me. Beat me, beat me, beat me. He's got trash. Yeah, push top. Let's get everything. Let's get everything. Yeah, I got a base. Red Bull gives you wings. There he is. He's right there. Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <sighs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste. Hey, welcome back. We got Steven and Chris here to play some trivia. Winner gets this Samsung SSD. All right, first question, you guys. We're going to start with Steven for his answer, and we'll alternate from there. So who won the most player of the games this split? A, JoJo, B, Bwipo, C, Impact, or D, Quid? Quid. Quid. All right, you both get it. We might have to do a tiebreaker, but I'm just going to give you both a point for that one. Congratulations on the first question. Second question we got, heading into finals weekend, which team has the most LCS wins of all time? So this is regular season included. Who just has the most wins? 100 Thieves, C9, TSM, or Team Liquid? Liquid. TSM. I see the Liquid hoodie. You're both wrong. It's C9. They didn't win yesterday, so I can see they lost their last six. They would have been an even uh, bigger, a bigger lead. Okay, third question. Heading into finals weekend, what champion has been banned the most this split? Callista, Vi, Lucian, or Nar? Callista. 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 Okay, double Callista. You're both right. 61 bans. Bonus question for the win. Heading into finals weekend, which champion has only ever been played once in the LCS? Ramis, Timo, Zach, or Skarner? Timo. So we have Timo. Ramis. Ramis is the correct answer. Congratulations on the SSD. And also, hold, hold up the SSD. One terabyte 990 Pro SSD, but also for the correct answer, you're both going to win an SSD. Uh, so congratulations for playing, you guys. Right after this, we're going to be having game two of FlyQuest and Team Liquid. Check it out. Thanks, guys.
I think in our first series, the biggest learning point for me was in game five when playing Ari. It's like 40 minutes in the game. They have a team pump that like instantly engage. I go ball in no TP, and you know, I believe it was Jensen or Busio, one of those two, like instantly flashed in on my team, and we instantly lost the game. Um, I think I learned a lot from that moment, just like for myself. So, yeah, like that's the most like eye-opening. Wow, I'm like really making a massive mistake here. Um, there's other mistakes though that I've also learned from. Just during the break, both these fans received a Samsung 90 Pro SSD upgrade or storage and load games fast, so you can play more with and wait less with the Samsung SSDs. But we're back here at the lounge. You're yeah, back. Wow. I'm fast, much like the SSDs. You're good. Company man, Jack. <laughs> Company man, Jack. Anyways, <laughs> that was actually a really fast game one. That was. It was. You, you guys were talking <laughs> a lot about draft. Yeah. What types, I mean, surely, it, it, so my opinion on this is if they stay with the same bot lane strategy where they're just going to pick Kaisa or Callista no matter what, I think they're doomed. I agree. I think Flacco should be doomed. Yep. I think we, I got to see them change it here in game two. I think the easiest change is, I mean, this is assuming they take blue side, but overall, like, I don't think they're going to go Nautilus first pick. Like, even when Team Liquid was doing it during the regular season, people just genuinely thought that was bad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like, I can see angles in which you're moving towards a Senna, so you can go like Senna Knot or something like that. But overall, I think it's just not a, a, a drafting idea that worked for FlyQuest throughout the year. So that was just the first thing, but there was a lot that happened there. So I'm confident that we won't have the same game as game one, and I, I hope I didn't curse it. Yeah, I personally think if, if Fly just goes blue side again and goes the same draft with Senna instead of, okay, they're going blue again. Okay. I think they keep the rail band, they keep uh, one of the 80 carry bands, Callista or ours, doesn't matter, Teal will probably ban the other one anyways. Yeah. They're banning Ash. That's interesting. I don't know what this means. Normally you ban Ash when you don't want your opponents to play either Ash of Aros mm -hmm. or Callista Ash. Yeah. So they're probably going to pick Callista first pick in this game and give Aros to Team Liquid. Well, Provi yeah, provided guessing the that's what this means. Yeah, I think Teal will never ban either of the AD carries unless their opponents ban one first. That makes they're sense. They're happy to take the skill mm -hmm. matchup. Yon's best champs are those two champs. It yeah. gives them a lot of draft flexibility. Yeah. They can just ban Jensen out here yeah. as well. And Teal's doing this a whole playoff. They've been target banning mid laners in the yep. first three because their bond is so good in lane. They don't need to worry about the bond bounce. Well, also because their mid laner has an extra champion that no one else has in Ziggs. True. That is true. Right? Yep. And then he doesn't need to play the Orianna or the Ari, and he's just, even the Tristana. Like yeah, it was okay, yeah. They starve the mid lane pool, and it's actually the AP's advantage. And it is kind of exactly what we were talking about, right? So we probably will see the Varus Callista trade unless TL decide to ban one of There's them no for way. some reason. Um, but yeah, dropping the Ziggs ban as well <laughs> is super interesting to me because I feel like teams have been somewhat reluctant to uh, ban out the Ziggs, but even when we see that happen, it hasn't worked as a strategy, right? Triple so we'll see Callista. what FlyQuest want to go with here, whether it's the Callista or the Varus. It's also clear that TL is like, they're tempting FlyQuest to first pick Callista, and then they just pick Vitalia away from Jensen. Yeah. Now he's on down to yep. a fifth plays pick, you know, on tier list. I mean, they'll play Varus into this, probably. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, and, and Varus, 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 the thing yeah. that I'm afraid of, as you mentioned, is you pick away the Talia, you force them on, a, uh, on another Karma game, or you're forcing him on a pick that he hasn't played yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, like, Karma with Kalista just does not sound good at all. So, like, overall, I, I wonder what Jensen is going to be throwing here. If he's, if he's fine, basically not first picking the, the Talia, and it's uh, recognizing that he's going to get his champions banned against him constantly. Probably going to see something like... I don't know, Nautilus or Renata here for Busio. Yeah. And then perhaps Jensen picks Karma now, because if he does pick Karma now, they ban Karma. <laughs> and then he's really not out of champions at that point. Yeah. And Whoa. The Andy. Annie Viego has been something they've been playing a lot together. Yeah. They could go for that combo. We talked about the top of day two. I do like this combo for FlyQuest because again, it does allow them to play the carry jungler. Um, this is the type of mid laner that yes, you would see care play for Milky Way. Uh, <laughs> I, I, that's our first Milky Way mention here. Um, it is pretty interesting to see oh, okay. the, the Jax ban coming through to prep for the Renekton pick for Blippo in the top lane in these first three. Yeah, here's another champ that APA plays that no one else plays, the Orion Soul. So I think I like that they're taking away the Talia from Jensen mm -hmm. as well. But they're going for the any Renekton, so I'm wondering if Inspired thinks he has more than three champs to play, you know, there. Lee Sin and the Viego are the two most common choices for I him. Think, I think he Vi, I guess, is still open. Vi, Sin Chao. This, game, yeah. the That's this game, there's no Tom Kench to stop his Vi ulti, so maybe he's more comfortable with this one. Yeah. It's very surprising to see the Kalista not being picked with support. 
in the first three. That's a very common thing to see like Renata pick here. Yeah, I, I think part, partially it's because Busio is going to be confident playing a lot of stuff. And I've also seen, I've seen a lot of FlyQuest games. Uh, this is more true with Kalista than this with Kaisa, where even if they make mistakes in the laning phase, Masu still makes some pretty real late game contributions with running on Kalista. So I think I really like this first three a lot more. It's just way simpler for FlyQuest. I yes. think that yeah. Urgot Karma thing was just really weird, <laughs> but this is very straightforward in how they want to play. There's also still so many ways that they can kind of go in this draft, depending on what they want to pick for jungle and support as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, TL recognizing that, take the Renata away from FlyQuest, and also FlyQuest taking out the Volibear, I think, to, to Kobe's point, recently, that's something that Umti has been really, really good about playmaking on um, and been really proactive around ganking either top or bot, as we saw from yesterday and today. Uh, so I like that takeaway from FlyQuest and then Inspired's Viego banned out by TL. Yeah, and the Renata as well. So I wonder if Boosie wants to play something like the Nautilus again, had a terrible game in, in game one. Yeah. He could pick something funny, you know, like the Rumble or something like that. We've seen him in solo kit, so many games. Camille he said support. He played it. He said he Camille played support it. is available as well. It's good with Kalista, good in lane. <laughs> what do you think Team Liquid should hold for five picks? I mean, no, I no, no, no. I think they should try and hold support for five picks so they can see what uh, oh, yeah. the ball is. For sure. Is. Yeah, for four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. The Sean Comp pick is definitely not worth it. They yeah. could just throw a Lee Sin here if they really wanted to. Umpty's Lee Sin was actually really good when he was playing it earlier in playoffs. Also, a takeaway from Inspired, who yeah. probably wants to play at Lee Sin. And if he, that gets picked away, he probably goes for the Sin Sao or the Vi, I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah, they don't have amazing setup oh. for it. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Go back to the last one. <laughs> We're getting teased a little bit here. Yeah, basically oh. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite. It's playoffs. <laughs> Sichuani time. I mean, I guess uh, if you're Lee Sin against Renekton Annie, you're a little bit more in danger of just getting one shot, so the Sichuani yeah. might be better for that. One important thing is that if TL wants to last pick something ranged, it's good to have two tanks in your team comp. Mm -hmm. Koji wants to play something like the Syra True. yesterday. Yeah. So in case Boozio picks something that's ranged as well, like Renata's band, I know, but like, could be like a rumble or something. Mm -hmm. Then Koji has the opportunity to play something like Syra or a way or something himself. After all that hyping, right. we're like, oh, it's what is this going to play? It's Nautilus. And it's going to be a, like a Braum or Alistar, I think, from Koji J. It's so good in this game. Yeah. Get him in there. Get his hands dirty. Probably not a Tarek angle, but that's all we do. Yeah. He usually picks Tarek with, with Kalista. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's just an Alistar or a, a Braum. It's so good with Sejuani, both of those champs. There's a lot of ways to start fights for FlyQuest side. You have Kalista, Lee Sin, Alice. Uh, Could play Tom if he wants to. Oh, true. That is actually a good point. So, at least for this game, there's going to be a lot of ways for FlyQuest to actually just engage. Um, every one of their champions actually can get something going. Mm -hmm. I also will say the biggest improvement for me for is that they have lane prior. This game, mm -hmm. no matter what Core J picks here, TL's ball lane will have prior at least in their early levels. Yeah, what's time can? They'll have pushing top, pushing ball lane lane. And Jensen doesn't necessarily win against Talia, but you can gank really easily. You press flash W, the guy's done. Yeah. You know, this yeah. him, he's just gonna die. Kill threat. Yeah. yeah. So this is the same time Flyquest has lane power, early game power, and like and welcome back. It's time for game number two. Game number one could not have been much more one-sided for Team Liquid. Some early mistakes from FlyQuest get punished, and then TL just runs away with the whole game. All right. Uh, shall we continue the legend of Team Liquid playoffs here? Because Let's, we might as well. I feel like in draft, they have a lot of really good looks here, too, with FlyQuest having so much hard engage and them having... Tom Kench for disengage, Talia Rockfield that you have to go through, and super beefy frontline. Um, I, I feel like it's it's got to be momentum still on TL side. Yeah, especially with how Jan has been playing actually on the Varus. This is a drawing from Emily. She is just insane with her art. Dude, I don't understand how people do this. I can't draw that's a circle real time without also, it looking like yeah. a deflated that's, that's not sped up. She's doing that live. And now, now the logos that I, how do you, what? I don't know how she does it. I, she puts pen to paper. We should do it. A draw my <laughs> Thank life. you, professor. We should do a draw my life. With just, but it's us just doing stick figures. And yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can make some real ugly looking stick can figures. I you I'll tell you that. Because I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I have no idea. I just assumed. Uh, I'll make a macaroni necklace. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah. Kobe okay. can well, be our we'll arts and crafts. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll diversify our art projects here. Okay. Yeah, we got this. We'll have a whole. Yeah. Uh, 
We'll, Menage, get, that, we'll get that going for summer. Yeah. <laughs> because be we're going to go for quantity, <laughs> not quality. Yeah, exactly. Of we're just going to pump <laughs> out some garbage. Spam out garbage art. <laughs> yeah. We cannot <laughs> overwhelm the... you with garbage. All right. Well, while we're figuring out what we're going to do with that, it's time to toss things down to Raz, who's standing by for an interview with FlyQuest coach Nuke Duck. Yep, got Nuke Duck with me here. Just a quick question. Uh, what in your vision went wrong in the, the first game? Um, we play like split comp with poke against like low engaged team comp. Um, but I think the players are nervous, so executing it was like hard for us. It's like supposed to, we shouldn't just fight 5v5, run at them, should get like lane prios and poke them and look for picks. But we weren't trading in the lanes and weren't finding like the correct mid game setup. So yeah, now we dropped a bit like easier team fight comp. Sweet. Uh, speaking of like the ease of it, what about this comp if you guys want to win this game is like the ticket? What are you thinking uh, your comp executes on? Mm, it's similar. I think their team comp is pretty bad. So I think if we play like to our level, we will usually win it. Um, their, maybe their win condition, we try to blow too much load on one guy and they save him with Tom Cash, I guess. Something like that. Sweet. Appreciate that. A lot of action early, so I'm going to send this one straight back to the casters. Never want to overfocus on a single target like that. Yeah. You gotta. Well, when you started saying that, I was like, oh, well, I was gonna word this. I, Does flowers want to cast in summer or not? I am navigating around it, sir. We are taking the scenic the route the situation. through the book. <laughs> Don't put too much offensive power into the toad. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. that's, uh, yep, that's how we're gonna go for it, yep. boys. Yep. But uh, Core JJ's performance on said toad was very impressive. <laughs> in game number one. We'll yeah. see if he can reprise that here in game Ooh. number two. So this is actually really fun. Uh, they were digging into some stats before we started showing all, ca all chat on broadcast. APA 7-7. Seven and seven. After all chat starts getting featured on broadcast, 14-3. and three, The more people that see his They're gonna happen, find him. Hey, the more powerful he gets. Hold on, it's a 2v2 here in the mid lane. A lot of birds down into APA. He tries to get out. Jensen needs a little more damage. Oh, no. He's not gonna get it! APA lives! No way! They got the early start, the guaranteed Q, and they still win. Meanwhile, bottom side, it's breaking out into even more violence. It's Cleanse, Ignite, and Flash using the side of FlyQuest down here in the bottom. Meanwhile, the only thing left in the side of Team Liquid is the Flash for Core JJ. <laughs> wow, you guys are so insane. I don't think he means it as a compliment. What gave it away? Sarcasm? <laughs> what? From AP? In my LCS? In the no, all sir. chat? <laughs> oh, the there are some good ones. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be crazy when my man goes to MSI and he's all chatting Faker. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's just he's gonna be yapping to everybody. He's gonna I be mean, all chatting the goat. So last world he almost beat Faker. They almost beat T1. Now this world we're gonna improve. He just didn't action. type enough. That was the problem. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We didn't show it. Exactly. Uh. All right, well, we can see this one more time. Almost able to burst him down. Then as Jensen flashes oh, forward, God. he gets Q stun up by Umpty. The passive stacked up. <laughs> he gets an A stun as well. And you just know how good that feels. How frustrated your opponents are. You know they're in their head. Well, also inspired flash forward. And was yeah. just barely unable to get the range for that auto. Yeah, Inspired wanted to flash in to oh, get the oh, last hit, but it didn't work. Now dead. Impact might just get a solo kill. What was Whippo talking about? Where Impact's not the guy who can carry the game? Wait, and now Whippo you flash to kill yourself Trying anyway? to juke around, but he just wastes the summer what? spell. Impact gets a solo and a cherry on top. Top gap! Oh my god, back-to-back -back Asante's. And he just gets a solo kill and the freebie flash on oh, top. Oh, and Impact yeah. hits him with the question mark. What is up, Whippo? Last time we heard the chat, like 85% of chat agreed to question mark is talking trash. I can't believe there's 15% of people yeah. who disagree. That Those is are all the Kobe's accounts because he was the one questioning it. Uh, honestly, it's Kobe one, Kobe two, Kobe three. Oh, no, it's not the trash talk. The, the the question mark is the most efficient of trash talks. Oh yeah, it's Bottom the side classic. Though. Abyssal dive brings Core JJ in between Busio and an escape route, but Inspire's ready for the three v three. Busio's gonna drop first. Yawn's still alive for now, but Inspire picks him up. Core and Umpty still trying to. Find 
find more on the back end of this fight as Masu has to flash back away. Over in mid lane, APA is under pressure as a rotation from Whipper's gonna find a kill there. It ends up being a one for one in bottom lane, but the trade ultimately favors FlyQuest globally because of mid. And they're gonna push it all the way up here. Umpty sticking around. I mean, they, they waited a little bit too long to go for another repeat play on bottom side, so glad they're pulling off here. But as you said, it's still beneficial for them. They get to rotate over to Dragon. Yeah, really good kill mid. And and the wave was so bad for APA. You can see that the wave actually got pulled and stacked in mid lane, so it was slow push towards Jensen, denying almost all of that entire wave from APA. So he dies, he loses the wave. His team will be able to grab this Dragon. So that is something for them. Uh, but obviously, FlyQuest is going to be going pretty gold positive off that play. As you can see, Jensen now just about getting back to lane, and he's going to have that full wave at his tower to farm. Let's take another look at what happened here in mid. Ah, so APA just used his full combo on the minion wave also. So there was 0-0 zero, zero chance there, and Jensen got in range for the stun. Once you close that gap, uh, good roam from Whippo on the timing here. Yeah, and that's one of the things Whippo has always been really good at, finding these timings, get out on the map, make something happen, even if his lane isn't going well. Oh, nice hook from Bucio. This is what FlyQuest wanted from him in that first game. And finally, he delivers here in game number two to tie the kill count up. Three to three, six kills in six minutes. The youngsters for FlyQuest coming alive here in the second game. The double most valuable prospect bot lane. Oh, but Jensen's ready to go. APA has seen that bear Tibbers, and he does not want to see any more. Running back towards his turret now, as Umpty does clear out some vision. The pixel brush around the top lane, but he won't be able to find anything else. And the key difference in this game is that FlyQuest are actually built to scrap this time around with a very aggressive draft and they're going to continue to do so in the river as Busio and Masu are going to protect the scuttle crab until Inspired comes on over but they are built to scrap this time around they have so much potential uh for trying to snowball and just fighting over here yeah and Cordis wasn't there to actually cover Yon you know Yon didn't have the flash so he used the heal for the move speed tried to find the sidestep but Busio dialed in with the hook and now Bwipo, ulti's forced. Jensen's on the roam. He's going to try to get up here. Impact should just be able to walk it out, though. Yeah, Bwipo's a hungry crocodile, but Impact is just trying to get away from this one. They chain CC to Cassante, but they don't have enough damage to kill him here just yet. Impact brings Bwipo back underneath the turret. He gets away in the meantime. Umpty tries to come in, see if he can finish anything off, but it won't happen. Nobody dies either side. Yeah, kind of close to being able to bait them in and, and get a surprise counter there uh, for Umpty and Impact, but not quite, so no turnaround around on the kill. A lot of cooldowns used on top side. A lot of cooldowns used everywhere, basically. I'm now looking at Inspired, especially. Lee Sin loves this sort of setup on the map, and he's got Flash plus Ultimate ready. That ward here for TL does see him take Scuttle Crab, so it might be a little bit more difficult to get his play off of, but that Lee Sin is very dangerous right now. The Lee Sims particularly being piloted by Inspired. Remember the last time that we saw FlyQuest, he found amazing angles mm -hmm. on Berserker in the games against Cloud9, where he was able to bring them back from a disadvantageous situation. Here's what happened in mid. This was Inspired trying to make a move, but APA with a flash in time to prevent himself from being kicked back the direction that Inspired wanted to send him. Yeah, obviously trying to go right back at APA. You know, FlyQuest, Jensen, and Inspired have played really well as a duo, just trying to constantly put this pressure on. And we're going to see this on cooldown. You know, it's not really that you're thinking about getting the kill. Right. You just drop tippers on cooldown. You just pressure them out. Use that to get free push on the wave. And you just constantly go for this chunk. Because tippers is actually quite a low cooldown. And Justin is also playing face rush. We didn't touch on that. Uh, but that is something that is pretty atypical. Against some of these kind of slow melee champions, he can just proc the face rush, be able to retreat out after using his full combo. And especially up against Talia, who loves to use her ulti to roam. If you're constantly taking control over the wave, shoving her back, having that dominance in the 1v1, her job becomes much more difficult as APA did walk off to the side there so they couldn't see him start that recall channel but now he has to walk all the way back in between the turrets yeah he's in real danger uh, Jensen rushing for the boots of lucidity the key part there is that you get the flash cooldown on it summoner spell cooldown reduction yes because Andy just wants to make the most of that key and when APA has no flash it is an easy easy setup for FlyQuest so uh, off of Inspire's earlier play where he got that cooldown advantage they wanted the repeat a lot has changed in the 14 and a half years that League of Legends has been out. That, that's the actual number, by the way. Flash anti ult has not changed. That has always been the game plan. And for Jensen, we'll see if he can get any of those big wombo combos this game. Remember again, last game, FlyQuest only got a single kill. Whippo's Urgot was 
the only one who managed to get himself on the board. So for everybody else, it's time to step up. Inspired on this Lee Sin being a playmaker. Jensen on the Annie being that huge cannon for the team fights. He'll walk over a ward as he looks for another roam up towards the top side. I mean, bot lane is looking so much better. You know, they're up 20 CS or more for Masu, and he got the kill and the assist. Impact potentially in trouble. Yeah, Impact's gonna have to try to get away from Whippo here as the Dominus is used. They gotta make sure they don't give Cassante the angle to go all out and try to isolate one of them. The burst is enough, and Whippo will call the meek. Impact drops. FlyQuest takes the lead. And that's just a really smart play of Whippo trailing through the brush there. Kind of lane ganked his own lane, going through the, uh, <laughs> uh, the brush on the side. And even though Jensen walks right over a ward, it plays into their favor, kind of baits Impact in. Uh, and as you rightly mentioned, Flowers, the only way Impact gets out there is if somebody mistakenly gets closer to the wall so that he gets mm -hmm. an ult angle and they, they avoid that. So see if Umpty can answer anything towards mid lane. Masu playing safe, so shouldn't be able to. And I do always like, you know, when you have some a champion like Jensen is playing, like the Annie, who can get Pryo, move up towards topside, because it's a Sheen and a Bramble Vest. Neither of those do anything against an Annie, right? right? You have no HP, you have no MR. So the Cassante is very squishy to the Annie right now, whereas Buffo basically has absolutely no chance in the 1v1. So I think it's smart. It's good map movement here from Jensen to get out there on the map. All right, neutral objectives look like they're just going to be traded this time around as the second Drake goes over to Team Liquid. Never mind, Busio repeating what happened in game number one, or is he? Masu's ready to keep him alive now, and APA's in trouble. He's stuck in the river with no way out. Masu's going to make sure he drowns. FlyQuest finds kill number five as Cor and Yon try to get away. Busio and Whippo still looking to chase these guys down as Jensen will not have enough damage to kill off anymore. FlyQuest are up a 1,000 gold. Busio's repeating, but it's the alternate timeline where it goes their way. They get another kill. It was really ill-advised fight there for TL to even be taking. Masu is so strong right now, has the Callista ult as well to protect Busio. And this Blade of the Rune King gonna be done here in a hurry for Masu. And he is gonna be very difficult for them to deal with. Likewise, also with this early gold advantage can keep pushing and make the most of their uh, Void Grubs that they've gotten five of already. So trying to get some extra gold out of tower plates while they still stand, they can push on up and they're gonna teleport here. Even Whippo really wants to make use of it right now, but APA is on the way. Exactly, all five Grubs going the way of FlyQuest so far, and there's still time for them to try to pick up that last Grub if they wanna attempt it. Whippo going for the dive on APA, just wants to burst him out, but he doesn't have the damage to do it on the first rotation. Now APA oh. rides the wall out and just barely escapes. That was so close there, actually. APA, you know, getting pretty confident. Thought he would be able to take down Whippo under the tower. Wasn't able to do it. There's five grubs as well, so gets another plate off the back of that. Pushes APA out. Uh, Whippo does not have a lot of farm, but he does have that Black Cleaver completed, and Renekton always really strong on one item at level nine. Yeah, and they can just go pick up the other one, get all six now. You get double on your Void Mites, and you just get so much gold that it makes it so easy to fight the next dragon. It's still three minutes out, mm -hmm. and FlyQuest not really worried about the early dragons they've given over to Team Liquid. Kind of happy to see this bounce back from FlyQuest mm. um, with the with the scrappier team comp that they've got, being willing to go into TL and winning a lot of these fights, accruing an early gold lead. It's still only a thousand right now, so it's not like game ending or anything. Right. But they should be in a in a pretty good position considering they got all six void grubs, and that helps out your split push for later on. Yeah, absolutely. And you just want to be able to see them have a bit of a bounce back. You don't want to see them team collapse like that in finals, you no. know, uh, especially after how competitive their previous series was. It was such a battle back and forth between these two teams. You know, game one started a lot more slowly. Uh, it just felt like Fly kind of let TL have their way with it. This time, being able to kind of enforce their will on the game much more. Uh, as you can see, Busio gets that deep ward, but it is spotted by Umpty and it's immediately pinked. So they are aware of it. Umpty, you're nervous that there was a potential dive coming, so he's not even going to bother clearing it out. Just going to walk right past it and leave that for four. And as Jensen backs away, he knows that Impact doesn't walk up like this unless something's going on, right? You already touched on the fact that none of Impact's items do anything to Annie. There's no reason for this dude to be posturing in such a way unless something is lurking in the shadows. APA on this Talia has his flash ready, but FlyQuest is not afraid to go and focus this guy. This has been a strategy that a lot of teams employed against Team Liquid, specifically in the regular season. They focused down APA, whether it was in the draft or in the game, they wanted to try try to go for him as that point, and it worked out a lot of the time. But now, let's see how things are gonna play out as we have our split screen view, inspired on the Rift Herald, Jensen getting collapsed on here in the bottom lane. He'll try to defend himself underneath the tier one turret, but it's impacted Umpty in a 2v1. Jensen just tries to burst down the Cassante. He flashes.
flashes away from the first from Sejuani, but Impact's gone all out, and APA showing up, collects the kill. Now Masu and Busio versus Yon and Kor back in the mid lane. This 2v2 isn't gonna go anywhere. Busio does not wanna try to dive these guys so close to that turret. Inspired has enough time to pick up the Herald. That's what Masu and Busio are fighting for, while Whippo is split pushing back in the top lane towards the tier two at the same time. And even though Team Liquid do get their kill onto Jensen on the bottom side of the map, it's still more gold uh, into the pockets of FlyQuest because they get that top turret also plus the Rift Herald here. Bottom side turret doesn't actually get finished as Masu gets aggressive with Yawn. All right, another more, another more. Just a prank. Yeah, still gotta respect that Varus damage. If you do get those Blight stacks up, hit your Q, it's always gonna be a lot of burst. Masu is ahead, of course, does have the tier two boots completed uh, where they're not over on the side of Yawn. And it's gonna be in a pretty good spot to try to make something happen in this game, but the comp is the difficulty, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of trouble, I think, sometimes in closing the gap here. Um, and as Duke Joke said, if you overcommit to one person, Tompkins denies it, the fight can turn really bad. APA trying to use the Weaver's Wall there to see if they can find a pick on Jensen, because there's only 20 seconds before this third Drake of the game spawns. All of the non-support champions are on their first completed item power spike, so it'll be a pretty even fight if they decide to challenge one another for it. APA even having the fully evolved Seraph's Embrace as he just recently got the tier fully stacked up. And Team Liquid have control over the bot side. Really. Killer just way better set up for this, though. Impact has already moved down as well. There is TP for Whippo, but I feel like it's it's going to be tough for them to actually walk in when Teal are fully set up. Also, even though the, the very tanky comp of Team Liquid might lose out on damage later in the game, tanks are insane on one item. Yeah. Uh, and they've got three of those tanks, so very, very beefy, very, very scary here. Maybe Inspired pulls some tricks and like tries to steal or something, but I don't think you want to commit to this dragon fight. Wait until the actual He's dragon looking. soul. Yeah, they're going in. They're ready to start fighting. They're going to try to burst down impact before anything else. Yoink. Inspire oh. makes his way into the back and just steals the Drake. It was all a distraction of Ampoo from FlyQuest. The only thing they're gonna lose is Tibbers, and Whippo takes the tier two in the top lane as well. So good on the call there. They don't want the actual fight. They just want to steal and keep Renekton split pushing. Two for one on objectives. Lee Sin with your Q is so good at securing these smite fights. So Umpty didn't even want to try and fight it. And now, oh, nicely Spider-Man by Busio. The dredge line into the wall to buffer through that seismic shove. APA now in danger. Busio re-engaging with the enemy mid. And Team Liquid has to try to get out. Inspired wants to jump in. Core JJ forced to save APA. And Whippo makes his entrance into the fight. A beautiful kick on the yawn. Inspired does it again with the Lee Sin. Fly quest. Pick up the kill on the Varus. They don't lose a man doing it until Masu in the very back. It'll be 80 carry for 80 carry for so far, but FlyQuest is continuing their push. They still have the Herald for the tier two in the bottom lane. This is so big for FlyQuest. This has got a ridiculous amount these last couple minutes. Absolute robbery of a Dragon Steel. Free two tier, uh, tier two top. They get a tier two bot, a tier one bot, and they get the kills. There is no way they should have been able to get that much. TL really, I think, got split on what they wanted to do around that dragon. If you're not going to answer Whippo, you have to secure the dragon. Everyone but Umpty walked away from the dragon. Even Umpty walked away from the dragon. <laughs> yeah. He saw that Lee Sin. He's like, okay, you're going to outsmite me. Let's get out of here. Honestly, though, Busio and Inspire turning that last play with the flash hook onto APA and then Inspire going in and getting the hook. Whippo wants to. Oh, oh, APA does not hit the seismic shove. Whippo's still chasing after him, but he's already used the cooldown. Still he's, five he, more seconds before he's got the slice. He is, uh, he's really in there, boys. This croc is, oh, he finds the stun off the Weaver's wall, but the Seraph's embrace will keep Whippo, but only for a moment. Whippo will die, but he will drag APA down to hell with him. So it's kind of hard to see on the overlay, but Core JJ did not have ultimate there. Uh, at the beginning, you could see APA was actually running towards the Tom Kench, but the cooldown was not there for it, so it is the one for one. All right, what does FlyQuest want here? They are still hanging around, looking for any sort of a potential pick, but Team Liquid's not going to give them anything. It is a 4,000 gold lead for FlyQuest, not even 20 minutes into this game. Inspired quietly is as high level as the Soul Laners as well. He's got two level lead on Umpty. He is getting very strong. Look at his farm. He's got as much farm as his mid laner, more farm than the other mid laner. Yeah, I don't know like, about quiet. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy, man. He, I mean, he's 1 0 1, but he is getting really strong. Yeah. Absolutely massive bounce back, especially considering game one where Umpty just cleared him on every level. Here's another look at how Whippo knocks APA 
right off of the wall. Yeah, he has the W stun there, holds it for when he gets on the Weaver's Wall. And then this is APA running down. He was expecting the Core JJ ultimate, but it was not off of cooldown. He needed to keep walking up in that situation. Whippo having a laugh as he gets a kill that he knows he did not expect to. Impact runs away from the Tibbers. It is under two minutes now until our next Drake spawns. Still a Team Liquid lead in that department, but now a TP coming in for, to reinforce Impact. They're trying to make a move on to Jensen while the rest of FlyQuest has eyes on Barrett. Can Jensen buy enough time? He flashes out of the seismic shove, and Tibbers is still burning Impact down. Jensen is just going to waste as much time as humanly possible. Tibbers is still beating Impact in the 1v1. Barely alive now. Finally, the bear's gonna die. APA should be able to pick up the kill here on the Annie. He's gonna get that, but now the fight back up with the Baron. Team Liquid trying to stop him, but they're stuck in a 3v4. Impact is making his way up, but the problem is he's got barely any HP to do it with. Inspired of Masu, still with control over the Baron pit. Right now, Nautilus ulti down on Yon as APA tries oh. to ride the wall into the fight now. Seismic Shaman gonna find a whole lot just yet. Oh. It's gonna be stolen by OMD! And Team Liquid claims the objective. Now Busio drops, and it's a double kill for Yon. FlyQuest fall to pieces, and Team Liquid answer the challenge. It was actually a good setup there for FlyQuest, but then Jensen goes back in. He dies a little bit early, trying to jump onto APA, right into the seismic shove, and then they lose their rend smite fight. Nicely done from TL. They just take that entire gold lead out of FlyQuest's hands. And look at Yon's position, by the way. Hugs the wall so that the hook will actually not pull him back towards him. Then stays perfectly max range here to be able to get his Q off on Bwipo. Tanks the Nautilus Assault. And at this point, there's no more threat for Yon. So the fight is basically over. And now it is just about securing the dragon. They go in there, and the smite fight is won by Umpty. Anything you can do, he can do better. You take the dragon, he takes the Baron. The little things, too. Getting that knock up onto Inspired to make sure the Lee Sin can't Q the Baron to get a QQ plus a smite combo. Also, little things to try and help your jungler get things in, in their advantage. And then at the end of the day, they take the wheel. Uh-oh. Impact, now your target, but that's Kasante. So he is going to walk it off. Meanwhile, Yon shows up with the Chains of Corruption. Busio is going to lose about 60% health on that one. And Team Liquid, with their newfound control over the Rift, they are going to claim soul point with that third drake. FlyQuest had been trading away these dragons for gold lead, for topside, for all these void grubs that they have. But now it's a big punishment because the Baron stolen negates the gold lead and they still get to dragon soul points. Team Liquid still focused as ever. And now look at the map too. How quickly it turns in their favor for Vision after winning that fight. Yeah, and I mean, you even look down at the bot lane where Masu had this big lead. That is is now completely gone. Yon yep. is the one that's actually ahead. They're both on two completed items, but you know, more items in pocket working towards that third there for Yon. Yon has been so good, so consistent on the Varus in playoffs for TL. He's got the Tom Kench behind him. And I think he's in a really good position to carry this game. It's going to be up to the X Factor champions over on FlyQuest. you got to find a big kick or a big engage that hit multiple members. It can't just be on one. Oh, he tries to go in for Yon, there. but there's no Follow up, what is Inspire doing? He's just gonna be killed instead. Impact gets the shutdown. Now Whippo's in the middle of everybody all alone. Young's finally shut down, and the Croc finds his man. Core JJ tries to escape, and Whippo is dominating the fight. FlyQuest finds the angle. Inspire's sacrifice is not in vain. Humpty will at least get Busio on his way out, but APA is stuck behind enemy lines, and FlyQuest gets a four for two. Yeah, Jensen and Masu were on the way there. They were just a tiny bit out of range at the damage, but it didn't matter because they got the Tom Kench ult out with that play, and then the rest of the team finishes the job. FlyQuest right back on track. Yeah, and this is one of those situations where when Yon does actually die, he's so much of their damage, but they're just sending everything and the kitchen sink at him. Q onto the Tom Kench. Warhawks kicks him away from the Tom Kench. Then he gets devoured, but now everyone is arriving, and as everyone piles in on top of Yawn here, you can see Whippo flashing in, slice, dice, finishes him off. Now it's really only APA on their team that does any damage whatsoever. Masu is chasing down Impact. That's him gone. Everything falls apart for TL off of what looked like an engage that I did not think was going to work out. Yeah.
The fact that it started off with the kick, with no immediate follow-up, but yeah. then still ends up being a four for two. Well thought from FlyQuest, and this is kind of what we had to see them do back in their series against Cloud9 as well. They were in situations that were disadvantageous, but they outfought in the bigger fights, and it gave them the edge they needed. Now, Impact's about to face check as Whippo pops the Dominus to charge up the Fury. It's only him and Busio right now, so not a ton of damage to try to kill this tank. Inspired is going to show up. There's your Pathmaker. Impact trying to go unstoppable here. He'll bring one of the guys through the wall with him here with the all out. Impact still trying to escape while the rest of oh. Team Liquid goes for the tier two turret back in the mid lane. Inspired with a dragon kick to the head as Jensen and Masu now try to mount the 2v4 defense. Jensen's on the right side of the Weaver's wall and Masu has to flash away from the wrong side. Now Jensen gets a multi stun and Core is barely hanging on. Flash over the wall from Busio and the rip tie rips Core apart. Now Umpty tries to escape as Inspired kills Yacht. Masu wants to cut away from AP. PA, but he can't do it today. A double kill for the mid laner from Team Liquid, but surely he will not escape. He kites back into the enemy base, and the ace comes through for FlyQuest. The cavalry arrives for FlyQuest. They pinch on TL, trying to make that play on the bottom side. It took way too long. They couldn't finish off Masu after this initial play on the impact. They get the kill on him. This took quite a lot of time. But TL saying, okay, we need to make something happen on the other side of the map. Three members went for impact. We must make a play elsewhere. They try to force it, but it's so long and drawn out. They can't kill Jensen or Masu off quickly, and it buys all the time that FlyQuest needs to be able to get there. It's all because of the double summoner spells from Masu. He uses the cleanse on the Sejuani ult, and then he flashes the combo from A. APA. Yes, Team Liquid got both those summer spells out, but because they invested all that time, the rest of FlyQuest are able to close the trap. They finished up with their kill on the impact and head on over to collect the rewards. It would have been even worse, though, by the way, if APA didn't get those two kills mm. uh, on those bottom side members. <laughs> Battle of the mid laners. Mid gap. Holy. So Jensen beat him 16 by. 16 more damage. Yep, 16. There you go. That's that's something worth yapping about. It's first place, second place in yep, damage. That's, that's all it is. <laughs> second place is just first place silver medal. As we've got impact again, being the one having a face check. The Cassante will tank up as much as he can, but he does not want to remain. Team Liquid falling back now. They are once again down three and a half thousand gold. Whippo pops the Dominus. He's ready to march forward. Umpty gets locked oh. down, and Busio misses the dredge line. Now they've got Whippo in the front of everybody as Umpty tries to escape. Whippo being kept alive here by the Steric's gauge. His impact goes all out. He's found Whippo in the back line. He's isolated him only for a moment, and Masu's ready to chase. He throws Busio right back in, but nobody from either side dies, and the dragon is spawning in two seconds. I just love how FlyQuest are layering CC to force out the ultimate from the Tom Kench early in the fight. Every single time they spend one thing, whether it's the Tibbers or a kick or an ultimate from Nautilus to get that ultimate onto Yon. And then as soon as that's gone, they're going to send everything onto Yon while that Tom Kench has no ulti. It's really good play here, layering those cooldowns. And they're going to give up that dragon, even though it is Dragon Soul possibility. TL, after that fight, they don't have the cooldowns to win it. So they immediately send APA up top side to get the minions instead. And we're back to the battle at the Baron Pit. Last time around, FlyQuest thought they had the setup, but Team Liquid and General Umpty were ready to answer the challenge. This time around, it's looking like a very similar game state. The gold lead a little bit less for FlyQuest, but they are still in a commanding position. When you're looking at completed items, it's three fully completed items in the jungle for Inspired's Lee versus only the two of Umpty, one of which is a nice vow. It's like a thrift shop item. It doesn't really fully count, but this is an advantage just state for the side of FlyQuest. Jensen now also on three fully completed items with that Crypt Bloom. Especially when TL have so many tanks on your team and then you have all this percentage health damage on FlyQuest being built. The Leandries, the Blade of the Ruin King uh, up here on Masu as well. Like they are going to rip through these tanks that were so efficient on few items and it becomes less efficient later the game goes and you start to be starved yes, for damage. And so positioning really matters. Look at this flank from Whippo up here. Sneaky crocodile. I'd also say TL really need to be the ones starting out the fight. If they can be the ones pushing up cooldowns, it's going to go so much better for them as Inspired's looking. Yeah, Inspired wanted to jump in and try to find Yon, but now Whippo has made the flank happen. The burst comes through. Yon stays alive, but they kick him back over the wall. So even once he gets spit out, he can't participate in the fight. Core JJ jumps in the middle of everybody, but it's just a food delivery. APA is going to be focused down next as Whippo continues to survive and thrive. He pushes forward with flight quest. Every man still going. Hit back at the kill on Busio, but it costs them everything. A double kill for Jensen, an ace for one for FlyQuest. And that could potentially 
actually be it. Look at the timers there. They're seeing if they can actually tank this up. They just have one minion. The next one's coming in, but they're pushing for the Nexus and they're pushing for the tie. It's 10 seconds on core. It's so much longer on everybody else. Game number one was a stop, but FlyQuest woke up for game number two. They're gonna try to finish this one right now as CoreJJ dives in alone, only to stand and die alone. Core falls, FlyQuest ties up the series. It's one to one. Wake up call received loud and clear. FlyQuest with a quick bounce back here. They're like, okay, you want to constantly fight us? They won't draft a fight. The gloves are off. And my goodness, I'm still thinking back to that Lee Sin kick from Inspired. Another one from him. Been a menace. Six, one, and eight. He had 231 jungle CS. That only, is crazy. Only outpaced by his own AD carry. More than every yeah, soul leader in the game. More CS than every solo leader. More CS than every Team Liquid player. And he's making plays like that. All right, after that fly quest performance, let's head back over to the LCS lounge to break it all down. Cold country, bro. Same. I, I mean, I just. <laughs> We're back. We are so we back. Are, we are so back. Yes, we are. This is exactly what I wanted from Team Liquid yeah. fly quest, right? Like their first five game series. This is what we saw. We're back above a kill a minute. 30 one minutes, and a half 35 kills. kills. In that, one and a half kills a minute in that game. 46 kills in a 30 minute game. And Hell yeah. you heard that inspired what the cashier just said. Inspired had more CS than everyone on Team Liquid. <laughs> <laughs> As Elise said, like what, what was happening that game? I don't know how that happened. My region. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's insane. <laughs> Let's play this through. Actually, the early game for FlyQuest was pretty doomed. If you if you watched the early game, went to the washroom, came back, you would not have actually seen, <laughs> known how oh. FlyQuest came It's back. also like, how mad are you if you're... Uh... I've seen APA survive with like 3 HP. Yeah, yeah so 25 four times on the left corner uh. there. Yeah. That's 1 HP. Blows. <laughs> I feel like FlyQuest should have won the early game harder with how much priority they have in both top and bot and how much gank pressure they have in mid lane. Yeah. It shouldn't be like one for one in this bot play, for example, and it shouldn't be having a zero for one in a two to mid. This was this unironically really nice, a pretty yeah. good solo kill as well for impact, which led Wibble to make this play. I guess. That yeah, was actually really. Yeah. In some strange way, him getting solo killed gave him push for one wave to run mid. <laughs> and then this, like, one before solo kill. It's a lesson for you top laners out there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, APA needs to not do this. Uh, but at the same time, Whippo is really good at just timing. And it shouldn't be that hard, but timing hysterics with his Empower Q. Yes. Like, it just completely bursts his health in an unpredictable state. Then this one is. All right, the, wait, yeah, we're going to. We're going to. It felt Let's like roll that back. Yeah, roll it back and like slow it down. Because huh? this like... is the Callista Ren that we have seen not go well. I don't most think he LCS rents. Teams. Does he not? No, I think he both jungler's to smite at 2,000 HP. Inspired has no just, smite. It's just, I think it's, it's a bug on me. Oh, it, it might be, be a bug. Sure, yeah. Surely, oh, yeah. surely, surely we don't hit Baron without smite. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's just the, the tool is bugged on replay. Yeah, you're right, you're right. But I think and both journalists just know that I'm on 2000 HP, you smite and you rend, and you just hope that the team with two smites technically wins. Yeah. They, they, did, they did not win. Spoiler, they did not win. <laughs> uh, and Woo. then this worked. I was very surprised this worked. It felt like a desperation angle from Inspired. No one's from nearby when you engage, but then Look at people here. He flashes onto Yon. The moment he sees him, breaks his shield yeah. and just yeah. one shots him. Wow. Actually, unkillable. And Mas was untouched the entire fight. Not a single ability or spell has hit him so far. That's disgusting. Especially with how poorly the game started for Whippo yeah. in lane. Yeah. That he just, like Santi. Yeah. <laughs> goes mid, gets the kill, finds a play <laughs> top bot lane. Like, he actually just had the craziest. Um, Basically, come back. On We're gonna that. have to watch this fight twice once it happens because this was this was the game ender. Oh, true. Cordy Day definitely <laughs> made a mistake. Going where did he come game. from? I actually don't know where he came from. He, yeah, he got kicked over the wall by Inspired, and then. He All right, let's let's yeah. back let's back, back this up. Let's back this up here. Uh, man, the fact that Inspired. So Inspired landed that Q four seconds ago before he took let's it. Look at the let's last go back second. to the yeah. let's go back to the very start of this fight. Oh, you're right, there he is. I'd say for me, the the left side, Emily, with impact, uh no, that's not what did it. What really turned this fight? I'd say just impact. a pretty good engagement. I would say Whip was, it was flint, Whippo, also yeah. very good. Yeah. It makes the fight split between liquid, their carries and bad position, gets yeah. the wall, and now it's free damage onto impact. 
Yeah, I mean, er, a Jane. little bit earlier in the fight, Escort dies again. Masu was actually able to get a ton of damage on yeah, Tion because he was able to play super far forward because of Whippo's Renekton zoning everyone. I think the moment Inspired kicked Kojay over the wall with Yon in his belly. That's the win. Yeah. That's the time yeah. to back off for TL. Mm -hmm. But then Cole goes back in and it feels like everyone gets baited in to help him. And then they all die. Oh, I know which one this is. Which one is it? GG Easy? Top right. Yeah. yeah. GG Easy. I feel yeah, like kind of. There you, can, you can also, also do wide yeah, whippo. That's, yeah. that's the wide whippo. It's for sure wide whippo. Yeah, for this game. Like, was Jensen played fine, <laughs> but of the three, we can't just circle all three. Yeah. Why not? Oh, I mean, I guess we could. Never stop anyone chat, chat yeah. before. Don't let anyone tell you what to do, Jack. Right, chat's going to do what they want, honestly. They're going to be spamming. Right. We'll see which I one like, I like the, the GG easy for this one. Right, there's no yapping this game. That's true. Well, he, he did at the very start. Yeah, after yeah. the L3 gank? He, he was yapping yeah. after the, real the first after kill. That. Okay, so Team Liquid selects blue side. No subs. We got a series now. They've clearly came to play. Both teams got in the dirt that game. One and a mm -hmm. half combined kills per minute. Now, what, what does Team Liquid do on blue side? Because the bot lane meta to me is the most interesting thing. In game one, the Kai Sublime seemed really weird. Yep. Game two, getting the Kalista for Masu, I think really stabilized their overall game because he was just way more effective in these team fights. Yep. And the simplicity of the top side for FlyQuest was really good. So what does TL, what does TL do to try to disrupt this? I feel like TL don't actually feel that poorly about this game. Like, I feel like they would look at their draft. They're like, you know, we still got something that Yon plays really well with. We did attack bot side and we ended up getting Drake control down there as well. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see them opt into the same trade with FlyQuest with the Callista Varus. Uh, one thing that is guaranteed is we will not have a sweep. So 1-1. One, one. <laughs> That's true. Next two wins takes the series. As we head to break, let's take a look at our LCS Connected Comms replay presented by AT&T and voted on by chat. Oh, kill him, kill him, kill him. Right, so play. Can we still oh, fight some mid? I have to ult him. Okay, they're coming on us, mate. Go behind them, go behind them. AD no flash. Talia has flash. Yeah, flash. Okay. flash, he's baiting hard. I stunned them all. Yeah, it looks good, looks good. We will ace them here. I'm yeah, behind them. Looks fine, it looks really yeah, good. Yeah, you can go over. Beat. They still have beat. I slap. Nice, 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 nice. Let's go, 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 go. We killed them all. Talia's in the bush still. Talia, can we look Talia? Yeah, yeah. Hook into, hook into. Talia, but he can't ulti out after. Okay, just look at him. He's countered. I don't want to die. Yeah, don't die then. You got him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's dead. Uh, nice, nice guys. Give it to Annie. Bye. Really a flash there. Nice guys. Yeah, I can play still. Okay, okay. I want to go all the way around, guys. Watch me, watch me, watch me. I will flash over. I will flash over. Popping my ult right now. Let's hook this guy. We Sante, started on Sante. They used on me. They virus ulted already. I'm stunning Tom, stunning Tom, stunning Tom. He's watching me. I stop stacks. Fight together, fight together. Front to back. They're out, they're out, they're out. Go Tom, 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 Tom. He's ending, he's ending. Look my hook, look my hook. Go more, 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 more. More, 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 keep more, going, more, 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 keep more, going, keep going, keep going. I have sex. A little bit, a little bit. Go first, go, 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 go. I'm tanking, Paris, okay? Paris, go flash. Tanking one last. Starting this guy. Not tanking anymore. Kill this guy too. End the game. End. Yeah. Careful, turret, turret. I'm fine. Do we need to tank for the... Make more good in the Kia Sportage X-Pro. Kia. Movement that inspires. Red Bull gives you wings. Dude, why'd you put your new rig in the basement? Didn't you hear? Bill's a good gillionaire now. Basically, my new connection is so strong I can game anywhere. Check it out. We've got Gamer Rocker, Gamer Floaty, Gamer Couch. Whoa. It's got wheels. Gamer Bench, Gamer Throne, and Gamer Mower. What's that? It's hard to game while walking downstairs. I get it. That's smart. Live like a gagillionaire with low latency everywhere. AT&T Fiber with all five.
With this being the most valuable prospect, I know that it doesn't mean I'm the best right now, but that it means I have the potential. And from this past year, I know how much you can actually improve in a year, and that a year is a very long time. So I think in one year, I can already be a pretty good LCS support, and in two years, I could be the best. Busio talking about the glow up over the years. How about the glow up from game one to game two? Not just for him, but for all of FlyQuest. Well, I mean, he basically, he basically accomplished it. He's first team all pro LCS support. He said, hey, in two years, I could be the best support in the LCS. You just won first team all pro. You're in the finals. You're tied up. Man made it happen. In the finals, tied up with some flash hooks. Pretty nasty turnaround on the Nautilus for him and the team all together uh, with a really big turnaround here. Let's see if we get into draft number two uh, or number three here because the changes that they made going into number two were so, so immediately evident. Yep. All right, we're going to have Jensen not allowed to play Oriana again. We're going to have Jan not allowed to play Smolder again. We're going to have nobody allowed to play the Volley Bear, specifically Umpty after that game number one. And Masu's Kalista was definitely a problem for TL in game number two. All these bands making sense to me so far. Let's see, too, because TL also focused so heavily on banning away uh, Jensen. When they're on red side, they, they ran three targeted uh, Jensen focus bands there, following it up. Uh, up the Oriana with the Huey, but you're not afforded that luxury on the blue side. Got to take away some of those just universal prio picks, the Renekton go-to, too easy uh, in too many situations, <laughs> as well as the bottom lane kind of for TL, really needing to have a winning strong lane. TL, if they don't have winning bottom lane, the, the whole team just operates completely different because you need Core JJ, the captain, big shot caller, out and moving around on the map. And to do that, you need to win bottom lane first, so then you buy some roam timers for Core JJ on some sort of engage champ. I'm not going to comment on this unless they lock it in. Because Have you been a, a fan of the top lane rec size or it, no? It seems so obnoxious to deal with. Uh -huh. I was watching some so LEC no. earlier today, <laughs> watching Broken Blade just bounce back and forth between tunnels over and over again. It definitely seems like it could be a problem. I will say it's also incredibly unfun to lane against. It yeah, just feels I'd... like no matter how the trade goes, he won the trade because he burrows and he heals the full. Just eat the dirt and heal back up. But I will say, you know, after after the early laning phase, I, I do think Thinking, you know, offers a lot of less value than some of the other meta top lane champs, which I think is why we don't see it everywhere. Okay, well, we have Yawn getting that Varus locked in first for, for him on Team Liquid's side. Over on FlyQuest, they're going to answer immediately with a Senna pick. Now thinking about what they want to lock in for Jensen, it looks like the Annie worked out just fine in game number two. The Ari has also been one that has been banned away from him before, but the Annie's gonna be the decision. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, the Annie's much more team oriented than the Ari. They're like pretty similar in, in some of the plays they can go for, but Ari, of course, the single target, and then you're looking at um, some other Vi priority here too, but Annie, the AOE and the Tibber's damage just from Leandri's burn was so effective in the last game. It still gets answered by the Dragon, APA is pulling out his other two trick champion. Tippers is just another minion you can get Stardust from. Yep. Ah, I see. I no see. problem. To execute. Yeah. More stacks. Max the stacks. Also, we're finally going to switch the supports this time around. The previous two games have uh -huh. been Busio's Nautilus into Core JJ's Tom Kench. You have one with a fishing hook and one that is a Why, water critter, but now it's going to switch the other way. We'll see how that matchup goes this time around as we're into the second phase of the bands. I also just think red side, uh, you have Senna, you have Tom Kench. We're getting spicy jungle top. We got a no ban, is right? that correct? Uh, well, well, we'll get an update on if that was actually a miss ban or if that is a UI error. Uh, either way, for FlyQuest, you know, they are on red side. We're looking towards Blippo, some sort of spicy counter pick. You know, he's going to have the ability to go towards that. They're going to need damage from jungle and top. You know, it could look towards something like the Lee Sin once again that has been working really well for them. Obviously, pairs well with the Annie also. User error on FlyQuest's side, and they will th thus be forced to lose the ban. So only four bans for Sucks. FlyQuest this time. Yeah. Skill issue. They were too <laughs> slow locking it in. A true skill issue indeed, as Team Liquid said, you know what? Inspired's Lee, pretty damn good. Yeah, I don't want to play against I agree. Again. I agree with this ban <laughs> wholeheartedly. Take that thing out of the game. They do not want to mess around with it, especially because look at the, what FlyQuest already have laid out for themselves with a Senna Tom Kench lane bottom and an Annie mid. It would have been so perfect. Honestly, keep on targeting him. Uh, follow it up here. 
see what they can go with. The Vi is still available. Yeah. Vi and Zin Zhao, both options for AD junglers. We're really looking at some of the AD junglers. Mm. Let's see what this last one is. The Rel taken off the table. FlyQuest will spin their one second phase ban on that tank engage. Powerful option there. Let's see. Team Liquid wants to utilize all their time thinking, and they're saying, hey, you know what? Whippo has red side fifth pick. He's the kind of guy who would slam an Olaf. Let's keep him away from it. Yeah, going to be able to ban that away. I think it makes sense to have some sort of a protection ban. I'll be curious to see, you know, where we we find uh, Impact actually going. Oh. Uh, Viego would make sense. You know, another AD jungler there, especially the pairing with Annie is really, really strong. Annie's all up, up front first. Viego really needs that first reset. So you pair it with this champion. You get that first kill. You get the resets. Viego can go crazy. Um, but I really just want to know what is Impact going to pick here? Is it just going to be Cassante, which is banned out, excuse me? So it's got to be, it can't be Cassante. It could be something like Udyr that we've seen him go towards. Um, you know, Jax is available. We've seen him go towards that blind a few times. Um, otherwise, it, you're starting to move kind of like beyond what is the, the meta picks, at least for him. Well, the jungle could just be locked in first instead. Give him a little bit more time to think about it. Jax, Jax could go okay. to either role. True, yeah, um, yeah he got, a, got a pentakill on it yesterday, so he can definitely play <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, well, Inspired got a pentakill on Viego when he was in Europe, so as oh, far as the, the jungler pentakill is going around. Yeah. They, they locked it for yeah. impact. This, Wait, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very common. But <laughs> not, <laughs> for <impact. laughs> right, not for impact. Not for impact. We're, yeah. we're talking about Mr. Cassante uh -huh. protecting himself. He's throwing off your narratives. <laughs> All right, no more <laughs> narratives for impact. ADTF locked in top. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason that those narratives exist. Let's look through his, his champions play at all time. It's like only range champion. Oh, 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 yes. Okay. The game play comes out for Bwipo. We actually mentioned this on the Wait, live, on the live dive. Yeah, this is going to be interesting, though. Do you, do you actually like this matchup, though? I feel like I feel like a TF should just be able to play the barrel game pretty damn well. Generally, range range tops can be kind of difficult uh, for GP because of that. But the reality is, if you can win that barrel game, if you can actually play it well, it's going to be really strong to be able to attack other sides of the map because you're going to be able to throw down the GP ulti. You'll have Senna ult over the top. So two cross map ultis to assist the Diego and the Annie, which are going to be the ones that are really hinging around you know, for this composition. So there's so much upfront damage, so much setup. I do think it makes a lot of sense there. I'm just <laughs> really blown away that Impact is bringing out ADTF because this feels like so out of left field for him. Yeah, I was going to point out the burst damage that, that comes with your Gangplank ultimate in allowing you, uh, inspired in this case, to make plays with Jensen and just make sure uh, you can get some of these early kills. You don't have to worry about a minion wave being built up on you. Gangplank always has to be very wary about uh, early pressure and early tower dives. Yes. Especially if APA on his Aurelian Soul actually does uh, find time to roam. Remember APA, when he started out as an Aurelian Soul main, it was the original Aurelian Soul that was a early game uh, roaming beast. Now, of course, it's much more scaling, but uh, definitely still could go for those looks. I mean, this is just so interesting because Impact, he has played forever. There's so much talk about how long this guy has been around. He won a world championship yeah. in 2013. He has zero Lucian top games, zero Vayne top games, zero Quinn top games in all of that time. And to me, bringing out an ADTF is much more that than it is a Kennen, which is something that right. he has played as a range top. But like, this is so not his style at all. And you can see on your screen, congratulations to Jensen, who has now passed Wild Turtle for third all time in career wins in the LCS 342. Ooh. You want to talk about veterancy? There you go. Also got to talk about Jensen. So he is going grasp. And I've seen this where people go grasp and they go double scaling HP runes. Um, and you can go overgrowth as well. So he has overgrowth. I don't know if he has a double scaling HP runes, but I will assume that he does because he's playing this style. And then with Annie, you're building a lot of these kind of bruiser items. You can get like 35, 3600 HP. And as we're waiting on these minions to march down their lanes, Raz is standing by for an interview with Coach Spawn. That's right, got Coach Spawn with me. Last game, bloody one. But what were your takeaways off of that, the loss? I mean, I just think we made too many unforced errors, honestly, in the early game. I think that, you know, Yon dying bottom lane, a couple of deaths on the mid lane as well, uh, just not great. So they're playing like, we, we call them stupid comps, right? So like, if you know exactly what the comp wants to do, you know, they're playing Annie Renekton, and like two of the most fourth thrice champions in the game, and we just didn't dodge and engage enough. So get rid of a couple of the picks.
Makes sense. This one is an interesting one. So first of all, reactions on stage to the, the missed ban from FlyQuest, but also a lot of people are talking about the Twisted Fate, just like the Twisted Fate top lane because Impact is known for playing uh, non-carry picks. Just an overall reaction on the draft from your side. I mean, yeah, I, I actually talked about this when we signed Impact that like I think the whole, oh, weak side top laner, tank player only is like kind of bullshit, to be honest. I think that he's actually a pretty good tank player, so uh, a carry player, so like we're, we're happy with the matchup, so we'll see how it goes. And the missed ban, like, I think that's just them talking. They've got a couple of yappers on their team, so they're probably just mulling over what they want to ban. That's what I thought, too. All right, I'll send it straight to the casters and get their thoughts. Yeah, it, yeah. Impact has already had some uh, some good carry jacks games uh, so far, even as recent as this season. So definitely rewarding the confidence there. Core JJ and Yon get the Ooh. early level two, so they get the early beneficial trade off Core JJ's hook. I mean, Impact has had some good gear, carry games throughout his career, but let's be honest. <laughs> you guys are so doubters. <laughs> well, there, there is a reason that there is this narrative, and it's because 80% of his games over 11 years. Uh, guys, Fusio is about to drop here in bottom lane. He pops the back. thick skin to keep himself safe. Yes, the TP is going to return him to the lane, but one auto attack away from death down there in the bottom 2v2 as top lane's getting shoved in. So Whippo's under some pressure now as well. Umpty's just going to hang out in the Gromp brush and see if there's a play to be made. If they teleport Busio in down here, and then these guys just get dove with the wave, it could be trouble. But it looks like Team Liquid does not want to risk it here just yet. Upti going to go for the Grom. Yeah, you saw some question mark pings here from Blue Side, kind of uh, trying to figure out where Inspired was on the, the Wolf Camp. They're just going to steal away the Gromp and protect that push in and go for the reset. Meanwhile, Inspired will cross through mid lane. Uh, he was kind of hovering there for for any sort of option that showed up, but no aggressiveness. And this is this is just going to be so exciting. You know, I'm talking so much about top lane because I think the game is going to pivot a lot around that, right? You know, I do think the impact uh, he has the ability to dominate this matchup. The champion, I think, has the ability to dominate this matchup, and this is potential. Potentially some trouble though here for him. All right, Inspired's coming up, but it's double mobility summoners for impact. Spectrum all connects. Gold card back onto the Viego, because remember, if you try to stun GP, he just eats the oranges and gets away anyway. Not even ghost. So yeah, Impact pops no summoner spells there and still gets away with about half HP. He's a veteran, cool, calm, and collected on the top side. Another trade into Busio's health bar. Yeah, let's see. If, yep, a little bit more, even on the back end of the piercing arrow. But Impact, he gets right back to pushing uh, duty here, actually, with the built-up wave. Nice by Whippo, though. Even, you see, this is one of the reasons that this is such a hard matchup, though, generally, is because you can do the auto, and then the W is an auto-attack reset yeah. as you're actually locking in the card. So Impact did the instant double autos onto the barrel, and that's generally how TF can dominate the barrel game in this. Whippo accounted for that, timed it, still hit the barrel chain. And these matchups, when you're playing range into GP, come all down to the barrel game. Because if you're going to play Vayne or Quinn or whatever into it, if he's hitting those barrels on you, you don't have enough sustain, and all of a sudden, he's hitting W, so he just starts poking you down, and you can get pushed out. But if you're winning all those, it can get really hard for the GP. And now we're in this position where Bubba's hit enough, the impact is having to back up and having to play defensive, and you need to be the one pushing, because you have no TP. Especially when a Gangplank gets an early sheen for that extra just snap trading power, it's pretty difficult to go back and forth with it. So I agree with you, Isaac. That mini game with the barrels will be so important for both of these players, as Umpty and Jensen were both hanging around the top side river. Jensen has to head back over into mid as Umpty starts up those grubs. And the reason he just goes for it with full confidence is because they've got the support roam up to the grubs. You see Core JJ now on vision, making uh, his presence known. Meanwhile, they could see with their minions in bottom lane, Maso and Busio, bottom side, easy pick up there on the grubs for TL. And we see APA going aggressive with the flight there. You're just trying to farm Stardust, basically. You're just trying to take yeah. these trades when there's an opportunity, when there's no minions there. You W forward, you farm it up as much as you possibly can. And, and take advantage of the windows that your support is providing, this extra power, so you know your opponent isn't going to do anything about it. So take advantage of the window, grab some extra little benefits, and then Core JJ right back down to bottom side as the wave is going to crash in there. So the timing works out really nicely, and Jax can just transition down to bottom side Scuttle Crab. And things are going fine for APA here in the mid lane, farming up. Jensen gonna do what we saw him doing in the previous game with the Annie, trying to maintain control over the lane with the Tibbers. It does get trapped in the singularity as Whippo uses his ulti to force Impact back away from the turret. Impact still trying to it's hang around, leave. get as many minions as he can, but yeah, Whippo's got enough damage. He scares Impact all the way off. I mean, this is actually horrible for Impact. When you're playing the range versus melee and you don't have the push, your TP is, is so important, right? And he doesn't have TP. Whippo TP's back, pushes him out, and now Whippo's gonna be zoning him completely off. Yeah, Whippo's got him zoned away, but Busio's now the focus here in this bot side, 3v3. APA already used the Falling Star back in mid to force Jensen away and blow his flash, but it's first blood over to Umpty's Jax. 
FlyQuest now in retreat as Inspired and Masu try to get back. Jensen's made the rotation over, but the Tibbers was also used earlier. Both mid laners have joined the fight, but it's already over for FlyQuest. Inspired barely hanging on, has to go all the way back, and Team Liquid has a 1-0 lead. That's huge for TL, being able to push on bottom side afterwards also, and because uh, Whippo was unable to add his ulti because he had already used it, they aren't able to turn it back around. Full vision coverage and control for TL around the Dragon too. It's going to be an exciting game, man. This one looking like it definitely could go either way. Um, Bupo walking back does have that Sheen double longsword now. As we're going to see this fight one more time. Just started off by Busio looking to go in aggressive. Umti heals up with the honey fruit and is able to eventually find this angle. As Yon had a really nice backstep on the Spectral Maw there, dodges the stun. Umti goes in, gets the kill, flashes out before the root does connect there for Masu to keep himself safe. Meanwhile, back in mid, Jensen versus APA, checking in on that Stardust. APA sitting at about 47 right now. Remember earlier on, it is going to be slower stacking, but once we get to the 20 minute mark or so, you're kind of looking for that 10 per minute as sort of the baseline, what you would measure it against. Bottom lane 2v2, again, just scrapping non-stop with these guys. Masu trying to get as much damage as he can on the back end of the fight, utilizing the range and the power of the Senna. Another extra lick from Busio, and Yon's down to half HP. And honestly, the FlyQuest bot lane doing quite well here, despite that early trade, you know, going so bad. They got the TP out of Busio almost immediately. They stabilized in this lane. They're doing well now. Um, it can get hard later on, obviously, for that Tom Kench, though, as Varus is pretty good at punching through you. Wave right here, kind of hovering right in front of Tower as well. They just clear out the vision for impact so you can try and make the most of it, and then head on down. Let's see if Umpty actually makes it in time. Yeah, they know that he's there because of the control ward as Jensen, again, just trying to get away from the falling star. Turns the ulti right back around on APA. Neither one of these mid laners really fit to fight anymore, but Inspired finally clears out the control ward that spotted him earlier, and he cannot complete the Drake. And Umpty does get there in time, though. Yeah, they chase him right off of it. I mean, the health bars are pretty close after that, but they are going to get some more Stardust off of that Tibbers as well. So APA actually still pretty happy about those ult trades. And every time you ult trade, you are also getting Stardust if it connects. You get five for every time you hit someone with your ulti. So honestly, not that bad. Core finds a hook. Nicely done from Core JJ, forcing out the Devour from Busio to keep that Senna safe. They also get the Gangplank ulti from cross map out of Whippo. So a lot of resources having to be spent by FlyQuest there. Core JJ, nice hook. Yeah, really nice hook there. The GB ulti being down is always something that's gonna feel really nice in the 1v1 for impact because there's more threat now for him in that isolated 1v1. He rushed Tabby's though, as he was a little bit on the back foot. Uh, I'm expecting him to go Shiv. That's pretty much what, what everyone does go these days on, on the TF top, but we'll see where he wants to go from there. And we also have to see how early he gets active on the map, right? Because you want to be getting out on the map, making things happen <laughs> they, with his TF ult. This ward, this ward behind Dragon saw him get in there. Okay. Busio's got to be careful, though. He does not want to overcommit in the bot side river. This was the tragedy of game number one for FlyQuest. And now with APA down here to help burn it away, there it is. Upti can secure that Drake and get out. That was really nicely done. And even the little angle that APA took here to add the extra damage, make sure he doesn't uh, expose himself. That's an ace old main right there. <laughs> that is an ace old main right there for APA. Uh, also, nice little job just sneakily picking up this dragon because they also had gotten the first three grubs. So even though you see Inspired and FlyQuest uh, with the mid priority into grubs now, it's not gonna be like six grubs stacking for them. So right. not gonna be super dangerous for TL and TL actually taking the opportunity to use their bottom side presence to make sure uh, they can get some extra damage on this tower, get some turret plate money for themselves and maybe Busio some catfish dead. food. Yeah, see, this is a 3v1. Busio is gonna try to endure this, tank it up. The burst is pretty significant, though. Core JJ, one more turret shot, nearly oh, kills him. Calculated. But close don't count. Team Liquid pick up their second kill of the game. They're going to get a ton of plate money, too. Inspired, Masu and Whippo, seeing if they can find some kind of an answer across the map here. But now a TP will reinforce the bottom lane turret for FlyQuest. The Catfish is back he as Impact no gets dove as the Dawning Shadow does not do enough damage to kill him off. Whippo still looking for one last shot. The point blank pistol as APA finishes him. That'll be a one for one, given the top lane. Yeah, Busio TP's back for round two as they get the dive on impact and got all his sums there as well. And they're pushing up mid. So there's action in all three lanes constantly here. 
I think Buzio could have stayed under tower if they had GP all, but because they didn't, it just felt too risky. No one was TPing down to actually save him. In that 1v3 situation, yeah, you're the farming Tom Kench this time. It's not like the Nautilus from game one. He is tankier, but still not close to tanky enough. Meanwhile, then, since we had APA going up to try and cover impact there and, and like bait in the kill onto Blippo, they did leave up mid uh, for one minion wave worth of gold that Jensen was able to push in. I gotta say, man, Top is looking a little cooked for impact. It's, it's gonna be tough now. Essence Reaver already completed for Whippo, so now he has infinite mana, he's gonna be pushing, and he's, he's reached that level nine from an advantage. He's taken more plates, he's gotten a kill, like he is just gonna be scaling to infinity, and you're gonna be playing a, a champion that's losing in side lane, is just kind of running around and gold guarding people, so he's gotta find some sort of action on the map. Okay, Jensen and Inspired gonna try to get this kill on impact here. They dropped the Timbers, but Umpty's ready to respond. Now the GP all trying to keep Jensen alive, but it ain't gonna work here just yet. Inspired needs more damage. They finally kill impact off, but Umpty's about to make it two kills. Whippo barely surviving back in the mid lane. No! He dies to the burn from Leandri's. Team Liquid's got a six to two game. If they show the replay, you'll notice the split second that Inspired sees Umpty. Jensen still flashes in for mm -hmm. the play, but but he actually backs off. So Inspired backs off once they see him. Uh, Jensen still goes for it, and then they force it through, and it results in really big gains for TL. Well, and three kills of the Jax is a disaster. The Jax is going to be so strong. He's got his Triforce now already. We saw him get a Pentakill yesterday on this champion. He is off the races. When you're playing from ahead, you're going to be a monster in side lane. APA as well, really strong, gets a kill in mid lane. He's got the Leandries done. And this is what you're talking about. It showed up yeah. a little bit too late for to be able to highlight what you were talking about. Yeah, but that, that allowed Umpty to go right in onto Jensen because Jensen flashed for the play mm -hmm. uh, and tried to force it there. And then Umpty is able to pick up the other one because he flashes here. They get the extra turret shot. And so, as you say, really early Trinity Force. But bot side! Immediately back from the replay and Busio is down. Important to point out in that top lane dive that Inspired flashed when the turret shot was already in motion. So he loses that summoner spell for free there too. Team Liquid now up about one and a half thousand gold as turret plates are about to fall in 15 seconds. I mean, this this hot debate of, uh, of impact on carries, you, we saw the video from Whippo at the very beginning of the day where he had this huge grin on his face and he's like, well, impact, if he's not going to be able to carry, then your team's not going to be able to win. But oh, AP... he's sleeping. He's watching the other fight. What is he doing? He was asleep at the wheel. That is 100%. He, is, he ulted top and he's watching the dive happen yeah. top and he lost way too oh. much health. <laughs> Where's the typing? Where's the typing? Oh, he, he typed. APA's on a killing spree now is again out of the replay. We're back to live, and APA is 3-0-0 zero, and zero on one of his signature oof. champions. What, what else can you say besides oof, man, when you die like that, you feel like a fool. He said, what are you doing? Watch your screen. That's what else <laughs> he could say. <laughs> He's letting Whippo know that he's gonna want that one back. Team Liquid up 2,000 gold. They've got Rift Herald in their pocket. Busio's trying to join up with Masu and Inspired to grab a kill on Yawn, but it ain't gonna work out. Here's your gangplank ulti. Dawning Shadow's not enough either. Now Umpty's coming here. in. Team Liquid is ready for the fight. Umpty finds the lockup, but Busio's got the save. Inspired out of the heat for now, and here comes Core JJ. Now he's gotta be careful trying to get away from this one. Umpty jumping right back to make sure there's no kill onto the Nautilus. And that's gonna be a benefit for TL because they have APA getting a tower on top side. That's gonna be outer tower gold for the Aurelian soul. More Stardust to boot. This champion scales so well still that even though they give up their dragon on the bomb side of the map, they're gonna be very happy with that trade. And when we heard APA talk about their matchup against C9 and how they were able to beat them, he talked about how, yeah, they just gave us too much free stuff in side lanes. Like they showed too many guys in too many places at once and they were just ro out rotating them around the map. There's a good ex example of that as APA picks up some more free resources. Team Liquid up over 2,000 gold as FlyQuest and TL are tied in Drake's now. Yeah, Bufo does have info that MT is around, so he's gonna have to back off, but it's also pretty problematic, you know, that Inspired and Jensen are getting behind the pace of the game because again, the whole point of that duo is that you get ahead, you one-shot someone, you get the reset. If you can't get the reset, Diego really does struggle, especially yeah. against a champion like Jax. You're just gonna do so much more if Diego's not getting that quick kill. And then if we see Aurelian Soul in team fights lock up Tibbers with the E, then 
but all the benefit that we saw from Annie last time around, where the Tibbers was burning everyone and demolishing these team fights, isn't going to be there as well. I think there's a lot of pressure on Whippo to carry this game because Whippo is the hope for FlyQuest. He is fed on Gangplank. He has the lead. Gangplank is a very, very good uh, courier for money. This champion uses money incredibly well if you're able to hit your barrel chains later on. But that is the key. Vision so that you can hit your barrel chains and really make use of the crits. GP is one of those few champions in Modern League of Legends that you feel like can really pull off a 1v9 if you are playing it to the absolute ceiling of what yeah. it can do. We know that Whippo has been very fond of this champion in the past, and the pressure is on now for him to step up here in this game. And I think Vision is so key, like you're talking about, Kobe, because especially when there's, you know, multiple... TF is basically a marksman, multiple marksmen over on the other side. Yeah. With range auto attacks, the barrels can just get killed off instantly every time you're dropping them in these later fights, uh, which can make it almost impossible to get anything done. Plus, you have this enormous amount of zone control from a champion like Asol that makes it difficult to actually walk up and even be able to get in range for these barrel combos, because especially as you start getting more and more Stardust and that E gets bigger and bigger and bigger, like, that thing is just a GP ulti on a basic cooldown later in the game. That executes. Yeah. <laughs> Not Very bad. nice. Built-in Elder Dragon on it. What is it with the dragons and the executes? I just now realize it's a common theme. Where's Shyvana's execute, huh? Shyvana's only what a half The dragon. original. Shyvana gets uh, five MR for half, killing a dragon. Half of an execute. What kind of scaling is that? Rounds well, down, down to armor. zero. <laughs> yeah, Shyvana. Spyro gets to be the Elder Dragon. Asol just gets to drop GP ulties on a basic ability. Shyvana gets five MR. Shyvana came out in 2012, <laughs> all right? Shyvana will have her time of it. Shyvana is actually just cosplaying a dragon. Uh, <laughs> all right. Fair. Bottom lane, we have what could be a dive on Whippo. He's gonna try to turn it around. Dominic Shadow snipes Ogdi out. Big shot coming in from Masu. Definitely some big defense there. I think it's just gonna stop at the one kill for FlyQuest here, but you'll take any money that you can get to try and get back into it. Yes, sir. Um, that, <laughs> that is one of the champions we didn't quite mention. Uh oh Jensen gets caught by the chain of corruption, but there's nothing else behind the right. chain, so he'll be just fine. Yeah, no deep vision here for Team Liquid. So uh, they knew the rotation was coming over from Inspired and Busio. Don't want to overchase there, even if you hit your skill shot. 3 0 and 0 in the Sorelian Soul for APA. 174 stacks. Like I was expecting, around 20 minutes and 200 is where it's going to equalize. And from there, it'll just become more and more of a frustrating issue for FlyQuest, as Team Liquid will be happy to give resources to this infinitely scaling. Omega Bomb of a late game champion. Yeah, and he's scaled already. It's two items. He's the first to two items here for the Aurelian Soul. APA is in such a critical position right now as Umpty's able to get the vision and, and they're rotating over. But the plan is try and play this split push. You've got TF here with double mobility summoner spells and a static shift who annihilates minion waves. And these are the last couple lower bracket runs that we have actually had, you know, that resulted in wins. Uh, I was actually looking back over the last couple of years. It's actually about 50-50, almost exactly 50-50 okay. teams winning from the upper bracket versus the lower bracket. So people like to talk a lot about, you know, lower bracket advantage, playing the extra games versus upper bracket advantage, kind of getting time to actually prepare specifically for one team. Um, but this is another one where I think I think it's a, a little bit too close to tell. And in this mid game, I think the critical you know, issue is gonna be how to FlyQuest deal with the Team Liquid split push. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, impact is not gonna stop. Static Shift, Twisted Fate with double mobility summoner spells and a fed Aurelian Soul are really good side laners. They can push in both side waves and then look to make plays. So it has to come from something surprising here with an Annie stun or an inspired stun making use of their flash and then, you know, gangplank ultimate and just trying to trying to pick people off. But TL, if TL are careful in their split push, I feel like they should be able to accrue multiple advantages. It's really interesting because I also think there's an argument for later on for actually just putting Jax in the side lane, have G have have impact The group. Milky Way argument. Yeah, I like yeah, that one. Have impact group <laughs> and then be able to just ult the side lane and actually assist yeah. him for things like dives and whatnot because Jax is going to scale so well in that side lane and umpty likes his odds in that fight, just chunks out half of Inspired's health right before the dragon. I think you earn that privilege when you get a pentakill. Yeah, he's got his like, right, jack star. Totally. You, uh, you have unlocked the split list <laughs> privilege as a jungler. The DLC, you uh -huh. can, now you get side lane gold. Yep, we will give you solo tower gold. We will give you minion waves. Fly quest trying to come up and challenge as TL wants to go for the Drake. Whippo flashing over the wall to keep himself safe as Umpty tries to engage on Jensen, who has to flash out to barely escape himself. The singularity is down. FlyQuest is on the run. Whippo inspired and Jensen all barely hanging on as Masu tries to kite it out. He pops the cliffs to get away from the gold card. Impact has to escape off to the side. Team Liquid has somehow not found a single 
kill off of that. FlyQuest will retreat in time. That singularity was insane from APA. Dragging Inspired away from the kill onto Umpty. So neither team drops a champion, but TL come out with the objective. Okay, now, oh no, Busio. The Tom Kench tries to flash out and live through it. The thick skin, he gets over the wall, and Busio lives. I gotta say, I'm actually shocked that he bought a heart steal this late in the game. He's gonna get no stacks on that thing on the Tom Kench. Yeah, currently max health gained is zero. I mean, he got he got it late, right? But it's like, who are you gonna be autoing in these fights where you're supposed to be getting these stacks? It just doesn't really have a lot of value unless you can get it early and stack it up. But we can watch this fight one more time as FlyQuest were trying to push it in the river, but it was TL that laid the trap. They were waiting. Core hex flash over the wall, does look for the hook. It's responded to by that flash, and then Umpty goes in on the other side. FlyQuest looked to try to turn it around on him, but this is a singularity you're talking about. When you get rooted up, the singularity still pulls you. So you get bear assaulted, you're still getting pulled into the middle of that singularity. Yeah, and then they limp away, and even though FlyQuest members do live in the end, their health bars have sustained too much damage. So the objective and all these flashes critically go the side of Team Liquid. They just burned the uh, Masu flash, the Whippo flash, as well as the Busio flash. All, all these timers here uh, really taking down. Nobody on the side of FlyQuest now has that get out of jail free card. Team Liquid, see if they can abuse that advantage. Something that's actually really critical as well is playing around uh, the Falling Sky, Skies, I believe it is, is the upgraded. Skies Descend. Skies Descend. It's, oh, it's Falling Star. Yeah, so I got the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Skies Descend, the upgraded ultimate for the ASOL, which is now ready for APA. So if you can try to force that out, try to put pressure on him before some sort of major fight, it's actually pretty critical because it is very hard to win a 5v5 that isn't just going horribly for the ASOL when he has that thing. It's gonna splash on every single member. That puts Rylai's on you, that puts Leandri's on you. That does lots of damage. Jensen now engaged on by Umpty. They bring in the firepower from the Gangplank Cannon Barrage to guarantee that Jensen gets out, but that's a big cooldown, man. Team Liquid happy to force that one as they continue moving forward, establishing vision lines and controlling the FlyQuest side of the map. Man, they're actually potentially just going to move over towards Baron area and try to claim vision. They can start threatening that because now no GP ulti, no any ulti. That's kind of what makes you scared to start it up is that AoE. Yawn, though, caught out. Yawn gets rooted up by the Senna, but FlyQuest, as soon as they see the TF over their heads, they retreat. They do not want to overcommit. Yeah, nice little collapse there. And that was kind of uh, a... Really uh, Let's see. Here they are. Core JJ goes for a dredge line, but he ain't going to get anything from it just yet. Umpty is off to the side. He was looking to be there to cut off the escape route if that engage worked out. Yeah, nice little shadow there that they try and use, though, to get the surprise. Don't land the hook. Don't get the play. But you still can just go right back to the original plan. Push on your side waves and then keep this pressure on FlyQuest. Continue to get small advantages. Those flashes are gonna come back up though, so FlyQuest are pretty happy. Um, I breathe a sigh of relief that nobody got hooked in in this mid lane attempt at a pick because now once they start to get their flashes back, then they can hope for that big dream team fight again where they get these resets for Inspired, where the Gangplank pops off. Uh, and they just blow up a couple of the early members. And it looks like Bupo is probably just going towards Collector 3rd, so he's going to be on three crit items. He's going to be 16 relatively soon. He is 15. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how close he is actually to getting 16. Let's see. Uh, he's, it's it's going to be a while. Away. Um, but when you get that level three ultimate, plus you have, you know, Death's Daughter, the true damage in the middle, plus you have the triple crit items now done, like one ulti plus that center of the ultimate uh, with a barrel chain can be that's it. Like, that could be your full health bar as a squishy champion. So it does get very, very scary. You can see APA actually uh, picked up the Verdant Barrier. Uh, so working towards that Banshee's Veil, which I think is really smart against this burst comp. Uh-oh. Core JJ getting jumped on there by Inspired. He goes back in for the trench line. Team Liquid loses their support before the fight even really starts. But now Jensen's about to drop the Singularity. They barely keep him alive thanks to Busio. And Inspired gets shot down by Yawn. Whipper wants to get in there, but he can't do any damage with the barrels. Octi drops and Jensen. Jensen's the one dropping him. Team Liquid has lost support and jungler both, and Yawn has no health and no summoner spells. FlyQuest is heading towards the Baron, and it's APA on defense. Oh, Masu actually tagged it too. Autos start going off, taking a little bit of extra damage as we get the reset here. I don't think they want to mess around with this one. That is too much damage. Core JJ, though, he gets caught, flashes out, and then hooks immediately back in on the call for the turn, but is immediately deleted, and it leads to too much.
too much pressure. Here we go. All right, Whippo getting jumped on by Impact with APA right there. Whippo's flash is wasted. That is a huge pick for Team Liquid. Umpty is respawning in three seconds, and Whippo won't come back for another 40. This is just really nice for MTL, and now they're going to, I think, potentially start up the Baron. They saw that Whippo was around. He was trying to play that barrel game with APA, so they call up Impact. They pop the LT. They spot him out. They get that kill. They haven't started it up just yet, but with MT running back out, there is an angle for them to start and potentially look for the turn, so they're going to be hitting it now, and it's going to go down fast to this Varus, this TF, and this Asol. It's so much Baron DPS for TL's side. FlyQuest, you can see they're contemplating making some kind of an approach, but there's just, there's no, just no point in it, man. That Baron is TL's all day. Three and a half thousand gold lead, five kills ahead for Team Liquid. It's such a good lesson, even in LCS finals. Reminder that sometimes it matters even more what you do after the team fight. You know, sticking around, poking the Baron, couple of extra autos, a little bit of extra damage there, then going up to the minion wave and TL take advantage of it. We finally see Impact with a huge Twisted Fate ult to get them the pick that results in Baron. And now the better split push team has the Baron buff to split push with. He annihilates the turret on tower side. Uh, on top side there. A nice little sneaky dragon here from FlyQuest, but they're gonna lose so much of their base. Okay, there's your Gangplank ulti. There's the Dawning Shadow and they immediately kill Umpty before Team Liquid can fight back. Impact wants to make a collapse from the side, but Whippo's fighting him off. The rest of TL disengage, so it's just a single kill going over to FlyQuest, but importantly, it puts the brakes on the TL War Machine. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna slow down that Baron push a little bit at least here. And that is quite nice. Get that kill on the MT. Impact now does have that third item, goes for the Storm Razor. So it's really all about that upfront, that first auto with the Rapid Fire, with the Shiv proc, with the Storm Razor proc, and that gold card, trying to get picks around that. But FlyQuest is going to have a harder and harder time finding the correct target to actually dive on. You know, Yon is going towards wit's end. There's a locket uh, on Core JJ that is going to help him survive. We already have the Banshee's Veil done for APA. Impact, you could probably 100 to 0 him, but like, kind of who cares? He's not really the important member. Uh, it's really tough to, to know which target you're going to have to commit to. Also, since you don't have control of the minions, you aren't going to have control of the vision setup because uh, you always have to play catch up. You have to catch these waves so you don't fall behind the experience in gold. And so that allows uh, the other side to constantly move in and take away the surprise opportunities that you might try and go for. Uh, and on top of that, they've also got a Twisted Fate ultimate that will reveal you, even if you do have a surprise play coming. So. See if FlyQuest can, can actually make it happen here and carve out a comeback play for themselves. Team Liquid, grouped up bottom. There it is, the Ready to push play. towards the tier two. Jensen and Busio having to back away. That tier two is not long for this world. Yon gets rooted, but it's not like there's gonna be any follow-up to it, really. The turret drops, Team Liquid up almost 5,000 gold still. I feel like they do such a good job of checking their vision boxes first. They move in, they get their wards, they pop the Twisted Fate ultimate, they slowly and safely take the tower. And you can see how much range APA has now, you know, on that Q over the wall. He's just spamming the Q out. He has, his singularity takes up about two thirds of the lane at this point. It's so much, It's man. very difficult to actually play around, especially when there's additional poke and whatnot that's gonna be thrown out too. Yeah, and he's got a full two level lead onto Jensen here. Uh, you can see the experience bar, the little uh, purple bar underneath their icons there. He's, he's almost halfway to, to 17 as well. Meanwhile, Jensen here sitting on the Annie has had a pretty rough time. And you can see the same thing is true in bot lane. You know, Jan is, is level 14. He's closing in on 15. He's going to be 15 about the same time as Masu and Busio are actually 13. So uh, they have some major level leads. Umpty, again, going to get locked up. Pops the Counter-Strike. Dredge line from Core ain't going to hit anybody. Reign of Arrows tags inspired by the Chains of Corruption. Don't lock down FlyQuest long enough for Team Liquid to make a follow-up play. FlyQuest, they are praying for the barrel chain to turn it around. Wide Whippo needs to make an appearance here. There aren't too many brushes to hide in, but that is certainly one of them. Only the ones really close to your base, and those are the ones that TL are going to suspect. It's going to be really tough. You can see Impact now has a QSS as well. So really, they're trying to just kind of check off all the boxes. Like, nope, can't one-shot this guy. Nope, can't flash tippers this guy. You know, really making it harder and harder and harder. Uh, Umpty, you know, probably going to be getting something a little bit tanky as his next item. I don't know if he's going to go towards GA or just a full-on tank item. I think either are completely reasonable choices. You just need to make sure that Tibbers engage with Viego doesn't get an instant kill. And if I think yeah. that doesn't happen, it's going to be so hard for FlyQuest to win fights. 
Checking in on the stacks. APA has cleared 300 on the Aurelian just about 30 minutes into the game. Over on the other side, Masu just about to tick 140 on the Senna. So some serious range stacking up for him. <laughs> and we've been talking about this uh -huh. all split long, but he, when he's playing Ziggs, when he is playing Asol, he's so in his comfort zone. Even if you pick him off inside lane, even if you get kills on him early on, he knows how to pilot these champions in the team fights. He knows how to get that damage done. And the record speaks for itself, right? People don't always want to spend the bands because they think, ah, it's not the player we need to worry about or it's not the champion we need to worry about, but he makes people pay for it time and time again. It's the player and the champion combo here. Exactly. APA, quite the specialist, quite the controversial uh, you know, member of the team as well. But I feel like I've seen more and more people actually going to his side after uh, being critics of the trash talking. It's, it's been a bit fun for everybody now. Team Liquid still with control of the whole rift. The next Drake spawns in 30 seconds. Baron also alive in under a minute. TL, the world is theirs. This is their game to lose at this point. APA ready with the skies descend if FlyQuest try to engage on them. And this is just so annoying because even though Impact didn't really do anything in lane, hasn't really done much in this game, he's just nonstop going to be walking down the side lane, pushing it, saying, you got to come or you're going to lose your base. You got to come respond constantly. Where FlyQuest wants to be grouped as five, looking for these fights, you know, getting that one shot, getting that engage, he's just constantly going to draw you down and make someone respond to him. FlyQuest trying to push out down the mid lane here. And once again, it's going to be inspired. Jumping on Core JJ. But he's got to be careful. Impact jumps in the middle of everybody. Core JJ still barely going to stay alive for now. The skies descend, but nobody's dead on FlyQuest just yet. Humpty kills off Quimpo. Inspired. Dying to the breath of light. As Humpty grabs the double kill. And Busio heads for the hills. He tries to escape, but it's Masu about to die next. They can't quite find him. And APA is unstoppable. Masu and Jensen are running the wrong way. And APA is about to show. Oh boy. A double kill for the dragon, and Jensen has nothing to do but wait for his own demise. He'll even waste the teleport trying to get away. A triple for APA, and the game is about to end. TL Split Push eventually gets their victory. They're on to Nexus turrets now, 15 to 6. Impact on the TF top, APA on the Aurelian Soul mid, and Team Liquid is going to match point. Deathless on the signature Aurelian Soul for APA, fully stacked bounty. Team Liquid cruising to another victory here as they move to two and one. APA played a really good game on the ASOL, and another great game here from Umpty on the Jacks, looking strong as TL are looking tough to beat. FlyQuest bounced back in a major way in game two, but game three, again, pretty one-sided. It really only felt like top lane went the way for FlyQuest that yeah. they would have hoped. Whippo got an advantage, was able to, you know, get this bad base timing for impact, you know, created an edge there, but it never amounted to anything because they're on the back foot so heavily, they couldn't really find the angles to get those fights that they were looking for. And he was kind of tracked in every single team fight. And when you have a split push advantage like that and they keep on using it, that's where these level leads come from. That's where multiple roles have two level leads. And then they're eventually able to push the minions on the side so that you have to go for an engage. You can see the pressure before this game or before this play right here. They're like, oh my God, FlyQuest, we have to go for something. That's when the trap closes for TL. Impact, he teleports in with his ulti. He has his double summoner spells plus his QSS to make sure that he is able to get out and TL are able to chase down all of them. And to me, it's just so much about how MT and APA zero out Whipple in that fight. He's the strong member. They immediately go for him. They fly in on top and they drop the singularity. He's on the run right off the bat. Has no opportunity to be able to actually find any sort of a barrel combo. And they hope Team Liquid moves to match point and we're heading on over to the LCS lounge to break it down. Welcome back to the lounge. Uh, Team Liquid up 2 1. One more game would give them their first title since 2019. Wow. Mm -hmm. Two, what? This is where we sit. That's crazy. That's you never were, happened you before. You were the right? only never, TL believer. Never once. Uh, me and Miss Chim Chim both yeah. said TL 3 2. But you never know. So much can still happen. Let's take a look back at how we got here all the way back to game one, which is about two and a half hours ago. It's been, you know, looking back, Team Liquid was in a, a huge control of, of game one. Yeah. Ben definitely had an, uh, an aneurysm looking at the draft. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think game almost lost in draft, but this game was not lost in draft. Yes. 
Well, the game three, yes, it wasn't lost in draft. I mean, what stood out to you, Sven, this series? Like, why do you think TL would be uh, one game away from the title? I think the games fly drafts correct around ball lane, they win, and I guess they don't, they lose. I feel like it's weird that they don't, they, they, they ban Smolder to give Jan a champ that is not only better in the mm. playoffs, but also a better champ for him. Yeah. When they could have counterpicked Senna into Smolder and actually had lane pressure and scale well as well. Yeah. When, and then they, they gave Varus, they get stomped in lane the whole game, that tower, mm -hmm. then Masu roams and Busu gets dove, but Masu gets nothing done, top side either. So like, what's the point of picking this champ if you don't know how to play it? Yeah, it's clear that they don't like the Senna side of Senna Smolder. Yeah. 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 And that was evident across yeah. the game one to the game three draft because Smolder was locked and they picked Kai'Sa in game one. And that's yeah. that's paying off later in the series. Also, weirdly, you know, they missed a ban that in was game crazy. three. Yeah. That's so, that was also Masu's ban. So play Masu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The rookies are choking. Or if anyone that's yapping, if they, people are just like, oh, ban, good, they no ban. <laughs> I will say, Fly losing. Oh, this is the post-game breakdown of the most recent game, not the game yeah. you just saw the highlights of. APA, 25,000 damage there. Oh, yeah. It's actually wild how much it looks like it was one-sided from just the goal difference over time, but it didn't feel like that at all. Oh, why are we drawing this again? Oh, game two. this is intro game two highlights. We're talking about we. I was like, no. We. I can't I draw like, like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I feel like. TL, so the really interesting thing is when these two teams faced off against each other last time, mm -hmm. it felt like even in the TL wins, FlyQuest was the team that had a little bit more tempo on the map. They were taking a little bit more initiative. Mm -hmm. In this series now with these two teams playing each other again, it kind of feels like TL are in that position, right? Because they did have some good positions from which they could have won in game two as well. Yeah, yeah I agree. This, this right here even, uh, <laughs> was a bit of a wild sequence that FlyQuest did bounce back from. They, I mean, I'd say game two was obviously the only game they won, but they had that 2v2 where they burned both flashes and didn't get the kill. Yep. Then they had this Baron, which got stolen away with the Kalista yeah. Lee Sin combo, yet they still triumphed in the game. And the replay starts like pretty late because a lot of the times it looked like they were still looking for a hook. They didn't want to make it a 50-50, yeah. <laughs> but Varus was playing in such a way that like he couldn't really hook him. He hooked him into a terrain, so he wasn't displaced. There's a lot that happened in those fights. and. Going from game two to game three, they were just bloody. And it felt like any of these games can tell just off of one misplay from either team, which is fun for a spectator. I am sure stressful as hell for the coaches. Yeah, so through two <laughs> games, <laughs> we had a lot of combined kills per minute. Man, 33 versus 32. Oh, this would be comparing the game, first game series. Game one and game two. Oh, this games. game one and game two, I yeah. just heard. Yeah. yeah, this game one and game two, which is, I mean, I feel like game two carried that quite heavily. Yeah, this game kind of slowed it down, you know? It, it was still it really did. scrappy, but in terms of, like, combined kills per minute. And it, it felt like the, the, the switch flipped really quickly. There were a lot of blunders, as you mentioned, like, this play is happening top lane. Don't look at mid lane oh, at no. all. Don't look yeah. at mid lane at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as Aurelian as Soul gets the most Mickey Mouse kill mid lane. Uh, <laughs> So like a lot of that happened early yeah. on. Yeah. But then it, the game pace sped up. I also feel like this game against FlyQuest mismatched their draft. They're playing this like kite back bottom lane and top lane, but they're playing a full scent mid jungle. Yeah. Terrible. Why wouldn't you pick the Nautilus <laughs> with the center if you're gonna play a Diego any type of team comp? Yeah. And absolutely, yeah. especially and then, and then when top. especially when Masu was spending a bunch of time top lane in this game yeah. and yeah. driving the and I will say, they probably got caught off guard by Impact, TF, Blind Pick. Yeah. But they're like, uh, wait, but what do you want? GB! Uh, GB! from the yellow! And then they're like, okay, whatever. But and it, I mean, there were times when it looked like GP absolutely was, yeah. like, it was a good answer, right? Like, we were watching these late game team fights, and it's like, if they don't kill the GP soon, he just the takes one. over. Umpty yeah. gets the flank. Found him. Umpty just mauls him. Oh, yeah. Umpty's <laughs> flank is actually crazy. <laughs> Umpty MS Jax has been great. Yeah. He's had some off. really good jungle jacks games. I want to take him off the jacks. I mean, but what do you do? Because they're so hamstrung with their bot lane bans. It feels like umpty APA are kind of getting whatever they want. They're just, and also like if you're not able to punish APA just picking a soul, yeah. yeah, that's trouble. I do think the uh, the ban from FlyQuest, I'm sorry, TL on blue side, banning Renekton, forcing TL. And really quick, the ban from really, really quick here, this is, their playoff so far. The first series was 3-2 to FlyQuest. This series currently 2-1 to Team Liquid. And these are team stats. So just such a close 
series. Yeah. Slight advantage early game to fly quests throughout everything. Pretty much just I, the fact that there's 300 and oh, no. 20 kills in eight games. And let's just touch back on Core JJ now because he's one game away from winning another title. And his time. For cursing CL, him? He won the yeah. two oh, titles. No. Oh no. And he ha he's finished second here in the Greek theater to Sven. That's my head in the background. Don't worry about that. Uh, in 22, their best finish was, was third place. Last year, again, their best finish was third place. Now one game away. They need to win one of the next two to get the title. So you're saying with the championships that started his career in LCS, it started with success. Oh, no. Oh, no. It did Dad, start with success Dad in the LCS. It did start with yeah. success. The last time I tried to pull this off, it failed. So Maybe it's an impact thing. Maybe it's an impact. No impact, thing. no win. Oh, maybe that was true for EG. We talk about Code J all the time. What about impact? Maybe he's the difference maker. His tank TF, <laughs> the QSS Tabby's TF. I mean, what's interesting is Whippo has not looked nearly as good in this series as he has in the playoffs, and at least some of that has to be attributed to impact's play. Yeah, I also think fly, TL is drafting very well around it, mm -hmm. banning mm -hmm. Renekton, picking Cassante when they can, forcing them to ban it. And then by picking something that he wasn't ready for. Yeah. So I just heard FlyQuest as the losers of game three get to select side. They've picked blue side for game <laughs> what four. A surprise. And Team Liquid is one game away from winning their first LCS title since 2019. Find out if they can bring it home after the break. Stop cursing them. <laughs> That's just how you <laughs> talk. <laughs> Stop it. Jet. Oh, we'll focus here. It's hard to fight the Drake. They're going in. Ace, so we're going. Look. Yeah, I'm flushing out. Oh, no, it should be a good fight. I missed ult. Look, J J he flushed him. I can't eat you. I'm coming to reposition. Coming I, need, I, need, I need help, I need help. You don't have eat or? I do. Uh, you're just not dying. Okay, no, no flush DF. Can we hit DF together or not? DF, no flush, DF, no flush. Annie, look here, look here. I'm, I'm kind of out of oh, barrels. Out, they're they're so low. Just run, 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 run. I missed every barrel. Sorry, bro. Yeah, let's just chill. Yeah, I agree. For flashes. Just uh, wait on my item, and if I don't carry, just report me. Yep. I can carry too. It's okay. No, no, I'm just saying, like, yeah, I, yeah. I just want to be nine in this game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's not keep more. We gave a little okay, bit of Oh, no, 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 no. I'm it's good, 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 good. Watch it. Slowly, okay? Yeah. Guys, I want you to stand Throw, throw, throw. I'm up. 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 I'm good. I'm good. Big on the flash. Big on the flash. Big in, big in, big in. Big in, big in, big in, big in. Yeah, I know. End the game. I'm watching. Yeah, I'm. Good job, Impact. Yeah, it's not over yet, guys. Yeah, not over, yeah. not over. Yeah, not over. Yeah, I'm good in there. I can't see it. No, I killed them all, don't worry. Yeah, TP, TP, TP. Now, TP, I'm going to go. We're ending here. We're ending here. Give me the kill. I want one kill. Yummy! Nice job. Good job, guys. Good job, Ian. Nice carry. Yep. Nice carry.
처음 우승할 때 많이 긴장해가지고 좀잘그 정도로 우승할 자격이 있을 정도 잘했다고 생각 안 했었거든요. 그 이후로 좀 이제 많이 좀 내려놨다. 약간 좀 너무 신경 많이 쓰고 그러면 오히려 더 못해질 수도 있는 것 같아서 긴장하기 때문에 그냥 편한 대로 하고 있어요. 그냥 잘하면 이긴다. 이런 느낌으로 하고 있기 때문에 그냥 잘해지려고 더 노력을 하는 것 같아요. 팀에 기대해서 지금. Welcome back to the Spring Split Finals. Team Liquid up 2-1. The last time Team Liquid was up 2-1 in the finals <laughs> was 2021 Spring. And Sven, you were playing against Team Liquid and, and were able to, to come back. Is there any commonalities you have uh, when you're down 1-2 or if you're up 2-1 to actually close in on a title? No. It's, it's all on the individuals to how they deal with losses and how they analyze what went wrong and what to fix for the next couple of games. I think that FICOS has enough veterans in their team, topside, and on their coaching staff to keep it together. And if the rookies aren't handling it well, then mm -hmm. calm them down and give them something easy to play next game. Yeah. If you're down 0 2, it's full comfort time. Mm -hmm. play exactly your best champion, your most comfortable champion. Doesn't matter the matchup, doesn't matter the game, just full comfort. But if you're up 2-1 for Team Liquid, is there any difference in the approach? I imagine you kind of want to keep doing what you've been doing. Yeah, TL is on the side they lost on the last time. Mm -hmm. So it's important that Fly wants to do the same thing they did in the first game, with small changes like banging the ASOL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While TL has banned Renata this time, so they're saying that they can win the Callista matchup. I'm guessing TL wants to play a melee support this game, like mm -hmm. Nautilus. Instead of picking the Tom Kench, there it is. And there it is. Yep. So they're banning the Renata for that purpose. So they're saying they're better in this matchup if they have Nautilus. I also think this backs up something that we were talking about, about like, oh, what do TL need to correct after they did lose game two, which is like, I don't feel like they think they have much yeah. that they can correct, right? Like they're perfectly fine taking the VAR side of the Callista Varus trade, and then it's just down to execution. Yeah, and you see the small tweaks throughout the series, like the Volibear ban, the A-Soul ban, mm -hmm. and the ban towards Whipple here with Nerexton. It's like they learned, okay, oh, we learned a lesson from the first couple of games, we don't need to go over this again. And Whippo's Renekton in teamfights was a massive part of that. Yeah, yeah. And then, oh, we actually have a bucket head. <laughs> we actually have a bucket head. Also, by far the best counter to Impact's best champion, Cassante. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got a bucket chan in the crowd. Oh my god. That is pretty insane. <laughs> we should see a Bear's pick here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You don't want to drop AD. In yeah. Bot all. lane has dominated the fi first phase of these draft phases. Yeah. Yeah. And Teal has kept their Talia first phase pick as well. The Jensen takeaway. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I'd say Jensen's Annie has looked pretty good the I whole agree. series. Yeah. And this time they will not be guaranteed counter pick for Whippo, which I think is interesting. Yeah. That they actually did decide to go blue side. It kind of says that they're even more, they care even more about bot lane yeah. cryo than they do about Whippo having uh, pick advantage. And that could also be based off the last game. I really yeah, think it was interesting yeah. hearing some of the comms as we went to break, where he was like, uh, wait for my item. If I don't carry, report me. Yeah. After yeah. fighting, yeah. Yeah. sorry, my bad guys. I just missed a lot of barrels. Yeah. Like, I think Whippo really thought he was going to be able to carry that mm -hmm. game and didn't. So that, I think there's a chance he's taking a little bit of a step back this game and giving a bit more agency to his bot lane. I do like the Twisted Fate ban only because there were moments when he was trying to, uh, you know, clear waves on sides and just getting caught out. There was that one timer mm -hmm. in which that made it really difficult. Um, going into this game, I, it's interesting. Jungle being thrown into 4-5. Like, I think you have to ban the Jax with how well he's been performing I agree. the last two yeah. games. Mm. There's no way you let the Jax through. It I'd much rather see him play, uh, you play against a, a Sejuani than the It Jax isn't as good this game as it was in the last game. Yeah. I mean, on okay, so they've already been yeah, bear. That's yep, Jax. Right. Jax yeah. I wonder what Busio is going to play. Alistar's banned. He could go for something like the Rail, but it's not very good against the Talia or Nautilus. He could go for something like the Rumble if he's feeling it. I mean, I don't know. Mm. It's a bit of a tough spot to be in for him. And if the Rail gets taken away, then he's like, yeah. now it's like in the owner territory. If you yeah. want another champion, we need to tank this game. They can't pick a, a range champ this game. I don't like it this game, but is there any world in which you'd pick the, you'd flex the Annie to support? This, this Not against Nautilus. Like this game, yeah, this game I wouldn't <laughs> like it. But. Annie also got nerfed support a lot where they nerfed her E shield and gave it to like her damage ratios. I guess the rail is just unplayable against Talia and Poppy. 
Olaf is good, yeah. power. I like that. Olaf blind top. Olaf and it is, is Rumble. I knew it. Oh, Nailed oh. it. We got it. Oh, he said he'd play it. No matter what. Uh, yep. <laughs> I like that. I think it's good yeah. that Fly is putting Jensen, a more veteran player, on the engage champs and Waypoint and Inspire on the front line and giving Busio the room to do his thing. Mm. This is the one thing that makes him better than other people in the LCS is that he has those champions up his sleeve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm very surprised that Impact gets this champion on last pick though. Yeah, but that that's, feels... that's the cost of... I, I, clearly they thought that TF was a big enough of a problem last game. TF and Jax took up the ban slots. I will say is he is self-counting himself though. He did. People yeah. pick Olaf into Kassante, yeah. and Olaf is very good against every champ in the AM team. So people can definitely have that kind of impact that we've seen from him in the playoffs. Seems like they wanted yeah. to just have a front line, and it would have all been bad versus the Olaf pick. So I think the Olaf line is just a great headshot. Yeah, I, I just hope we see a lot of kills in this This game. is both teams drafting how I think they should be drafting. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of draft that I think both teams did well. Sort of, right? Yeah. Given, given yeah. What, what they have. Yeah. So this is a good draft from both teams, I think. All right, fair enough. It's all about who plays better. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Lounge. Welcome back, everybody. Team Liquid is on match point. It's do or die for FlyQuest. And their answer, with their backs against the wall, they're letting Busio cook here with the support rumble. They've got Whippo and the Olaf inspired back on that Lee Sin that he's been popping off with. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting game. It's all or nothing here for FlyQuest. They are up against it. they got to win back to back. And they're doing it with just an absolute crazy comp. Full on, run at you, run over you. We'll see if they're gonna be able to make it happen. All right, Karia won with it, the support rumble. Can Busio replicate here? Honestly, as far as the, the comps overall are looking to me, this is reminiscent of the game that FlyQuest won. I think, you know, playing into three Team Liquid tanks with a lot of playmaking options. Again, Inspired got his lease in. Uh, I actually think that FlyQuest here have set themselves up with a very good chance to push us to a game five. I agree. I mean, there's no Tom, Tom Kench as well to save the Varus or anything like that. This is only the second time we've had a Rumble support in the LCS ever. The last time was Zazel back in, it was 2020, I believe, 2020 or 2021 that he actually played uh, the, the support Rumble. It was 2020. So not exactly a common pick. You like no. said, though, Carrier has played it. And uh, we'll see if he can make it work here because Rumble, even just the base damage, like level six, you overheat, you have Ignite, your damage is crazy. We've already mentioned no Tom Kench to save the Varus. There is no cleanse to save the Varus. If Jensen wants to flash ult, stun this guy, he is toast. Worth pointing out, one thing that's different from a lot of the previous games, Whippo here running the flash and ghost on Olaf, so some extra map presence is not going to be there compared to the normal expectation of the double teleports in solo lane. Yeah, you know what's going to be there? He's like, I am 1v9 in this game. I am actually 1v9 in this game. I can carry with double uh, mobility summoner spells. Analyst S was kind of touching on it, but an Olaf runs through this game. And we'll have to see, you know, if he can actually make that happen. Because if you get behind, it can go bad really, really fast. And FlyQuest doing the level one invade with the Olaf here. Uh, they spot Umti on Raptors. They're gonna push him out. Impact is roamed all the way down as well. And APA could get over here first, but it's just gonna end up being some wasted time for TL because Impact walks all the way down. Will he miss the top minions? That's what I want to see now. Is he actually gonna miss the experience? Uh, Bwipo should get there in time. Regardless, it's huge. He's ghosting for the XP, by yes. the way. Run, Olaf. Regardless, it's going to be huge for jungle. Uh, Inspired's able to push Umpty to the bottom side and then cross through mid lane mm -hmm. to go Raptors, Raptors here. Uh, so it's going to be a nice lead for jungle as well. And that can set you up to win 2v2s on top side. And if you can get your, your top side jungle ahead in Poppy an going. Olaf matchup. Poppy doesn't realize that he crossed back for Raptors. Poppy's trying to invade enemy Raptors. Did he not go or, through the mid lane uh, minions? Maybe it's not invade enemy raptors at all. Maybe this is the great bamboozling, and he's just going to try to steal the red. But wait, okay. Inspired well, we'll doesn't see. have smite. Inspired does not have smite. Okay. He knows that Inspired used smite. It's going to take forever though. If the bot lane comes, like, I guess we'll see. No, Poppy's still burning it down. Sonic wave. Hits Umpty. APA is waiting over the wall. Umpty secures the red buff, but now Jensen's coming in too. Inspired with only 400 HP. Umpty singing the same song. Sonic Wave. Resonating striking coming through with the step down. Presence is first blood. Oh, Jensen. Inspired lives. APA tries to flash in. He throws another rock and he'll get the kill. But surely he drops to Jensen here. APA, no help, no mana, no way out. FlyQuest up two to one. Man, that invade was crazy for Umpty. I'm not going to lie. Level two, you're going to go for that invade it's gonna take so long they do get the red buff but they lose out big time in the ensuing play and he's still just on two camps he's not even level three 
Emily Rand he's says, dead. He's oh my dead. gosh, he's no! dead. What are you doing? Oh. Okay, he survived. He survived with a W. He flashes in the way. <laughs> Woodrow wants to turn it back on impact. Now Here running down into the river. <laughs> Up, he's ready to join him. Undertow hits impact. I can't catch Whippo him. is still he's just running. He's got no W yet. Inspired no speed. Ready to. Okay, Whippo <laughs> is up to, okay, okay. He's, uh, all right, all right. He's still level okay. two, he has no W for the speed to get him rage for his auto. This game is delivering. Umpty didn't kill the last mini crump. So it actually, he didn't get level three as a result of it. He missed out on the last mini Krug. He walked away from it, thought his, jung his, his jungle pet was gonna finish it off. So he's still level two, by the way, at four minutes, and Inspired is gonna invade him. Jungle pet only bites him twice. You gotta hit him again if you want more bites. And Inspired wants to take another bite out of these chickens. Umpty will try to challenge for it. He'll hit level three there at least. And now Inspired will lose out on the large chicken as well. APA with a nice seismic shove on Jensen. He trades back on the back into that there as Inspired will finally be forced out of the jungle here. The point I was gonna make before top lane turned crazy like it was, Emily always says, Umpty's gonna invade your jungle before three minute mark. I wanna look at the minions on top lane though, cause you can see in the mini map, that was a big old wave and that is right in front of Impact's tower. So uh, even though Whippo did not go down in Umpty that- has no spite, use the Raptors. Okay, he's already popped the steadfast presence. Inspired steals away the red. The jungle battle is insane in game number four. Yeah, both of them knowing that the other one used their uh, smites earlier, they're gonna go for the dive. It's the Hex Flash from Umpty. Jensen stuck underneath the turret. He doesn't have any way to fight back and Inspired jumps in, but it's too little too late. Core JJ jumping in next. He's ready to join up. Inspired barely misses the kill on Umpty. He's got him down to 50 HP. APA, nice seismic shove. Core flashing over the wall for the dredge line, the riptide, the lockdown, the explode. Team Liquid takes the lead. Five minutes, five kills, baby. We got action on a repeat jungle invade. And Core JJ's jealous. He wanted a piece. Now Yawn is left alone. This is a big wave. If this dive works out, Yawn's gonna lose on a lot. It'll be a one for one trade, but Masu gets the kill. Yeah, that's still worth it there for Fly because of all the minions that you talked about. And Busio doesn't waste his flash. He just uses the Ignite and they get that kill. They deny some CS. They punish the roam a little bit there from Core, but not the end of the world for TL because Yon does get the kill back and he's gonna be going for that lethality build. But this game is just insanity and this is bringing me back to the previous series these guys had. This is so fun. And we set records last time around, looking for it this time. This is feeling a lot like game number two. That game we had six kills in six minutes. This time it's seven kills in six minutes. Last game only one kill by 10 minutes. Game number three was a little bit of an outlier there as FlyQuest have Busio rotated up into the top half of the map to make sure that in is protected as he takes these first three Void Grunts. Yeah, and they also need to really cover Whippo on this crashing wave uh, because he, the wave was so bad after he actually died, and this massive wave has been stacked up here from Impact. You have got to be able to farm that. We know, of course, the jungler is on the other side of the map, so he's always going to be safe, but you want to be up there to cover. All right, Masu's under tower here, so I think Team Liquid are going to be able to try and burn this one down, but Inspired's coming, and he stole a dragon before with Lee Sin quite easily in the face of Umpty. Definitely has a QQ burst damage. He wants it. Umpty's ready with the steadfast presence. Inspired jumps into the pit. The Drake goes over to Inspired. FlyQuest bringing up the rumble. Masu's ready to go. Jensen gets the kill on Umpty. It's the Drake. It's the kill. It's the crab. It's the whole damn thing for FlyQuest. That is pain for Team Liquid. Thank you for the leash and the extra kill on the jungler after they already take it. Absolutely brutal hill. Fly quest wanna hear silver scrapes. Man, Umpty's having a rough start to this one, I'm not gonna lie. Loses the Raptors, invades, dies, goes top, didn't finish off the Krugs, stuck level two. Whippo might have to pop the ulti here in defense, but is feeling comfortable to sit through it. Yep, Ghost instead. So that one's gonna get him away, but he's definitely not in much shape for fighting. He heads into the topside river looking for some fruits, but Umpty's ready to answer him. Whippo, he goes CC immune. He wants to eat the honey fruits. It'll be a 1v2 and Impact will help Umpty smack him down. Yeah, pretty good for him getting back in, but now Inspired knows jungle's on topside, so he's going. It's another massive minion wave and Inspired is ready to deny it to Yawn. Busio may again be the sacrificial lamb, but this time, Callista's ready with a save. Fly quest, kill them both, and don't lose anybody. Perfectly executed dive there. Look at the health bars on Busio and Masu. Tanked up the exact amount that they could. 
and they make it look easy. 11 kills at eight minutes. We're ahead of pace, boys. This is action-packed League of Legends right here. And they keep on. Every time a jungler shows, you immediately get the opposite side play, going for these tower dives, willing to sacrifice themselves. But the health management on that last uh, tower dive was so good mm -hmm. uh, with the timing for the ult there and then going right back in. I gotta say, Impact has really been getting the, the better end of that top lane matchup throughout this series. It feels like you know these these picks largely had not been working out. The kind of spicy picks, the gangplank did well, uh, but the Urgot didn't really work out. The Olaf is quite behind. It feels like on the back end of this as well. So we'll see if he can get out here. Yeah, Umpty wants Whippo here again. Impact goes all out. Whippo, he'll try to run up into the brushes, see if he can juke him away. He flashes brush to brush and escapes the game. Yeah, he lives this time. I think the biggest takeaway from the early action, though, is the CS on bottom lane because it keeps resulting in FlyQuest dives on bottom lane. The kills are pretty even, but FlyQuest keeps on getting all these big minions up to the tower that keep dying. This CS lead is going to grow even more because they have a double, triple stacked wave here, actually, on bottom side. So Masu is going to be huge for this team. The rookie for FlyQuest in his first finals up on stage with all these veterans and now put in position where this Kalista, this champion so sought after for the early stages, is going to be very fed and very ahead. We have to see. It looked like they spotted the jungle pet there. Inspired coming around, there was pings. Oh, APA immediately flashing back underneath the turret. He knows that Inspired would be ready to kick him into Jensen's waiting arms if he doesn't. Yeah, I'm not sure if they just anticipated that because on the Observer Client, it looked like you could only see the jungle pet. But I don't think you're supposed to be able to see the jungle pet if you can't see the jungler. Um, so I don't know if that was just an Observer bug, but there were pings up there. So maybe Lee Sin just was shown, or maybe they just anticipated it. Either way, APA does survive with his flash. We also have to see, you know, can Masu convert an early game Kalista lead into a win? Because right. we have seen throughout playoffs a number of times, you know, they get these advantages on the Kalista, but you're playing against Talia, you're playing against Poppy, you're playing against Nautilus, all these champions that can be really difficult for you to deal with. You know, does that lead really amount to as much as we would hope it would? Bottom side, Yon and Core still just trying to make up for all these minions they've lost. Yon is going to freeze this wave close to the turret. He wants to get every little bit of farm that he can. 69 versus 91 is not where you want to be. Only 10 and a half minutes into the game. It is nearly a 2,000 gold lead for FlyQuest. They got the first three grubs and the first Drake thanks to that steal. Oh, baby. We're in for a good one. Inspired went for the Eclipse lease in. This is the snowball. This is the take the damage to them. Not going for the Sundered Sky Rush, going for the Eclipse. He's got the early damage boost and early power spike. Now I want to see them use it. They're actually all around mid, but there's so many wards here. Busio clearing out a ward, uh, Inspired actually coming down, and it's costing them on bottom side. This is allowing Yawn to get back into the game. Yawn here on the Varus, who needed a lot of help, just got a bunch of it there. Well, a all turret plate. Here now too. Yeah. And Whippo's even running down there, trying to maybe potentially look for something. That ward over the wall that spots out Umpty is going to let FlyQuest know. Exactly Problem is, on. Jensen uses teleport, and so Impact has teleport advantage from top side of the map now with that swap. Okay, so now we're going to get a pro view of this escape. This is the view from Umpty's <laughs> eyes, and you can see how confusing it can look with those brush-to-brush -brush flashes. That is why players can look a little foolish at times. You step the wrong way. It's so easy watching on Spectator to know what happened. Yeah. But from those moments, it basically looks like he just disappeared, and then he came out of the bush below you. And with Team Liquid investing in the bottom side presence to try to keep Yawn back in the game. Hold on now, APA going after Busio. But this is one of the big strengths of Kalista. You just mm -hmm. saved the support. And meanwhile, Inspired is up, grabbing that second set of grubs at the same time. And every time you make a bot side play like that, opportunity cost is top side. The grubs are going over, like you say, hey, Tibbers is doing some work on impact. Uh, I just I just really like this when they actually swap this around as got lane. Yeah, we've got another engage coming out this time. There's no way to save Busio's life. He tries to bring core with him with the overheated flame spitter plus ignite, but he would have needed about a hundred more damage. Now Masu still trying to stand and farm here underneath the turret, and Yon and Umpty will not be able to kill him. Yeah, well done there. Gonna be able to use that heal from Yon to save him. But this is again, it's gonna be early armor stack from impact because he's up against this Whippo Olaf, and then you just move the Annie into that lane where all of a sudden you have uh, armor and you have a sheen and that does nothing really for you against that Annie.
Yawn now has the record, passing up FBI for most kills in an LCS playoffs. He passed up the previous that one that was crazy. 115. This guy has been absolutely stepping up for Team Liquid over these past few weeks. We've been talking so much, never mind. Hold on now, Busio. Ooh, that uh, that dredge line was scary, man. Yeah, we've been talking so much about the transformation of Team Liquid from regular season to playoffs, and a lot of it was from this bottom lane. The bottom lane of TL getting so many accolades uh, and positive remarks from other players of other teams really complimenting them. And it's nice to see this finally come to stage because we have heard those behind the scenes for years now, how good they were in scrims, uh, at international events even, the scrim talk uh, for Jan was, was very complimentary, but really doing it on stage as well. Absolutely, and I mean, there's just a lot of kind of promising young players in this matchup, obviously. Uh oh, did we just cast or curse him? All right, Jan yeah. gets away with a flash. He has he has had some blunders as well. The This one, not too bad, uh, flashes away. Bottom side, they're still gonna be able to get the dragon here, but nice efficient little gank there to get a key summoner spell. Yep, that dragon will go for free over to Team Liquid. Callista was back in the base. Masu purchasing that completed Blade of the Ruined King meant that FlyQuest was not in any position to fight for that second Drake. And Inspired reinvading here on the Raptors, trying to take these away. It does not have a smite, so he's just going to kick MT out, but doesn't look like he actually secured the big Raptor there. I think it's still alive. Uh, so that will reset, but they have taken all six grubs on top side. So it is a dragon apiece, but six grubs the way of FlyQuest. So if they can get push in these lanes, that can always be so threatening. And Inspired is so much stronger than Umpty right now. Even though they are both level eight, Inspired is close to level nine. He's up 30 farm. The completed Eclipse that you guys already talked about a couple minutes ago, that's up against a Bami Cinder and a Ruby Crystal. Yeah, I mean, sometimes Jungle XP literally makes no sense to me, where it's like, you're 30 CS up, how are you the same level? Uh, it's not even a, a full level ahead, he's about half a level up. Um, but Busio moving up towards top side with Masu, trying to cover this Rift Herald play. Uh, they do have a little bit of chip damage down on this tower, a little bit less uh, than half of that turret has been done to it. But with that Herald there, it'd be an easy grab for first turret if they want to go for it. Plus, with six grubs, if you decide to drive the car yourself, that thing is going to have so many Void Mites pop out of it, as Impact and Core JJ will be the defenders of the Tier 1 up in the top lane. The FlyQuest Gold Lead has stagnated around 2,000 here for a few minutes now. So for Team Liquid, a good sign. For FlyQuest, yeah, it feels good to be this far ahead, but as time marches forward, that's going to mean less and less. So I'm looking to see if they can blow this lead up even further as we break into the mid game. And I think they're actually pretty confident in their scaling as well as time does march forward, especially Blipple on this Olaf. You know, he specifically talked about how he views it so much more as a bit of a scaling multiple item uh, champion here. And when you're faced with a, a bunch of tanks like this, uh, I think he's pretty happy with the amount of pressure that has been focused on him. He's actually still, because of the CS uh, gold ahead of impact, uh, Impact not getting the actual kill credit on the kill that they got up there. And, you know, once you once you get multiple items coming in here for the Olaf, then gets the really scary part. And he does have all the components for his Strybreaker already, so he is going to be completing that pretty quickly. The Strybreaker slow, still good. Obviously, it's not the old dash that it used to be, but the stats yeah. are strong, and um, it does really help you when you're running down champions. Plus, the fact that it's a Tiamat item now, combined with his natural pushing capability, you just yeah. insta-clear all the waves. And that wave will get shoved up by APA. Back up in the top lane, it's Jensen versus Impact. Impact goes all out, and Jensen's just trying to get away, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Nice stun. Impact goes in with the Pathmaker for the flash out from Jensen to escape the knockback. Means he lives. Good pressure, though, from Impact there. So it's a trade of ulties. You use your Ghost, and you get his flash. That's always going to be beneficial. Lower cooldown, of course on that ghost. Impact putting the pressure on, but now it's a TP back from Jensen, which is gonna mean Impact has to leave. Yep, meanwhile, bottom side, Score JJ trying to lead the charge up against Whippo's Olaf. They forced the Ragnarok out of him there as the dredge line would have sealed his fate otherwise. Gives APA enough time to burn down the turret, pick that one up for themselves. First turret of the game going over to TL, trying to equalize some of that gold, but Jensen's about to get the same thing back up in the top lane. Yeah, on the left side of stream, we saw that Busio roamed up and actually pushed Impact back, so it made him cancel his base. He couldn't actually stop base, TP back to defend that tier one because he gets shoved all the way back by that rumble. They get two charges on that tower as well well tier one and the tier two so the tier two is going to be chunked out quite nicely some pretty good value there from the rift herald Ooh, apa there's no one else with him i don't know yeah, yeah i mean he just knocks inspired around a little bit okay it's a chunk but without any backup it's not a kill not could it 
It's going to be interesting to watch, though, how they how they play when it spreads out so much with APA on this Talia being able to have a long lane to push in and then look for his his roams. Yeah. See if they can actually... Oh, Core wanting to go in there with the dredge line as Inspired re-engages on him, but now he's still stuck in the front. He flashes under the way of the piercing arrow, but this time it's Umpty ready to cut him off. Impact grabs the kill, but the Equalizer drops in over the top. Jensen doesn't have the damage, and APA is going to grab a shutdown. Team Liquid finding money in the enemy jungle. As soon as we mentioned it, they find the pick in the map right here, spread out, and Team Liquid, they don't lose anyone in the process. Two big kills. Yeah, that is really big. Taking down Inspired there. He took the Q back in to actually dodge the seismic shove from APA, which was yeah. going to connect over the wall. So that's why he goes back in. He just realized, you know what? There's no way out here for me. Uh, tries to turn it around and see if they can find some sort of an angle for a kill. And Busio had the perfect equalizer, but there's just no one really there to capitalize on it. It's also support rumble, right? It's not going to be those equalizer damage levels that you expect from a solo lane rumble. He still doesn't have the first item fully completed, so it's not going to break the entire fight all on its own. But with that Zax Zax, with the tier two boots, when he gets his Leandries online, it's gonna be a lot of damage. You know, yes, it is not that solo lane rumble, but especially earlier on in the game, because you get that initial injection of so much gold, it's gonna be a real threat. Okay, Whippo pops the ghost. Ragnarok now too, he's stuck in a 1v3. Usually these don't go too well. Undertow flies out to slow him down. Whippo escapes. Piercing Arrow ain't gonna finish him off. Yeah, without Yawn there at the start, they just don't have the damage to actually burst through him because you have a Lethality Varus and then you have APA on the Talia. That's basically all your damage, so. But right before an objective, you know, an Olaf with no ultimate is not capable of fighting, uh, especially a team with so much CC, so. By blowing the ulti, by blowing the ghost, they earn themselves dragon number two. And I really like how TL is actually playing around Whippo. You're seeing Core constantly hook in on him, and then as soon as he forces out the cooldown, as soon as he forces the Ragnarok, all right, that's it, back it up. Because as you say, Kobe, it's like, that's the one fight. You don't actually have to kill him to win the fight. No ulti, no ghost, he can't participate. So that is enough. And the way that Olaf really takes over is when you overestimate your damage, he survives, he pops a W, and he can run through these fights. Victory through attrition here. Small cooldown victories win to uh, lead to objective cooldown victories. Now though, moving in, Busio is able to get that ward up behind Baron and the ever living ward uh, and war over these Raptors that has occurred this game. <laughs> this time around goes to Umpty, uncontested for Umpty's now. He's in trouble though. He's gonna try to get away, but the CC <laughs> is too much. Masu gets the kill credit, enemy jungler down for 30 seconds. It's been foretold. If a Raptor dies, a jungler has to die. Goes down now. Inspired gonna be able to come over with the rest of the squad. Jensen immediately dropping that Tibbers out of their uh, control ward here in the sideline brush. And that's gonna be enough to They're at least bait for Baron. They're starting it. They're already hitting it, I think. They want to go after it. They're daring Team Liquid to come and stop them. They know that Umpty's still dead for another 10 seconds, but this Baron take is slow. APA is going to try to poke at him a little bit here. Busio running interference as the top laners scrap back and forth in the mid lane. Baron still at over 8,000 health. It is not dropping quickly. You know that they want to make sure they get this smite rend combo correctly. They've already used the Ragnarok from Whippo's Olaf. FlyQuest still trying to burn the Baron down, but Busio's been killed. FlyQuest are forced away. The objective still got 3k HP. Inspires barely alive. The Reign of Arrows. Yon gets him with the auto attack. Fly Quest crumbles. Team Liquid just got gifted Baron control. Thanks for the leash, Fly Quest. As they hard commit to that, they took so long to start it up as well that Umpty has respawned. Yon completely zeroed out Inspired over the wall. Hit him with the Chains of Corruption. Hits him with the WQ. Gets him down to about 30, 40% health. Then they get the kill on the side. Everyone has to run for Fly Quest. It's easy kills in the chase down. You gave over the Baron and you might have just given over the series. Bro, where was the Callista ultimate? They just lose their support over there. Then then you've got the, the Varus sniping your jungler over the back of Baron. Look at this. Look how disastrous this is. Busio's playing up because you know he's he's got a uh, Callista on his team. Uh, I believe going back and looking at the actual replay, if we can trust the cooldowns here. Uh, they get the seismic shove. They pull, range. they pull him away with the seismic shove. But look at the snipes onto Inspire 2 uh, from Yon. He chunked him down so low. Then they also get this kill. It yeah. just it just all falls apart for FlyQuest. They lose all these kills. Jensen flashes away as well. D-Liquid 
They can taste it now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can see Masu, as soon as that Sizing Shove hit Busio, Masu starts running to the right. He tries to get in range for that ultimate, but he's just too far away. Yeah. APA enjoying the APA fact typing that. <laughs> that everybody has been clowning on him for a lot of the split, but man, he's been stepping up. And this was actually a reference to a Jensen tweet where he tweeted out, I'm playing finals against APA. I'm like, yep. ah, you know? Um, so APA hitting them back with it. We'll see if FlyQuest can make anything happen, try to turn this around. It is still, you know, really only a two threat team for TL. So if Inspired could find the angle, if he could get a kick in, get that kill, you can make something happen. But that being said, it's so tough against Talia, against Nautilus, against Poppy to actually get in there and make that play happen without it just getting stuffed and you dying for free. The dash denial is so extreme on Team Liquid's side. FlyQuest is going to have to try to find a way to get control of the game back. They were 2,000 gold ahead for what felt like 10 minutes. And then with that one bad Baron call, it's a 5k swing the other way. Now a 3,000 gold lead for Team Liquid that also has a Drake advantage with the next look one spotting one minute. Look where sitting. He's above them. Umpty does spot him. So he was trying to look for an angle for a potential flank if TL did hard commit to it, but they're not going to go for it. And TL, again, like Clockwork, they'll play through side lanes. They're so good in the mid game, in the late game. If they're not being pressured, they'll just slowly chip away at you. They take down that mid tier one. Everyone leaves mid, so what does APA do? He backs off top. He knows that he's going to be pressured there. Impact pushes up bot. They're just playing based on where everyone could be from FlyQuest. Now, his team moves in the jungle. Umpty covers him. APA steps up, takes the tier one there. They're just chipping FlyQuest out, and there's not much FlyQuest can do about it. It's a well-oiled machine here for TL. Up almost 4,000 gold now. Only 25 seconds left on that Baron. And pretty much, the Baron power play and the overall gold lead for TL, nearly the identical number as that Baron has just been the X factor in this game. Five seconds to the next Drake spawns. Yeah, there's no question they want that one back for FlyQuest, but you can't live in the past. This is finals. Uh -oh, this is elimination game. And Busio may just get eliminated now with a dredge line from Core JJ. No rumble means no fight. I would have to assume Team Liquid should get this next Drake for free, too. For sure. Oh, that one's going to sting, especially after getting hit with the seismic shove at the Baron and then the pick right before Dragon here. Yeah, Busio having a tough series for sure. And uh, not in range of Masu again, you know, to be able to actually get pulled back when you're that far out by yourself. It wasn't yeah. going to be able to survive, so they get the easy kill. And now Ghost being popped, they're looking for Whippo, and there's no tier two to protect him. Ghost answered. He's got the Ghost to get away, but it doesn't get you over terrain. Uh, okay, fine. but there's, yeah, there's nobody else here. I mean, it's just impact. I don't think they're that worried about it. They forced the Ragnarok out. However, there's the red carpet. Whippo's going to try to run impact down. He doesn't get him quite yet. Impact's still alive in the front line as Jan grabs the killing spree back on Jensen. Impact lives as Jensen and Whippo both die. Impact has that killer instinct. That is crazy. He went for that chase. He got it. He lived. And Team Liquid, they're going to end off of it. They're going to TP back in. If they get one kill, the game is over. FlyQuest have the 3v5, have to defend. Team Liquid wants to end this series right here. They do not have many minions to work with. The Can't next the wave kill. coming now. So they'll back away. FlyQuest still get another chance, but those chances are quickly running out. Exactly, and they get slimmer and slimmer. You know, you have to look for these tiny margins, these tiny advantages. If FlyQuest fought at that inhibitor, if they, they went a little bit too far forward, I definitely think TL gets the kill, they end the game, but because they back off, it's just gonna be the inhibitor, it's gonna be the reset, and they can look towards the Baron that's spawning here in 120, but this time they're doing it with a 6k gold lead. They're doing it with the item completions ahead. Really in every role, pretty much at this point, when you're looking across the board, and TL are looking so close to this championship, the first one since 2019. And it's such a long established fact in League of Legends, if you know the next fight is gonna be over the Baron pit, the bot lane inhibitor is just the best one to have. Team Liquid is loving this game state. And you've also got to note, no flash on Whippo, no flash on Buzio. You know, he committed that to try to get in on Yon, try to kill him off. Yon didn't even flinch. The guy didn't even respond with the flash. So he still has his flash. There's no way that Whippo's gonna be able to get on him, it feels it's, like. It's such a heartwarming story for this Team Liquid squad too, with how much work that they've put in, the faith that they put in AP and Yon, bringing up carries from their academy team, mm -hmm. investing so many years into them and pairing them with all these veterans on the squad, Core JJ, Impact, uh, and then bringing Umpty over as well to complete the squad. Core JJ, as one of the main veterans too, has this renewed vigor and this renewed uh, need to win the LCS. He said he wanted to win it more than ever now, and they're so close.
Okay, Inspired gets hit over the wall, but he'll be all right. FlyQuest has to be so careful, man. Even one pick is just disaster. I also think it's so cool that Spawn, the coach, you know, was with Yon for his entire journey, basically on TL. He's been there in Academy alongside him, you know, was able to win titles with the TL Academy, got promoted up into the LCS. And this was not the roster that people expected TL to be winning the LCS with. And they are on the Baron, potentially one fight for winning the series. Team Liquid starting it up and FlyQuest, no, they can't afford to give it away. Impact on the front line yet again. Equalizer to try to stop his escape, but it ain't gonna work. A little bit of footwork gets him over that dangerous zone and Inspired is very, very low to try to steal anything. There's already a wave for TL in the bottom lane. Busio's in the middle of everybody. Up is still trying to stand a fight, but Busio's gonna grab the kill on him as Mazu saves his support. Impact still. Trying to slice and dice his way through the middle of the team fight. But a nice seismic shot from APA to find Jensen. It's a 3v2 on the map, and it favors TL with their super minions marching on the Nexus turrets. Yeah, the super minions are marching on the Nexus, but they're pinging mid lane, so they're going to try to play potentially for another inhib. I don't know if they're even going to be able to get that in time, though, as they are now moving down towards bot side. So they're just going to take a reset here. They take the one fight. They don't feel there's time to really go for anything major, so they'll just reset, spend their gold, and set up for it once again. But again, you have to keep highlighting Yon didn't use the summoners. That is so key because it's so tough to see FlyQuest winning a fight without killing off the Varus. He is so punishing at this point in the game. The initial setup was looking pretty good though. Masu and Whippo get in onto it back. Core is getting pushed back. They drop the equalizer, but TLC will easily retreat back. And then as FlyQuest have to enter, it becomes really difficult. Then you see the wrap around here on the bottom side as Inspired flashes away from the seismic shove and Core JJ tries to hook in the Olaf. They immediately tunnel onto Umpty. He goes down, gets deleted. They send it into Impact to try and get two, but API here kind of saves the extra advantage for TL by landing that seismic shove. That's the difference maker in the easier reset in pushing out the extra wave, but we go right back to it. Inspired, no flash. A Core JJ immediately engaging on the enemy jungler. That's a big kill. Yawn is godlike. Inspired is gone. And FlyQuest are staring down the barrel of a 4v5 against a Team Liquid that's already so far ahead. Six and a half thousand gold. Umpty and Yawn just two manning the Baron while APA and Impact and Core can keep everybody else from FlyQuest at bay. Yes, the Baron's gonna be slow, but it'll be a short thing. That's the advantage of winning the previous team fight. You've got the vision control on Baron. You got to reset, push out the minions first. So you get to make the next play and they don't let Inspired move an inch. And they're gonna be able to grab Soul off this as well. They just move right down towards Soul. So now you have a Pope Varus here with Infernal Soul once they secure this. They have the Baron buff. They'll have a 9,000 gold lead plus the stats from the Soul. So call it 13 and they will be able to push here to try to end the game against FlyQuest, who needs some sort of a heroic play to even stand the slightest chance. It's gonna need to be a water into wine type of miracle for FlyQuest to hold the line here against the Baron, against the Dragon Soul, against a Team Liquid that has evolved so much over the course of these playoffs compared to what we saw in this regular split in spring. They're marching down mid lane now. It's a four-man group. Impact is up in the top side, but he'll have the teleport to join if he needs to. And it may only be a two carry comp for Team Liquid, but both carries are fed, both carries have flashes, and both carries have Knight's Vow on them. They are they are so safe in their ability to 4-1 split push at the moment. You lay down your Talia Rocks, you just barren up the minion wave, it slowly chunks away while you wait for impact to get this top side going as well, and then rotate on over. So FlyQuest have to make their move now. You know, Jensen's looking for a flank angle. They're looking for any sort of opening where they can get a surprise. It even looks like they have bot pushing for them. That's stacking up as well. So TL gonna be pushing up in three lanes. Here comes the Weaver's Wall to section them off. That tower is forfeit. Exactly, the whole point is to just guarantee no defense of the tier three turret in the top lane. The bot lane inhib has respawned. So this top lane inhib would be the first one they kill if they can push up and claim it. They've got two of the Baron enchanted cannon minions ready to go. FlyQuest scrambling to try to defend. The mid lane tier three also under pressure. Core JJ with a dredge line and on Bwipo. Equalizer comes in over the top. The Olaf still surviving for now. He's not gonna get a whole lot done. Impact on the other side of the wall. He's just fine. Inspire's gonna die first. 
Jensen's gonna die second. Monster pulls Boosie out of safety. But what safety is even left? Dredge line ain't gonna do it. And Team Liquid to the victory march. Masu and Busio barely getting away back into the fountain as Whippo tries to front line. Team Liquid will run them over for the first time since 2019. Team Liquid is the best team in the LCS. And they are your spring split 2024 champions. moment there for the TL players. They are champions. And no one really thought they were going to be the team to do it. Of all the Team Liquid rosters that have been built since 2019, this was not the one that people were looking towards as a title contender. And when you look at the regular season, the level up this team had from regular season to playoffs was absolutely immense. These last couple series were dominated by them. They crushed C9, they crushed FlyQuest today, and they are far and away the best team in the LCS. The Grinders, they ran the most triple block scrims. They did not take a lot of the Mondays off even. Work, 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 and it pays off. Look at the smiles there. Coaching staff and all. Beautifully done from TL. Core JJ back to his old ways, finding engage angles time and time again. Impact, the eternal clutch factor in the top lane. Umpty setting up so much for the team in the jungle. APA beating the allegations in mid, having some pop-off performances for himself. And last, but certainly not least, such a step-up performance all playoffs long from Yawn. For years, Team Liquid has been trying to find a man to fill double lift shoes, and I think they fit pretty well on this guy. I mean, he was insane, I think, for this team throughout all the playoffs. New kill record in the LCS through playoffs. Played really bloody games, was able to step up massively for them time and time again. And it's got to feel so vindicating for this squad who went through it all, were able to come out on top. It's got to be core to lift it first, man. The new era of huh? TL. <laughs> APA, man. <laughs> it's got to feel good. Trash talk <laughs> to the very top of the LCS. Auntie claiming the title, too. This guy has been such a fun personality to have in the LCS. Deservedly holding the trophy now. Core JJ back on top. He's been chasing that title in the LCS for a long time. Jan being able to get a massive win for him. An impact. Let's go. Top lane go. Incredible series from Impact today. Absolutely gapped Whippo, it felt like, across the series. And spawned with the team for so long through Academy. Now his first split in the LCS. They are champions. Spawn talked with D Gon earlier this weekend about the sacrifices that he's made to be with this team, being away from his family, working so hard to achieve this goal. You can't help but cheer for this roster. Incredible performance from all these guys. Team Liquid's got to be excited about this one. I can't wait to see him at MSI. Same. Uh, I can already visualize the all chat <laughs> <laughs> coming through. Well-deserved bow here for the entire roster. GM, analysts, everyone included. Yeah, right now, right there, Dodo, Steve, of course, guys who have been with the Orc for so long through thick and thin. Yeah. Getting to see the team on top once again, heading to MSI as the number one seed here from NA. things now down to the stage. Jat is standing by for an interview with the victorious Team Liquid. Thank you very much. I'm here, Core, APA, Yawn, you've thrown in. We're gonna get a chance to talk to all the Team Liquid guys later, I believe, but specifically, Core JJ, 2019, you win. 2020, 22, 21, 23, 
How does it feel now finally getting another title? Yeah, definitely I feel so nice. I mean, winning is, winning is nice. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep hungry for the next win again. And APA, I know less than a year ago, you weren't even in the LCS. How does it feel now to be a champion? It, it definitely feels so surreal to be a champion now. Like, I tried so, so hard this, this split in the off season to get as good as I can, and I'm glad it paid off. Umpty, first split in the LCS, one LCS title. You were so excited after the victory. Walk me through that moment. What I can say is that, guys, uh, in my life, I didn't have any career. Now I have. I will say, I proved myself, guys. Umpty, why, why does this mean so much to you? What you say, sorry? Why does it mean so much to you? Why are you so emotional? Because in my last, like, I should say, old, like, long years, I didn't have any careers, and everyone was ignoring me. Like, kind of, you're just only, can't do only only at the late, you're just bullshit or kinds of something. And now I win everyone. I'm the LCS Jungle King now. How I cannot be emotional? You earned it. Impact as well. Sixth LCS title of all time. How does this one compare to the rest? Uh, <clears throat> sorry. How does it feel to win this sixth title? Uh, I just do my job, you know? Like, <laughs> I didn't feel like that. I mean, to me, it's kind of easy, that, that game, my opinion. Like, second game, too. I mean, they're choking, you know? So, like, also, we team make it finally win again, right? Because me, I think. <laughs> uh, Jan, I just have to ask you, before we send you guys outside, uh, you set the LCS record for most kills in a playoffs. But also, you've had this long road with Team Liquid. How does it feel going from two years on the Academy team, now your second year on the LCS stage, to finally win the title? Uh, honestly, the win is like nice, but it was more so I didn't want to lose to the top jungle of FlyQuest. They're, they're so fucking annoying, man. <laughs> like, their skill level was not as good as their egos, I think. They're, they're, they're good, but like, they were talking too much shit. It was like, I mean, they're, honestly, I'm not the person to shit talk someone after I win, but my God, they would not shut up after they won. <laughs> if you guys want to trash talk, be as good as this guy. <laughs> All right, we're going to hear more from the rest of Team Liquid. You guys can head outside. Congratulations on the win. The fans have been amazing. I believe we're going to be sending it up to the analyst desk lounge at the moment while you guys move it outside. So stay on the stream. Congratulations, guys. It's been an amazing year so far. Good luck at MSI. Well, that man's taking it with him. <laughs> if you want to trash talk, be as good as this guy points uh, immediately. That is amazing. Congrats to TL. What a series. None of none of us believed. None of us. Jat was actually yep. the only believer on this desk. Yep. Jat. <laughs> it's um, actually yeah. crazy to see it. And, and just seeing the emotions from the players, from Umpty specifically, yeah. that yeah. was crazy. What I a mean, feeling. Man, I've watched Umpty for so long. And like <laughs> I said, all of his teams were either like, just generally not good or really unlucky, yeah. right? So you could tell the kind of cathartic emotional release where he's just like, you guys, I am not bad, you know? Like, I am good. This, like, yeah. he didn't need it to validate it, but it does validate it, right? Nothing In, like, feels better when the haters wrong. Yeah, exactly. No, I no. haven't. No. That, was the that was the first one. Yeah. That's rage. They're That's mad. rage fuel. They're, they're sick of other people <laughs> trash talking them. They're out of you, here. You could tell Yawn was just storing it up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> There's the Tyler one thing specifically before. Like, like there was so, so much, much that happened. happened throughout this year, and my eyes are on APA. For last year, I felt like, yes, he came in seconds uh, on the second split, second half of summer split. 
a lot of expectation, goes to Worlds, a lot of pressure internally, externally, comes into the stage like this and actually comes in and just pounds FlyQuest. <laughs> There's no better word for it. I think what Impact said is so true, though. He really was the biggest difference maker for Team Liquid. That stability in top lane was what they needed, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And now we're going to continue to hear from the Team Liquid team who are standing outside with Azale. All right, well, thank you very much. I'm not sure. What, is it here? I don't know if it's I don't know if it's on us or not. So we're just gonna start talking. Congratulations, guys! You just won the spring <laughs> title. Uh, we're still hearing audio for inside, so I have. Oh, okay, now we're hearing me. So now I think we're working. Uh, Impact, you just won. You've been, I would say, the most dominant top laner in the LCS all time. You've won with so many different teams now. You know, when you went back to TL the split, you said it was feeling like it was going home. And to be able to actually win a title, you were. You were a part of, of TL's wins before. To be able to win a title now, after all these years, like how did it actually feel to be able to bring that back for TL? Uh, I feel great like, about I'm showing them my like, uh, identity, you know, like ability to, like, I'm a really good player to people. I mean, just it's nice just to win the final, you know, not, nothing to say. Just I did my job to what I can do in the top lane and for teammate and helping teammate and like thinking about how we can win game more then yeah, be success, so it's great. I mean, I think you did a lot more in your job. It felt like you were gapping Whippo in the top lane. You know, there was a lot of talk about Whippo and all his counter picks and all these different things that he could bring out, but you were able to handle that really, really well today. You know, was there any special preparation that you had kind of coming into the series? Any consideration that you had to the fact that you might be bringing out picks like the Olaf, like the Urgot? Uh, after first game, I was thinking about this guy choking, like in lane especially. I mean, how he played the lane, like kind of like, I don't know, he scared me something. So like, I, I, I was testing him to like, just finger bite or dodge movement. Mm -hmm. And then he reacted like, run away or like scared. So I'm thinking, uh, this guy actually choking. So <laughs> after that, I said, special board game too. And then we pick all up, right? Normally people not pick Kisante. I said, nah guys, I can pick Kisante against this guy. In my head, even he counter, even he think he get confident, he gonna get shit on again. <laughs> so what happened the level five, he get denied and he cannot play game, you know? Yeah. Well, it worked out really well for you. Core, I want to come to you. You know, you have been with TL for such a long time now. I think it's fair to say you've been the face of this organization for so long. But it had taken a long time, you know, for you guys to be able to actually bring back another title to Team Liquid. After all the success that you had initially with TL, what does it feel like to have, A, this kind of time of, of struggle and all these years where you weren't able to get that title, and then now to be finally back on top? Um, yeah, I feel definitely so nice. Um, I mean, I feel like I'm doing the same job for five years to, um, in the TL, but if I'm not doing well in the HS, um, people, people will shit talk of me. Um, I'm so happy that we won, so that I don't need to hear shit talk. What is it then, you know, you're saying you're doing the same job as always. What is it that's special about this roster? What was the difference that allowed you guys to get this title? Especially when I think it was a, a roster that people weren't expecting you guys to be able to win with, right? You know, whereas some of the other years, it's like, oh, it's a TL super team, you're supposed to win. Uh, I think our team, we talk a lot about uh, how we want to play the game. So whenever we make a comp that we try to be make sense um, how we want to play this comp or something. So basically, um, be on the same page easily. That's awesome. Okay, Jan, I'm, gonna try, I'm just going to jump in between you guys so I don't have to stand right in front of you. Um, I wanted to come to you next. You know, you've obviously been with TL for a long time, through Academy, now in the LCS. You've had people, I think, doubting you, you know, especially when you're coming in, you're trying to you know, fill in you know, do double his shoes and so on and so forth. Like, what has it been like for your journey to be able to actually come all the way, and especially alongside Spawn, because he was with you through all of Academy as well, right? Like, you've been with the same kind of duo for, for so many years to be on top in the LCS now. Um, I will say, at the start, I was definitely really not that great. I was definitely misplaying a lot and learning as each game went on. And I would definitely say Core helped me every time. I'm really appreciative of Core and Spawn as well and Team Liquid for believing in me. Yeah, uh, it's just, I'm just really thankful that Team Liquid believed in me, and thanks for all the help. 
Well, it's definitely paid off now. You know, talk to me a little bit about being able to play aggressive in playoffs, right? Because AD carry, I think, is one of the, the roles where there's so much focus on you. So much of the late game fights are about how you're performing. If you play really well, everyone's like, oh my God, Jan's the best player in the world. And if you make a stake, like, oh, he's garbage. He shouldn't even be on the team. So like, how do you kind of get past that mentally where you know, maybe you have a bad series or you have a bad split or you have a bad game to be able to actually still play the way that you think is correct, despite maybe mistakes that have happened in the past? Um, to be honest, I actually got some help from another person in a different game genre, uh, CSGO, Yekendar. He was actually helping me a lot in like when they came to LLA for one of their tournaments. And he said, since you're a carry, you should be doing your job to the utmost. So I definitely, especially after that Seraphine game, I was like, shit, I should, I should try to do a lot more. Because I was like, damn, this is frustrating to lose. Yeah, I would definitely say that I just shifted my mindset after regular season because I was like, I was unhappy with that result. So just about playing the right way, no matter what happens. So APA, got to come to you. There's obviously been a ton of talk about you, about the trash talk, about the yapping. There's all kinds of new nicknames. There's Yappa, I don't, there's Yapped in America, which was a personal favorite for me. Uh, Yapped in America and the Avengers. You're, you're now going to be going off to MSI. You're going to be playing. We don't know who you're going to be playing all, but obviously there's going to be some legendary mid laners. Are you still going to keep the trash talk going? Like, if you're up against Faker, are you going to be trash talking the GOAT? Uh, <laughs> um, honestly, yeah, why not? Uh, I'll, I'll trash talk any of the Eastern mids. I think it was Impact's like, nah, <laughs> they can't, can't, talk, can't trash talk Faker. Maybe there's a line. Um, but how has it been for you? Because it feels like. You know, throughout your career, you've been doubted pretty heavily coming into LCS. You came in last split pretty late, you know, in summer, um, you know, amongst some turmoil, you guys were able to actually get to the Worlds. But two years ago, you were in Collegiate. This time last year, you were in N NACL. Now you just won an LCS title. Like, has that actually sunk in yet? That is a crazy thing to think about. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been one of my dreams for a long time, ever since I aspired to go pro. But I've also had so many people to support me. Like whether it's like TL staff, you know, Spawn, Rainover, um, Rapid Star, positional coach. Like I talk with Core and Impact pretty much every day about the game. And yeah, like I won v one with Romer, the Academy mid. Like I have so many people helping me. So like honestly, just credit to them. That's awesome. We, we got to hear some from your, your mom. Uh, and also we've heard your whole family is very, very supportive of your dream. You know, is there any message that you want to send to them or, or talk a little bit about like what it means to have them supporting you on this journey and now to have this to show for it and be like, hey, it was worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, shout out to my entire family. I know they're probably watching, cheering me on right now. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, shout out to my friends. Some of the Marvel guys are actually in the audience. I hugged them after we won. Um, yeah, just shout out to genuinely anyone that supported me. It means so much to me. That's awesome. Umti, I want to come to you. Sorry, it took a little while to get to you. Congratulations on winning your first domestic title. How does that feel? Like, was this, was this a surprise for you, a shock for you when you're coming to TL? Did you think that you could achieve an LCS title this fast? Uh, I, I will say I didn't expect, I didn't predict it because I just think that we should, I was just thinking about the only game, just how to do well about the, our team is going on at the early start. So I just didn't expect that we were going to win like this fast. So I'm very super happy. <laughs> So talk to me a little bit about the Jax games. Obviously, you got Pentacle yesterday, which was really hype, because people mostly talk about you as a jungler who likes to play for your lanes, who's going to sacrifice your farm to be able to cover your lanes, to be able to make things happen for them. But Jax is such a different style of champion where you have to play for yourself, you have to be greedy, because if you don't have a lot of farm, you're kind of useless. You know, was that something that you were really confident in and, and kind of a different play style that you wanted to be able to show? Yeah, uh, I hear... Uh, I agree that point that Jax has to be greedy as a selfish player, but... I just think that good players have to be the two options. They can make, like change, like transform. If if he if he can like sacrifice first, then he can, he should do the. If he want to build a good player, he should be a greedy player too. Like uh, for the teams, he should be changed. Absolutely, you have to be able to play both play styles. So you're now going into your first international tournament. Is there anyone that you're really hoping that you'd be able to go up against internationally? You know, any jungler that you think, oh, okay, I really want to play against this guy. So what can I say is, guys, I already against for eight years at the LCK and for screaming LPL, it may be like 1,000 to 2,000 games. So that's boring, guys, right? So I want Yaike as G2. I really want to beat him because I think he's really good. So I really want to against G2. Well, we're all going to be hoping that you guys can beat you too. Absolutely. Let's hear it for Team Liquid. Your LCS champions, the first seed going to MSI.
We're going to head it back over to the desk, I guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would be right. We, we, got, we got the updated Team Liquid timeline in the Core JJ era 2019 title. Oh, it's going to feel really Best good when it gets to the end. Best third place yeah. in 2020. Best second place in 2021, which happened twice. Wait for it. 2022, they put together the super team, fall short. Pause champ. Finish was third. Even <laughs> 23, coming. it was looking pretty grim. True. But oh. they grind their way to oh. Worlds, get third oh. place. What's their best finish in 24, though? Oh, hold. I'm waiting. Oh. 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 Not too shabby, eh? Not bad, not bad. <laughs> Look at <Yeah>. empty. <laughs> That's the face of pure joy. I know. Let's go down the line here. He's uh, gonna break that trophy. Start starting yeah. with you, Sven. How would you encapsulate this series and this season for Team Liquid? Teamwork gets the job done. <laughs> Not really. Like That's Team Liquid, yeah, like we were asked about who's the finals MP, and I was like, I don't know. TL is such a good team where like not one single player is outshining the others. They're always playing so well together. It's just hard to say. They're just a really, really solid team. And it's nice to see in the midst of this, you know, super teams failing both in NA and in EU. Yeah. Emily? Yeah. I think, um, how do I put it? Like, the feeling of, it's not ambition, but like the wish to prove your hunger. Right? Yeah. Like a, an incredible hunger and desire to prove themselves, I think, because. Um, we talk about how their their draft prep, like obviously sp even Spawn as their coach, I feel like really wants to prove himself after coming up uh, from Academy. Everyone on this roster, like Jan talked about it, where he was like, I want to prove that I can be a carry. Umti, like I said previously, has been on all of these teams that haven't even made it. This is his first time at international competition ever. Um, Core finally getting another title after so many years. APA proving, yes, he does deserve to be in the LCS. Like, he absolutely belongs <laughs> here. Um, and then Impact, obviously. Impact, I think, is a little bit more quiet about it. He understates how much he wants to win because I think Impact is someone who very much wants to win and sometimes undersells his own desire in yeah. that and kind of like, I just did my job. But, uh, <laughs> but that's what I would say. Faith in the process. Okay. If you remember what... Actually, tell me. Where were they in week six? They were in fourth. Off they usually. were as always, and they were. I ran into them struggling to get at, like they were. They were afraid that they would be kicked out of playoffs mm. because just based off that super week, they would either. And I think it was a pretty tough week. I, I'm trying to remember back to it, but like the fact that they were in, in a position where they could get kicked out of the playoffs because the position yeah. from uh, fourth to like honestly seventh, yeah, was up in the air, yeah. To then winning the LCS is crazy. And then even during the split, as you had already mentioned, like there was a lot of trials and tribulations. And we know what Team Liquid looked like last year, mm -hmm. where it felt at times there that there wasn't really that much faith in the process. And there was like a lot of frustration internally, uh, especially around Worlds, when they weren't getting the job done. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and and so this time around, anytime you hear though, you know, they're not playing the same way they were in pl pr playing in practice, um, they recognized at some point they would. Yeah, and they also and they continue to play better and better and day after day. In fact, that um, stage interview that we saw from Jan was pretty exemplary of like the rest of the players. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of faith in the process. People were bought in, and it, they came out on top. Yeah, that stage interview right after the trophy lift, more <laughs> trash talk than I think we've yeah. ever had. I in love a, that. They're they're in a fired shorter up. time frame. It was great in LCS history. He wasn't yeah. wrong though. Yeah. Flyquest was upside was talking a lot of shit. They yes. <laughs> fired him up. For for me, I I don't disagree with anything you guys have said, but I, I just I just add on. Um, it there was a lot of trust yeah. mm -hmm. within the whole team because there was a lot of noise even in the middle of the season. Uh, there was a lot of noise in the off season mm -hmm. because Team Liquid for pretty much since franchising began in 2018 was like the top spender who just bought a bunch of really expensive free agents. Mm -hmm. And then these last two years have been the first two times they've really taken chances on younger players. Jan and Harry at the start of last year. APA at the end of last year. Yep. And then the fact that they just like held firm with those yep. two and it was the two Koreans that they changed out for two other Koreans was like a big question mark pings from a lot of the community. But within the team, they needed to have a lot of trust in their own process yeah. to make that happen. And I just have to really commend the emotion that all these guys felt, the bond they clearly share. A really big shout out to Spawn as well. He's someone who won multiple multiple times in academy yeah mm -hmm. 
uh, with different iterations of rosters and then wins LCS in his very first split. Mm -hmm. So he that whole team completely deserves it. They're riding the high. They were the underdog even coming into this weekend as the lowest seed of the three, not having side selection at the start of either of their series. And going 6-1, that's yeah. incredible. Not bad. That's incredible. The game. Player of the series. Another shocker. <laughs> APA. Boom! Ooh. And he deserved it. I'm not yep. saying that like he didn't deserve it. I'm just saying that because you go back 15, 1, and 22. Yeah. Not so shabby, yeah. Yeah, and, and 30% of, almost 30% of his team's damage. I think nothing exemplifies the trust that you were just talking about in the fact that this roster was not only like sticking with APA, but when people were like, how does your trash talk affect the team, right? Like the rest of the team's like, I don't know. If he wants to do it, he can do it. It's fine. <laughs> Um, oh, and also like people being like he as recently as what two weeks ago? Yeah. yeah, being like we should replace this guy. He's just not good enough and the team not only like Kind of soaking up that pressure, but like rallying behind mm -hmm. him in these moments is just incredible to see on his champions too like it, it feel it felt like before it was like bad that he was playing Ziggs and, a and Aurelion Soul yeah. And the fact that the team actually played well around it compositionally, but also just like, if you have a bad game, who the hell cares? Run it the next time because you played it well in scrims. Actually, pulling up a, a tweet that just came out recently from Jojo Pion, APA redemption going crazy. Yeah, it is. And, yeah. that's true. He actually made his biggest weakness as a player, you know, the over-reliance on champs like Six and Asol into a strength of his yeah. that no one else in the LCS has. I don't yeah. think anyone else plays Asol or no. Six. No. And so then he was very still impressive. good with And now he's winning LCS with those champs that yeah. he was at some point, you know, call out for playing. Man, it's been it's been an absolutely awesome split of LCS. Mm -hmm. Team Liquid yes. is the champion. Zven, thanks for joining us this weekend. Thanks for having me. I hope we're seeing Woo! you in go the finals me. next week. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Anyway, yeah. that's it for us. Uh, the NACL finals are actually going to be here tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Tune in if you want to see the future of the LCS. Yawn, who you just saw on stage, past NACL champion, by the way. True. So thanks for watching the LCS this split. <laughs> We're done here. We'll see you at MSI. from Whippo up here. Sneaky Crocodile. I'd also say TL really need to be the ones starting out the fight. If they can be the ones pushing up cooldowns, it's going to go so much better for them as Inspired looking. Yeah, Inspired wanted to jump in and try to find Yon, but now Whippo has made the flag happen. The burst comes through. Yon stays alive with the kick him back up the wall. So even once he gets spit out, he can't participate in the fight. Core JJ jumps in the middle of everybody, but it's just a food delivery. APA is going to be focused down next as Whippo continues to survive the prize. He pushes forward with flag quest. Every man Let's talk him more. We gave a little okay, bit of no? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm it's good, 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 good. Watch it. Slowly, okay? Yeah. Guys, I want you to get it. Throw, throw, throw. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm good. I'm good. Big on the flash. Big on the flash. Big on the Big on the flash. Big on Big on Big on the Big on the Big on Big on Yeah, I know. End the game. I'm on Yeah, I'm. Good job, Pepper. Yeah. It's not over yet, guys. That's not good. That's not good. I'm 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 not good. We're ending, we're ending here. Uh, we're ending here. Give me the kill, hun. I want one kill. Yummy! Nice job. Good job, guys. Good job, Ian. Nice, nice carry. Yep. Nice um, carry. Good luck. APA enjoying the bag typing that. <laughs> <laughs> Every... 
Uh, okay, okay. There's, yeah, there's nobody else here. I mean, it's just an impact. I don't think they're that worried about it. They forced the Ragnarok out. However, there's the red carpet. Whipple's gonna try to run impact down. He doesn't get him quite yet. Impact's still alive in the front line as Jan grabs the killing spree back on Jensen. Impact lives as Jensen and Whippo both die. If you guys wanna trash talk, be as good as this guy. <laughs>